Hi friends, good morning. ICAI has came up with a new syllabus and this new syllabus is applicable from May 24 exam onwards. Now all the students who were there in old syllabus will now have to give exams as per the new syllabus. So there are a lot of queries regarding sir what are the changes which are there in CA final FR, CA final auditing. So this session, this session is regarding the changes which have came in FR. Yeah, this video will give you the entire changes which have came up in the FR syllabus from old to new. You don't have to take up any coaching again. Yeah, the many students are asking, sir, should we take up a coaching again? Answer is no. Are there a lot of changes in FR? Answer is no. FR may there aren't major changes. Two chapters. Two chapters they were removed. Two chapters they've added. I repeat, two chapters are removed, two chapters are added, but the things which are removed and things which are added are kind of theoretical only. So all your NDAs are same, no change in NDAs. Uh, we had two chapters, one was integrated reporting and second was corporate social responsibility. The integrated reporting and corporate social responsibility, that two chapters have been removed and they've added two chapters. Professional and ethical duties of a CA and second they have added is basically accounting and technology. So are there any major changes in your FR syllabus from old to new? Answer is no. Two chapters gone, two chapters added and a few, hardly 5-10 questions ICAI has added. The few extra questions have been added by ICAI. So what are we covering in this video? What are we covering in this video? We'll be covering the entire new chapters which have been added. Okay, the two new chapters which have came up in detail, just like a regular batch, how we ever cover it, that two chapters are being covered over here. One chapter added is professional and ethical duties of a CA and second chapter added is accounting and technology. So these chapters are done in detail in this video. Achha, again, I'm telling you two chapters have been removed. Which are the two chapters? Your integrated reporting is no longer applicable and your corporate social responsibility is also not applicable. What this video will contain, the two chapters which are newly added in detail like we do in the normal class, it's covered and few extra questions which ICAI has added that are covered. So enjoy this updates or changes or amendments which have came up and in case you have any queries, any doubts, you can put it in the chat box or you can connect with me in our telegram group as well as the telegram channel. So starting with the first addition that is your professional and ethical duties of a CA. Chapter 16 and 17 are newly added. They were not there in old syllabus. They are newly added in our new syllabus. So both this chapter, they are kind of a theoretical chapter combined with practical view. I repeat, both the chapter 16 and 17, they are kind of theoretical chapter combined with a practical view of FR. So, in your chapter 16, they are mixing your subject of FR with the subject of auditing. The FR and auditing are mixed over here. And in your next chapter, that is your chapter number 17, they are mixing accounts and technology. The FR and technology is basically mixed up in your chapter number 17. So, today we'll try to finish off chapter number 16. Tomorrow we'll try to finish off chapter number 17 so that we are able to finish off our syllabus by tomorrow in case. In case anything is left out, we'll finish it off on Monday. Ah, yes, the syllabus is about to get over. Chalo. Uh, just an announcement for you all people. Today is the last day. Today is the last day to get 1000 rupee discount. Diwali offer is going on till 18 November. So today is the last day to get that 1000 rupee discount on FR as well as auditing. Anybody buying FR subject or auditing subject today will be getting 1000 rupee discount. Tomorrow onwards, it will be the normal pricing. Then please don't come and say that, sir, that offer is gone. Now what to do? Nothing can be done. Okay, come to chapter number 16. See the heading. See the heading. Professional and ethical duty of a chartered accountant. Professional and ethical duty of a chartered accountant. Now, we have a chapter called professional ethics in our subject of advanced auditing. So when we go to auditing subject, we'll learn that chapter in detail. Uh, the chapter's name is professional ethics, which is basically in auditing. Now, under your chapter of professional ethics, we learn certain provisions of Chartered Accountants Act. Yeah, there's a Chartered Accountants Act 1949, 
we are not learning full chartered accountants act but we learn certain provisions of chartered accountants act 1949 in your subject of auditing uh, the chapter of professional ethics now as per chartered accountants act 1949 the chartered accountant whether you are in practice or whether you are in service few people do practice few people basically are in service they'll be guilty of professional misconduct and other misconducts uh, so they are given you'll be guilty of professional misconduct or other misconduct if you do this or if you don't do this they have given so many list imagine if i disclose the confidential information of my client to someone else uh, if i am disclosing confidential information of my client to someone else i'll be guilty of professional misconduct same way if i certify uh, if i give a audit report without examination if i certify without examination i'll be guilty of professional misconduct if i fail to exercise due diligence if i fail to exercise due diligence or i'm grossly negligent in my duties i'll be guilty of professional misconduct so they've given so many things in that chapter we'll be learning bit about it over here okay so chapter's name is professional and ethical duty of chartered accountant what they are telling see i've tried to highlight the important lines so that we are able to save time yeah the important lines have already been highlighted so that we are able to save time we are able to finish off the chapter today itself what do you mean by word ethics what do you mean by the word ethics ethics are nothing but a set of moral principles they are a set of moral principles or the principles of conduct governing an individual or a discipline dealing with what is good what is bad that's basically the ethics the ethics are nothing but a set of moral principles or a principle of conduct governing an individual or a discipline dealing with what is good what is bad what are your moral responsibilities and obligation that's ethics Now, sir, where does ethics come in FR? Actually, ethics comes in auditing. Yeah, ethics comes in the subject of auditing. So, ICAI has came up with the code of ethics. And uh, there's a revised code of ethics which came up in 2000 and basically 18. It came up in 2019, but it's known as Code of Ethics 2018. And I told you what we do is basically a replica of what is going on internationally. So, internationally, there is IFAC. internationally there is ifac international federation of accountants and that ifac came out with a revised code of ethics we also came out with a revised code of ethics so icai code of ethics 2019 the code has been derived icai code of ethics 2019 the code has been derived from international ethical standard board for accountant code of ethics 2018 issued by ifac ha to ifac came up with a code of ethics in 2018 we came out with code of ethics in 2019 correct so they came out with 2018 we came up in 2019 and this is applicable from 1st july 2020 onwards now in your code of ethics in your code of ethics they give the fundamental principles governing an audit you know five fundamental principles governing an audit ah that was done in auditing also which were the five fundamental principles governing an audit sir integrity objectivity professional competence due care confidentiality and professional behavior yada yeah okay so the code of ethics sets out the fundamental principles of ethics for chartered accountant and code is for both code is for both those who are in practice also those who are in service also it applies to all of them and the code provides a conceptual framework the code is also giving conceptual framework to identify evaluate and address the threats for complying with the fundamental principles now see uh, there will be there will be some threats which will which will deter you from complying with the principles for example for example i tell you a simple case uh, imagine imagine uh, this a limited is one of my biggest client a limited is one of my biggest client and now a limited have done some manipulation in books of accounts a limited is one of my biggest client they have done some manipulation in books of accounts now if at all you give a modified report they say we are going to change the auditors 
if at all you are going to give a modified report they say we are going to change the auditor so now the thing is can i say if i give a modified report my biggest client will go away if at all i give a modified report my biggest client will go away so because of that fear that my client will go away i am not giving a modified report so this is basically a self interest threat correct yeah this is nothing but which threat self interest threat so there are different different types of threats threats which basically deter you from complying with the fundamental principles so you need to identify the threat evaluate the threat address those threats you need to identify the threat evaluate those threats address those threats so the code also gives a conceptual framework in order to identify evaluate address those threats to comply with the fundamental principles and the code of ethics uh, what we are talking about is dealt in detail when we go to the subject of advanced auditing and professional ethics we have a full chapter on it this is a chapter professional ethics in your auditing shall i move it this is just a introduction request you all to please keep replying now i told you uh, in that chapter we learn about the provisions of chartered accountant act 1949 and i also said we don't learn the full chapter we learn certain provisions of chartered accountant act 1949 and as per as per section 21 of chartered accountant act 1949 what do they say a member member can be in practice also member can be in service also member is member of ici member is member of icai not necessarily in practice is liable for disciplinary action the member is liable for a disciplinary action under section 21 if he is found guilty of any professional or other misconduct so if you are found guilty of professional or other misconduct you are liable for disciplinary action now question comes sir what do you mean by word professional misconduct what do you mean by the word other misconduct what do you mean by the word professional misconduct what do you mean by the word other misconduct in simple words professional misconducts are those which are related to your work those which are related to your work that's professional other misconduct other misconduct other misconduct even relate to your personal life as well other misconduct even relate to personal life as well they say that the chartered accountant should not bring disrepute to icai a chartered accountant should not bring what disrepute to icai and he should maintain a highest level of standards even in his personal life as well ah uh, personal life also you should not be doing anything which is morally wrong okay now just tell me one thing uh suppose there's a rape case and a chartered accountant is involved in a rape case suppose there's a rape case and a chartered accountant is involved in a rape case you know in newspaper they'll write chartered accountant involved in a rape case you did some something morally wrong in personal life it has nothing to do with your work you did something morally wrong in your personal life but still the name of ca institute will go bad because the newspaper people will write oh chartered accountant was involved in this thing so that's why even if you do some other misconduct also icai can punish you they can remove you from membership also theek hai So, Section Twenty One says a member will be liable for disciplinary action if you are found guilty of any professional or other misconduct. Now, Section Twenty Two, the Section Twenty Two of Act Act is Chartered Accountant Act, nineteen forty nine. Act is Chartered Accountant Act, nineteen forty nine. They say what your professional or other misconduct will include any act or omission. it's including what any act or omission provided in any of the schedules acha so if i go to chartered accountant act 1949 they have given you two schedules i repeat when i go to chartered accountant act 1949 they have given two schedules first schedule second schedule first schedule second schedule now in that two schedules they have given you what all you can do what all you cannot do okay so something which i have to do and i don't do i am guilty something i should not do and i have done still i am guilty 
तो दे से दैट प्रोफेशनल एंड अदर मिसकंडक्ट शेल बी डीम टू इंक्लूड एनी एक्ट और ओमिशन which is given in the schedules of the act there are two schedules that is schedule number 1 schedule number 2 first schedule second schedule okay professional misconduct professional misconduct is given under part 1 2 3 of first schedule part 1 2 3 of first schedule and part 1 and 2 of second schedule acha first schedule has four parts let me just go down you will be seeing over here So this are the schedules in Chartered Accountant Act. This are the schedules in your Chartered Accountant Act. How many schedules are there? Two. First schedule, second schedule. First schedule has four part. Second schedule has three parts. Part one, part two, part three, part four. Second schedule, three parts. Part one, part two, part three. and every part they have given different different clauses what you can do what you cannot do acts or omissions theek hai to in chartered accountant act there are two schedule first and second first schedule has four part second schedule has three part acha in both the parts the last one is other misconduct so over here part 4 is other misconduct over here part 3 is other misconduct so over here part 4 is other misconduct here part 3 is other misconduct and first all the earlier parts are professional misconduct that's why they say professional misconduct is given under what part 1 2 3 of first schedule and part 1 and 2 of second schedule and other misconduct is given under part 4 of first schedule part 3 of second schedule did you understood Okay, so we'll be studying each one of this part with each of the clauses in detail in the subject of auditing. Yeah, so pura chapter will be done in detail in auditing over here. I'm not focusing on auditing part, and it's a much bigger chapter in auditing, around hundred pages. So here we have around thirty pages. That too with the question answers related to FR, but in auditing, full theory of hundred pages is there related to all these things. Okay. The professional misconduct is defined in part one, two, three of first schedule and part one and two of second schedule. Other misconduct. Other misconduct is defined under part four of first schedule and part three of second schedule. And professional other misconduct includes anything which you do wrong, even in your personal life as well. So these provision empower the ICAI. to inquire into any misconduct of a member even if it does not arise out of your professional work did you understood even if it does not arise out of your professional work theek hai now i told you in your first schedule there are four part acha each part gives things which you can do which you cannot do acts or omission in your part 1 of first schedule there are 12 clauses in your part 2 of first schedule there are two clauses in your part 3 of first schedule there are three clauses and part 4 of first schedule there are two clauses so yahan pe there are 12 2 3 2 this many clauses are there each clause tells about a particular thing which you can do you cannot do each clause each clause talks about a particular thing which we can do cannot do Okay, when I go to part two, that is schedule two, not part two. When I go to schedule two, part one has ten clause, part two has four clause, part three has one clause. So this all clause is twelve plus two plus three plus two. Okay, ये हो गया nineteen, nineteen and ten, twenty nine, thirty. Total thirty four clauses. So thirty four items they have given you which you can do or cannot do. Thirty four items. they told which you can do or cannot do that's basically different different clauses now sir whether all clauses are applicable to all chartered accountants whether all all clauses are applicable to all chartered accountants no few clauses are particularly for those who are in practice few clauses are particularly for those who are in practice few are general applicable for members in practice and members in service and few only for members in service 
ओके तो चेक ओवर यो पार्ट वन पार्ट वन ऑफ योर फर्स्ट स्कड्यूल इट्स प्रोफेशनल मिसकंडक्ट फॉर सी ए इन प्रैक्टिस पार्ट टू प्रोफेशनल मिसकंडक्ट फॉर सी ए इन सर्विस पार्ट वन वॉज फॉर दोज आर इन प्रैक्टिस पार्ट टू इज फॉर दोज आर इन सर्विस एंड पार्ट थ्री इज जनरली फॉर बोथ professional misconduct for members who are in practice or service both together and part 4 is other misconduct other misconduct will be generally other misconduct will be generally for everyone okay now going to your second schedule in your second schedule part 1 is for those who are in practice part 2 is generally so we don't have anything specific in service part 2 is generally for those who are in practice and service in part 3 is other misconduct generally okay the professional misconduct is given under part 1 2 3 of your first schedule and part 1 and 2 of second schedule other misconduct is given under part 4 of first schedule part 3 of second schedule did you understood this okay now pay attention the clauses covered in part 1 2 3 of second schedule only the second schedule ke clauses are given in a chart form over here only which one the second schedule the clauses in part 1 2 3 of second schedule are given in a chart form below details if you want to understand details will be in the subject of audit details will be in the subject of auditing did you understood now coming to this chart this is second schedule to chartered accountant act three parts this is part 1 having 10 clauses 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 nine, 10 okay part 2 having four clauses and part 3 has only one clause So, sir are we doing all of them in class answer is no we are not doing all of them in class in fr because in auditing we'll be doing it in much detail i'm just taking the ones which are relevant for this chapter or fr subject okay i'm just taking the ones which are relevant for this chapter or fr subject okay coming to coming to part 1 which is for those who are in practice professional misconduct For CAs in practice, okay. I'm taking clause number one. Okay, clause number one. If you disclose, if you disclose the information acquired in a professional engagement to any person, whatever information about client you came to know, if you disclose it to any person other than the client, other than the client, or without the consent of client, or otherwise required by law, then you will be guilty of professional misconduct. So discloses information. Simple word: disclosure of confidential information. You disclose information acquired in course of professional engagement to any person other than the client, engaging him without the consent of client or otherwise required by law or regulation. Otherwise required by law or regulation. I am taking this clause number one. simple words mein disclosure of confidential information of client you are guilty of professional misconduct theek hai acha this is only for those who are in practice ye service wala nahi hai ha part 2 is generally now clause number 2 i am taking clause number 2 also if you certify or submit in your name or in name of firm a report of examination of financial statement unless that examination has been done by you or by your partner or by your employee so if you say that we have audited this you are giving a report it should have been checked by you or by your partner or by your employee or any other ca in practice you hired other ca to do the work chalega you had other ca in practice to do the work chalega that's fine so simple words mein if you certify without examination you are guilty of professional misconduct if you certify without examination you are guilty of professional misconduct okay 
If you certify or submit in your name or in a name of firm a report of examination of financial statement unless such statement related record have been checked by you or by your partner or by your employee or by any other CA in practice. You had other CA in practice to check it, chalega. But if you certify without examination, you will be guilty of professional misconduct. Okay, if I highlight over here in simple words, this is disclosing confidential information of client. If you disclose confidential information of client, you are guilty. This is certification without examination. If you certify without examination, guilty of professional misconduct. Okay, now directly come to clause 5. I told you I am taking only the clause which are relevant 5, 6, 7 and 8. Okay, the 1, 2, now 5, 6, 7 and 8. Okay, Aditya has a question, sir. Employee in a firm may not be a CA, right? Yeah, employee in a firm is not a CA, but the thing is, I may not be a CA, but whenever employee in a firm is doing it, can I say you will review the work of your employee? The APK employee, you will be going to review the work of your employee, then indirectly you have also seen it. Okay, now clause number 5, fail to disclose a material fact known to him which is not disclosed in financial statement. Something not disclosed in financial statement, disclosure of which is necessary. Something not disclosed in financial statement, disclosure of which is necessary in making those financial statements. You know it and still you don't report about it. So, there is... There is something, there is something which is basically not there in financial statement, which should have been there. For example, they have not recorded a ROU asset and a lease liability. Remember, whenever we take a property on rent, we have to record a ROU asset, lease liability. So, they have not recorded a ROU asset, lease liability, something which is not disclosed in financial. And disclosure of which is necessary in financial. It's required. But... It's not there, they have not done it and you are still not reporting it. Clause number 5. Okay. Uh, Aisha has a question, sir, even articles can review. Dear, the work of article has to be reviewed by basically the partners or the senior chartered accountants which are there in the firm. So, it's not like article ne review. Kiya. Articles work also has to be reviewed by someone else. That is the partner or the other chartered accountant who is handling the audit. Better we don't go into auditing stuff much. <laughs> Otherwise, this chapter will not get over only. Now, clause number six. Fail to report a material misstatement known to him and which is appearing in financial statement. There is a material misstatement appearing in financial statement. I know advance received the book did as sales. Advance received. They have booked it as sales. So, can I say I know the sales is misstated? And still I don't report. I know the figure appearing is wrong. Still I don't report. I'll be guilty of professional misconduct. So sir, what's the difference between clause 5 and 6? What's the difference between clause and 5 and 6? Clause basically 5 relates to something which is not there in financial. 6 relates to something which is there in financial. Achha, so 5 relates to something which is not there in financial but should be there. It is not there in financial but should be there. That is clause 5. And clause 6 is something which is there in financial but wrong. It is there in financial but it is wrong. Did you understood difference between clause 5 and 6? The 5 is failed to disclose a material fact known to him which is not disclosed in financial statement but disclosure of which is necessary in making those financial statements. And clause 6, you fail to report a material misstatement known to you appearing in financial statement. The financials may material misstatement. I know this figure is wrong. Still, I don't report guilty of professional misconduct. Okay, clause 7. If you do not exercise due diligence, 
if you are not exercising due diligence or you are grossly negligent in conduct of duties you are grossly negligent in conduct of duties you will be guilty of professional misconduct for example uh, there was some fraud done there was some fraud done if you would have if you would have checked the brs properly bank reconciliation statement properly you would be able to find out that fraud but you did not check the brs only if you would have checked brs properly you would have been able to find out the fraud so can i say you are grossly negligent in your duties so if you do not exercise due diligence or gross or you are grossly negligent in conduct of your duties you are guilty of professional misconduct and clause 8 if you fail to obtain sufficient information which is necessary for the purpose of expression of opinion okay for the purpose of expressing an opinion can i say i have to check the things i have to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence so if you fail to obtain sufficient information which is necessary for the purpose of expressing opinion you are guilty of professional misconduct or the exceptions are sufficiently material to negate the expression of opinion ha huh? if there are issues like say books are destroyed sir books are destroyed how can i get information then you give a disclaimer of opinion if books are destroyed then can i say the exception is material enough to negate the expression of opinion are the books are destroyed what do you do books are destroyed what do you do give disclaimer of opinion you say we are unable to give any audit opinion to wo ab de do so if you fail to obtain sufficient information which is necessary for the purpose of expression of opinion then you are guilty of professional misconduct okay so in your part 1 with it six clauses relevant over here clause number 1 disclosure of confidential information of client you are guilty of professional misconduct clause number 2 if you certify without examination okay clause number 5 if you fail to if you fail to disclose a material fact which is not there in financial but disclosure of which was necessary in financial you know about it and still you don't write about it you will be guilty acha there is something appearing in financials which is wrong there is something appearing in financial which is wrong and you don't report it you will be guilty of professional misconduct clause 7 if you fail to exercise due diligence or you are grossly negligent in your conduct of duties and clause number 8 if you fail to obtain sufficient information which is necessary for purpose of expression of opinion then you are guilty of professional misconduct any doubts anybody in the six clauses and so do i need to remember the language of clause what is given answer is yes the language of clause has to be remembered in a manner what is given to so 34 clauses that 34 sentences i repeat 34 clauses that 34 sentences are to be remembered in a way they have been given okay now part 2 part 2 is professional misconduct for members generally generally means whether in practice or service generally ka meaning kya hai whether in practice or service theek hai in that i'm just taking the first clause acha now tell me one thing i am doing a job i am working in a company i am a ca in a company can i say i'll be knowing the financials of the company or oh, tomorrow the quarterly result is to be declared i know it today only tomorrow quarterly result is to be declared i know it today only i tell my friend i call my friend tonight only and say that oh do one thing tomorrow morning first thing you buy the shares of our company so i'm telling my friend first thing what you do is you go and buy the shares of the company because the bumper profits are to be declared that's not allowed okay to if you disclose confidential information about basically your employer then also you are guilty of professional misconduct or if you contravene any of the provisions of this act 
तो क्लॉज वन इज डिस्कलोज सॉरी कॉन्ट्रावेंस एनी ऑफ द प्रोविजन ऑफ दिस एक्ट रेगुलेशन मेड अंडर दिस बाय द काउंसिल देन यू आर गिल्टी एंड सेकेंड वन इज डिस्कलोजर ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंशियल इंफॉर्मेशन discloses confidential information of employer i'm just taking this to if you disclose the confidential information of employer you're guilty of professional misconduct okay so i'm taking two things over here clause 1 contravenes any of the provisions of this act or the regulations made there under or any guidelines issued by the council of ICI okay if i contravene any of the provisions of this act or the regulations which are made under this or any guidelines issued by council of ICI and clause 2 being an employee of a company or a firm or a person i might be employing a company i might be employing a partnership firm I might be employee of an individual, some individual sole proprietorship. Eh? Under the sole proprietorship, I am an employee. Discloses confidential information acquired in the course of employment, except as and when disclosure, as and when required by law, or as permitted by employer. The employer has permitted you, then it's fine. Or law required, then also it is fine. Any doubts? Anybody with this? okay this much is sufficient for this chapter over here all clauses all clauses all schedules will be doing it when we go to auditing subject now there's one council guidelines now see under your first and second schedule they said that the chartered accountant in practice uh, part 1 was for ca in practice the ca in practice has to exercise due diligence should not be grossly negligent but such a point was not there for ca in service so is it okay if ca in service is grossly negligent is it okay if ca in service is grossly negligent okay aditya has a question sir if article discloses confidential information of client will they be liable now see if article discloses confidential information of client the chartered accountant will be responsible because you are working for him you are working for him to not only you should disclose your team member also should not disclose na aapke team member you should have taken care so ca firm where you are working that firm will be penalized if you disclose confidential information of client and what actions they take on you were different hai. they may remove you from article shape wo sab alag cheez hai तो क्वेश्चन विच आई आस्ट वॉज वेदर अ मेंबर इन सर्विस इफ अ मेंबर इन सर्विस इज देयर वेदर ही ऑल्सो हैज टू एक्सरसाइज ड्यू डिलीजेंस आंसर इज यस बट सर दैट वॉज नॉट गिवन इन एनी ऑफ द क्लॉजेस दैट्स गिवन इन काउंसिल गाइडलाइंस एंड रिमेंबर इफ यू वायलेट एनी गाइडलाइंस ई शुड बाई काउंसिल स्टिल यू आर गिल्टी ऑफ प्रोफेशनल मिसकंडक्ट गो बैक गो बैक दिस इज प्रोफेशनल मिसकंडक्ट जनरली इसमें If you contravene any of the guidelines issued by the council, still you will be guilty of professional misconduct. Okay, so council guidelines 2008 are issued, and as per the council guidelines, what they have written, check over here. A member of institute who is an employee, a member of institute who is an employee. shall exercise due diligence shall not be grossly negligent in conduct of duties even if you are an employee you should exercise due diligence should not be grossly negligent did you understood okay so any question of employee comes any question related to employee come should i quote part 1 should i quote part 2 any question of a ca who is a employee comes should i give a reference of part 1 of second schedule or should i give a reference of part 2 of second schedule sir if he is a employee part 1 doesn't come only because he is not in practice if it's a employee it will not be basically a part 1 it will always be part 2 did you got it 
Thank you. Okay, Aditya has a question, sir. What is the difference between provision and the word regulation, sir? Oh, same here, yeah. So, provisions is basically the bare section. Regulations are basically under the section they have drafted some rules. So, uh, you know, in your Companies Act, basically we have the sections. They are called provision. And then for many items, we have some rules which have been formed by basically the MCA. So, the rules are in the rule 1, 2, 3, 4, they are called regulations. Otherwise, it's kind of one and the same. Clear, Aditya? Now, the following part of code of conduct shall be dealt with in financial reporting. So, what we are going to cover over here, the following part of code of conduct is covered under your financial reporting. One, complying with the code. The code says you should comply with the code. You should comply with fundamental principles and you should comply with the conceptual framework. Achha, this is not conceptual framework for financial reporting. This is conceptual framework related to auditing. So just as in FR, FR subject, we did a conceptual framework yesterday. That was conceptual framework for financial reporting. This conceptual framework is conceptual framework related to auditing. Okay. So complying with code, fundamental principles, conceptual framework, which is applicable to everyone. And we'll also cover something which is related to CA in service. So these are the two things related to code of ethics or code basically covered over here. Okay, the part one, we are doing this. Complying with code, fundamental principles, conceptual framework, three things. Complying with code, fundamental principles and conceptual framework. The first complying with code, a chartered accountant shall mandatorily, the chartered accountant shall comply with code. There might be circumstances coming where law or regulation does not allow you to comply with code. So, sir, what to do? Code says do this, but law or regulation is not allowing me to so follow the law or regulation. I repeat, follow the law or regulation. The so law or regulation will prevail. So if complying with code is one thing and law or regulation is precluding you, you should follow the law and regulation. Did you understood? Now, there are five fundamental principles. Second, you need to comply with fundamental principles. First, comply with code. Second, comply with the fundamental principles. So, which are the fundamental principles? Five. Integrity. You should be honest, straightforward. You should be honest. Integrity is honesty. So, auditor or basically a member has to be honest, straightforward in all professional and business relationship. Objectivity is unbiased attitude. Integrity is honesty. Objectivity kya hai? Unbiased attitude. Ye tha honesty. Ye hai unbiased attitude. Okay, what do you mean by word unbiased attitude? Your decision should not be influenced by someone else. So because someone else is telling I'm doing this, no, 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 I should be unbiased. Because director want to show good profit, I allow them lesser provisions. No, 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 no. I should have an unbiased attitude. That's objectivity. Third, professional competence and due care. I should be professionally competent. I need to keep myself updated. Not just me, my team members should also be updated. I should give training to my team members. The articles go regular basis training should be given. That's professional competence. Confidentiality, you should not disclose confidential information of client. And last, professional behavior. You should not do anything which is bringing kind of disrepute. You should behave in a professional manner. Yeah, you should have a professional behavior. So, you should comply with relevant laws and regulation. Avoid any conduct that chartered accountant knows or should know might bring discredit to the profession. So, try to avoid anything which will bring discredit to the profession. Five fundamental principles related to audit. Integrity, objectivity, professional competence and due care. Confidentiality, professional behavior. 
you need to comply you shall comply with each of the fundamental principles shall comply yahan pe bhi word tha you shall comply with the code clear <clears throat> okay now doing each one of them in bit detail doing each one of them in bit detail now see i'll not be going much in detail in theory here reason the same theories we are going to do in the subject of auditing so in theories i'm just stating the important lines which are there we'll focus more on the questions which are given because this is a new chapter not the earlier i personally feel the question will be direct question from the questions they have given you see if something new is there they came first time with the chapter itself so they will try to ask a question based on what they have given they will not try to come something new only which is not there in book so yahan pe focus should be more on the questions given over here now integrity the chartered accountant should comply with the principles of integrity which requires you to be straightforward honest in all professional and business relationship understandable objectivity the chartered accountant basically should comply with the principle of objectivity which requires accountant not to compromise professional or business judgment because of bias conflict or undue influence of others you should not you should not compromise your professional or business judgment because of bias conflict of interest or undue influence of others directors want to show good profit they want to more, make lesser provision should i agree no i have to remain unbiased objectivity is to be maintained okay check question number 1 please keep on highlighting whatever i have highlighted please keep on highlighting whatever i have highlighted i have highlighted in advance so that we are able to save bit of time i am trying to finish off the chapter today itself <clears throat> okay info star limited <clears throat> it's a listed company the directors are paid a bonus based on profit achieved so percentage of profit is the bonus to directors so this are the range of profit and this are the bonuses this are the range of profit and this are the bonuses so can i say directors will try to show good profits only so why so that they get more bonus the bonus is based on percentage of profit and the draft statement the draft statement shows the profit is 2 cr acha that falls here the draft statement shows the profit is how much rupees 2 cr but there is one issue what is the issue on 25th march 2 oh 25th march 2 infostar sold a land adjacent to ho adjacent to ho we had a land and we sold it to third party for 40 crore with a option to purchase back the land on 25th may after two months only kab becha 25th march i sold a land on 25th of march 02 and i have a option to buy it back on 25th may at rupees 40 crore plus a premium of 6% okay the simple word i am selling a land to you with the option to buy it back after 2 months and if i buy it back i have to pay you 40 crore plus 6% extra okay the question should i record a sale of land question should i record a sale of land land sold with option to buy it back this is a question on indias 115 <clears throat> okay on the instruction of cfo is a chartered accountant on the instruction of cfo acha now see the word cfo who is a chartered accountant can i say is nothing but a ca in service the transaction was treated as sale the transaction was treated as sale discuss the ethical and accounting implication with respect to ca in service okay the cfo is a chartered accountant he told that recorded a sale sale record kar do now see if you record a sale can i say profits will go up 
profit on sale will come in pnl profits will go up the bonuses will go up directors bonus will go up okay the check over here accounting treatment the sale of land meets the condition specified under ndas 115 the revenue from contract with customer and it qualifies as a repurchase agreement we are selling but will buy it back after 2 months as you have an option to buy back the land from just and therefore control is not transferred control is not transferred so infostar must treat the transaction as financing arrangement you don't record sale of land keep land in your book only don't record sale of land aisha are you clear yaar whenever i'm selling with a right to buy it back or a mandatory repurchase in that case you cannot record the sale in that case you cannot record the sale ha huh. if i am selling it wherein the buyer has option to sell it back to me the buyer buyer has option to give it back to me so then in that case if i feel buyer will not give me back then only i record sale but if i feel buyer will give me back wahan pe bhi i don't record sale but yahan pe i have a right to buy it back if i have a right to buy it back i don't record sale today so control is not transferred we don't record a sale ठीक है तो सर मनी रिसीव फोर्टी करोर ट्रीट इट एज अ लोन आफ्टर टू मंथ्स यू टू गिव फोर्टी करोर प्लस सिक्स परसेंट दैट एक्स्ट्रा सिक्स परसेंट विल बी इंटरेस्ट ओवर द पीरियड तो यू मस्ट ट्रीट द ट्रांजैक्शन एज फिनेंसिंग अरेंजमेंट तो कंटिन्यू द लैंड इन योर बुक ओनली एंड मनी रिसीव्ड यू विल शो इट एज अ लोन ठीक है तो रिकॉर्डिंग द अफोसेड ट्रांजेक्शन एज सेल Recording the aforesaid transaction and sale is an attempt to manipulate the financial statement to show the improved profit figures. The sale must be reversed. Land should be reinstated, brought back. The sale must be reversed. Land should be reinstated at its carrying amount prior to the transaction. So don't remove the land. But CFO told remove karo. Okay. So now ethical issues. So see, one is accounting treatment as per one one five. Now ethical issues. So see, this part we have already done. This part is already done. Only thing extra in this part is ethical issue. Acha, you are a member in service. You are in member in service. Question: Are you following? Are you following the provisions of the act or the regulations made there under or the guidelines issued by council? You should exercise due diligence. Should not be grossly negligent. See. that's not you are basically being grossly negligent you know about basically india's 115 still you are not following it so here as it's about a ca in service i should not mention about part 1 i should mention about part 2 part 2 clause number 1 part 2 may clause number 1 if you contravene any of the provisions of the act or regulations made there under or the guidelines issued by council and you can also write about the guideline which is there that a member in service will be guilty of professional misconduct if he fails to exercise due diligence or is grossly negligent in conduct of duties okay so ethical standards are required sorry chartered accountants are required to comply with fundamental principle one of the fundamental principle is integrity or oh, yahan pe you are not having integrity you know this is wrong still you are doing it so it appears that the integrity of cfo is compromised in this situation as he has accounted the transaction as sale not as a loan theek hai come down so he is subject to professional misconduct he is subject to professional misconduct under clause 1 part 2 under clause 1 part 2 of second schedule and write down what that clause says Clause 1 states that the member of institute whether in practice or not shall be guilty of professional misconduct if he contravenes any of the provisions of the act or regulations made there under or guidelines issued by council and also write down the guideline as per the guideline issued by council a member of institute who is not a employee sorry who is an employee shall exercise due diligence and shall not be grossly negligent in conduct of duties any doubts anybody with this question it's nothing but fr plus audit mixed the first part was fr ethical issue is nothing but the audit part the chartered accountants have to follow fundamental principles one of the fundamental principle integrity cfo ka integrity is compromised okay 
तो इस सब्जेक्ट टू प्रोफेशनल मिसकंडक्ट क्लॉज वन पार्ट टू ऑफ सेकेंड स्कड्यूल एंड यू एक्सप्लेन दैट क्लॉज वन describe it and also write down about the council guideline which is there thank you okay next professional competence and due care it was integrity objectivity third one professional competence and due care maintaining professional competence if you want to maintain yourself professionally competent you need to keep updated requires a continuous awareness understanding of relevant technical professional business developments and the ca shall take reasonable step to ensure that those who are working with him have appropriate training and supervision so it's not only that i should keep myself updated i should also give my training to the employees the articles everyone so that they are also working properly okay come to question number 2 come to question number 2 rustam limited a company engage in oil extraction as a present obligation acha you are doing oil extraction you have a present obligation to dismantle the oil rig you have installed oil rig at the end of the life you have to dismantle it okay should i do a provision for dismantling on day 1 you estimate the cost of work to be 100 crore at the end of 10 years so dismantling work will be costing 100 crore at the end of 10th year should i do provision for dismantling decommissioning on day 1 directors of rustam are aware of the requirement of india's 37 red with india's 16 so they know day one only i am required to make a provision for decommissioning entry hoga pp debit to provision for decommissioning however however see this line they propose to expense the cost of dismantling the oil rig as in when incurred so they are not making any provision and they argue that indias involves judgment our judgment our judgment is no provision required they say indias are based on judgment our judgment is no provision required and we will account it as and when it comes only in 10th year discuss whether the directors are acting unethically yeah the treatment proposed by directors is in contravention of indias acha and one more question over here what should be done by the practicing chartered accountant So the practicing CA is it from those who are in service or those who are in practice? A practice wala angle, practice wala angle. So don't quote about currently part two. What should I do? You are in practice. Can I say I should try to convince the directors? Tell them that sir, this is not correct. We are required to have a provision for dismantling done. Yeah, so I need to convince them and have that provision for dismantling done. Now even if suppose if they are not doing provision for dismantling. So can I say financial statement contains a material misstatement which is known to you? The financial statement contains a material misstatement. The figures of PP is wrong. The provision is not done in books. So something which is known to me, it has a material misstatement, and still I don't report. Can I say I'll be guilty of professional misconduct? Clause number five, six. Clause number five, six, seven. Yada ya. Clause five kya tha? Something which is not there in financials, but disclosure of which is necessary. and you are not reporting it acha something which is there in financials wrong and you are not reporting it fail to report and clause number 7 was basically if you fail to exercise due diligence or you are grossly negligent in conduct of duties so i should quote about clause number 5 6 7 of your part 1 of second schedule did you understood acha uh, aisha i can quote 5 and 6 both reason Why is PP figure wrong? Something there in financial misstated. Six. Why again quote six? Provision for decommissioning not there only in financial. Something not appearing in financials which should be there. I can quote about five and six together. Always five and six go together only. So generally we write down about five and six together. Better will be here. Six I accept, but they would have written about five and six both. Five, six, seven. Sub likh liya hoga. 
ओके तो द ट्रीटमेंट इज इन कॉन्ट्रावेंशन ऑफ इंडिया स्टडी सेवन एज पर इंडिया स्टडी सेवन एट द टाइम ऑफ इनिशियल रिकॉग्निशन यू शुड कैपिटलाइज द प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ द कॉस्ट ऑफ डिसमेंटलिंग विच इज टू बी इनकर्ड एट द एंड ऑफ द लाइफ and simultaneously basically it will be debited to your pp it appears to be a deliberate intention to contraven in day 16 and 37 not a unintentional mistake though the directors can exercise strong or undue influence over ca the ca is bound to act with integrity remain unbiased and you should recommend the directors that sir we should comply with india 16 india 37 this treatment will be wrong acha if the directors are not agreeing If the directors are not agreeing, remember we had, we had SA 260, communication of audit matters to those charged with governance. याद आया ऐसा कुछ? Communication of audit matters to those charged with governance. हाँ तो you can communicate or take up the matters to higher level board of directors or non-executive directors. You can take it to non-executive directors. तो मैटर मे बी रेस्ड बिफोर द नॉन एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर्स एक्सप्लेनिंग देम द इश्यू एंड हाउ द फाइनेंशियल्स विल शो अ ट्रू एंड फेयर व्यू द चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट कैन एंश्योर दैट कॉन्ट्रावेंशन ऑफ इंडिया 16 एंड 37 इज एड्रेस एंड रेक्टिफाइड ओके बाय नोइंगली अच्छा तो इफ वी डू नॉट कम्युनिकेट द करेक्टिव मेजर टू डायरेक्टर्स If 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 we do not communicate the corrective measure to directors, the fundamental principle of professional behavior is violated. Professional behavior says you should communicate it to higher level authorities. If you don't do it, professional behavior is violated. By knowingly allowing the directors not to apply the requirement of India's, the chartered accountant will not be acting diligently. and you will not be demonstrating professional competence due care and you will be subject to professional misconduct under clause 5 6 7 of part 1 of second schedule then they have explained clause 5 they have explained clause 6 they have explained clause 7 any doubts anybody with this question as the one is If you don't communicate to higher level authority, professional behavior will be breached. Fundamental principle. And then clause number five, six, seven. To talk about fundamental principle, also talk about the schedules. The first schedule, second schedule. Us me clauses which are getting violated. Okay. Next point. Okay, the five fundamental principle we are done with. Which one? We are done with objectivity, integrity, professional competence, and due care. And fourth one now comes confidentiality. And last one is professional behavior. Okay, the confidentiality you need to comply with the principle of confidentiality, and you should not be communicating the confidential information of client to anybody else. acha even the confidential information which you get during employment should also not be communicated and you should be alert you should be alert of inadvertent disclosure inadvertent is by mistake galti se ho gaya wo baat baat mein friend ko bata diya wo baat baat mein friend ko bata diya that is also not allowed inadvertent disclosures should also not be there you should be alert of the possibility of inadvertent disclosure including in a social environment other theories are given but the theories are not relevant from fr angle more relevant in auditing will be doing in auditing over there uh, when you are doing a self study you can read it once when you are doing a study when you are reading this chapter at your home you should read everything once uh, highlighted things focus more okay nevertheless nevertheless The following are circumstances where chartered accountants are or might be required to disclose the confidential information. So when, when we are allowed to disclose the confidential information, one when disclosure is required by law, required. Disclosure is required by law. Law requires it. I have to do it. Second. Disclosure is permitted by law and authorized by client. So law permits 
एंड माई क्लाइंट इज ऑथोराइज तो आई कैन डिस्कलोज इट सी रिक्वायर्ड बाय लॉ तो करना ही पड़ेगा परमिटेड बाय लॉ एंड क्लाइंट परमिट देन यू डू इट एंड थर्ड दर इज अ प्रोफेशनल ड्यूटी और अ राइट टू डिस्कलोज वेर इट इज नॉट प्रोहिबिटेड बाय लॉ There's a professional duty or a right to disclose where it is not prohibited by law. For example, to respond to inquiry or an investigation by a regulatory body, or there's a peer review or quality review by ICAI. In ICAI, see ICAI also wants to know the CAs are working properly. ICAI also wants to know the CAs are working properly. They have a concept of peer review, quality review. Uh, they have a concept of peer review, quality review. Again, we have a chapter on peer review, quality review, and auditing. So I'm not going into the word peer review, quality review, but that is basically ICAI. They also want to know whether the chartered accountants are working properly or not. So they send one chartered accountant to check the work of another chartered accountant. So ICAI is sending one chartered accountant to check the work of another chartered accountant. That's called peer review. Quality review comes under central government. Quality review actually comes under central government. Okay. And question: uh, I have obtained some confidential information of client. Now that client is no longer my client. Okay. I obtained confidential information of A Limited when he was my client. Now A Limited is not my client. So can I disclose that confidential information now? तो अर्लियर मेरा क्लाइंट था नाउ इज नो लॉन्गर माई क्लाइंट नाउ इज नो लॉन्गर माई क्लाइंट कैन आई डिस्कलोज द कॉन्फिडेंशियल इन्फॉर्मेशन नाउ नो इवन आफ्टर द एंगेजमेंट इज ओवर और ऑडिट इज ओवर यू कैन नॉट डिस्कलोज द कॉन्फिडेंशियल इन्फॉर्मेशन तो चार्ट अकाउंटेंट शेल कंटिन्यू टू कंप्लाई विद प्रिंसिपल ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी इवन आफ्टर द एंड ऑफ रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द अकाउंटेंट एंड द क्लाइंट फॉर एम्प्लॉइंग और द एम्प्लॉइंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ठीक है Last professional behavior. Last is professional behavior. When promoting himself or your work, whenever you are talking about you or your work, you should not be boasting about yourself. The child accountant shall not bring profession into disrepute. You should be honest and truthful. You should not make exaggerated claim. I know, so he did this, he did that, he did that. That's you are trying to boast about yourself. So don't make exaggerate claim and don't give references. Oh, is se acha main karta hu. I'm doing better than him. No, no, no. So don't give despairing references comparing with the work of others. So whenever you are promoting yourself or your work, be honest, truthful. Don't make exaggerated claims. Don't basically give despairing references. Now. There are certain clauses. Uh, they have not talked about first schedule. Under your first schedule, uh, not the second schedule. Under your first schedule, part one. I repeat, under first schedule, part one, clause five, six, seven relates to advertisements. So there are many type of advertisement which a chartered accountant cannot do. There are many type of advertisement which a chartered accountant cannot do. Have you seen an advertisement of chartered accountant coming on TV or radio? Have you seen an advertisement of a chartered accountant coming on TV or radio or a huge hoarding? कहीं hoarding लगाया for best auditing service contact? Oh, no. The reason is we are not allowed. So under your first schedule, first schedule part one clause five six seven advertisement prohibitions are there. We'll be learning in detail in auditing. ठीक है? चलो. तो they were telling that this chapter covers about complying with code complying with fundamental principles complying with conceptual framework okay the complying with code done complying with fundamental principle we have done all five fundamental principle now complying with conceptual framework the ca should apply the conceptual framework related to audit it's not conceptual framework for financial reporting it's related to audit to identify evaluate and address the threats to comply with the fundamental principles so whatever are threats in complying with fundamental principles you identify evaluate address those threats <clears throat> oh 
ओके तो यू नीड टू एक्सरसाइज वॉट प्रोफेशनल जजमेंट यू नीड टू एक्सरसाइज वॉट प्रोफेशनल जजमेंट नॉट सी वॉट इज अ प्रोफेशनल जजमेंट एप्लीकेशन ऑफ योर रेलिवेंट ट्रेनिंग स्किल कॉम्पिटेंस यूजिंग द फैक्ट्स एंड सर्कमस्टांसिस तो बेस्ड ऑन फैक्ट्स एंड सर्कमस्टांसिस apply your training skill whatever judgment experience knowledge experience whatever you having and then you make a judgment that's called professional judgment so i see the facts and circumstances i use my knowledge skill experience and then i make a judgment okay the professional judgment involves application of relevant training professional knowledge your skill competence commensurate with the facts and circumstances and then you are making a judgment in relation to undertaking professional activities the professional judgment is required whenever you are applying the conceptual framework okay so to identify the threat kahan kahan pe threat hai which which relationships or which which areas may there is a threat to fundamental principle so can i say i have to make my judgment professional judgment so in deciding where is the threat how to evaluate threat and how to overcome the threat how to address those threat there will be professional judgments required theek okay? hai now there is a word called reasonable third party test reasonable and informed third party test so whether whether i have complied whether i have complied with fundamental principles or not you need to try to look from the angle of a third party if i have done this thing if i have done this thing whether a reasonable informed third party would feel that i have complied with fundamental principle okay imagine imagine article's father is a director in a company not my father my father is a director in a company i am disqualified my father is a director in a company i am disqualified my not my father my article's father article's father is a director in a company are we disqualified to be auditor no no we are not disqualified article ke father is a director now tell me would it be right to send that article for that audit would it be right to send that article for that audit no because his papa is a director if director has done something wrong he will not be able to report to us oh papa ne galat kiya hai to batayega nahi so the thing is we are not sending that article for that audit Ah, so that article we are not sending him for that audit. So can I say we have taken a safeguard? Ah, the threat kya tha? If that article goes, basically objectivity might be compromised. If that article goes, objectivity might be compromised. So we decided not to send that article for that audit. Now tell me whether a reasonable and informed third party will feel I have complied with ethical principles or fundamental principles? Yes. So whenever you are deciding whether you have complied with fundamental principles or not, think from a reasonable, informed third party angle. The reasonable, informed third party should feel we have complied with ethical, fundamental principles. Okay, the check. The reasonable and informed third party test. is a consideration by chartered accountant whether the same conclusion would likely be reached by another party and reasonable and informed third party does not need to be a ca zaruri nahi hai wo ca ho to like there is some another guy who is reasonably knowledgeable has basically all the information he knows that articles father is a director and he knows we have not sent that article for that audit would he feel that we have complied with objectivity if you will feel that yes we have complied with objectivity then then yes fundamental principles are fulfilled so whenever i am deciding whether i have complied with fundamental principles or not think from reasonable and informed third parties angle any doubts anybody any doubts anybody okay the first part which was covered under this chapter complying with code complying with fundamental principles complying with conceptual framework wo khatam second part covered under this chapter is related to ca in service second part covered under this chapter is related to ca in service okay one conflict of interest 
the conflict of interest should not the conflict of interest should not be basically compromising your professional judgment so because i have a interest over there i'm taking decisions in this way no 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 that should not happen so imagine imagine your salary is linked with profit if your salary is linked with profit don't try to show more profits your salary linked with profit don't try to show more profit aisa nahi hona chahiye to conflict of interest to try to identify the conflict kahan kahan pe conflict of interest aa raha hai try to identify the conflict you should take reasonable steps to identify circumstances which might create a conflict of interest so try to evaluate the nature of your interest or relationship between the parties involved to so identify the circumstances that creates a conflict of interest uske karan which threats uske karan which threats are created how you can eliminate it the example of action to eliminate the threat example of action to eliminate the threat is withdrawal from decision making process see you are in service you are in service okay imagine i am a ca i am a ca and i am a director of a company i am a ca i am a director of the company and we are in talks we are in talks to buy certain raw material from my son only okay now tell me one thing if i am involved in that decision making process can i say i'll be biased oh the company is trying to procure raw material from my son only i'll try to ensure the deal goes through i'll be biased so better is can i say i should stay away from that decision so that decision may i'm not taking part allow other directors to take the decision so conflict arises due to this agreement threat is coming up your self interest threat is there how do i avoid it better is you stay away from that decision did you got it the example of action that might eliminate threat is withdrawing from the decision making process other examples can be uh, certain responsibilities you divide between people or my work is supervised by independent person so my decision is then supervised by independent another director to so, mere work mein it should not be like i was biased mai biased reh gaya nahi reh gaya there is another person who is supervising my decisions also so, these are some things which i have given and plus whenever you have any conflict of interest you should disclose it it is generally necessary to disclose the nature of conflict of interest how many threats were created and how did you address it always always disclosure of conflict of interest what are the threats created how did you how did you avoid that threat or how did you move against that threat that needs a disclosure to so identify the conflict of interest see the threats which are basically being coming up take actions against them and disclose all of this to the relevant people disclose all of this to the relevant people is it clear you are in service okay come to question number 3 theory is not much important over here this questions are important and i told you new chapter hai they will ask a question which is directly there in your book they will not go for something different okay alaps limited director alaps limited director feel company needs new money to modernize the plant and equipment and for that they will take loan from bank the bank requires a prospective borrower to have a strong projected cash flow and debt service coverage ratio should be at least 10 however the current projected statement of cash flow does not satisfy the bank's criteria for lending so we need money to modernize the plant bank will give you loan but they have criteria you should have a strong future projected cash flows the so current projection is telling we don't have the strong future projected cash flow the directors told the bank directors ne kya bola bank ko projections will be met don't worry and a ca will submit a report 
The CA has recently joined a lap. Okay, the new CA has joined our company and has openly stated that he cannot lose the job because financial commitment. Okay, so I have newly joined in a company and I said this job is very important for me. I have my EMIs to be paid. I cannot leave the job. Now tell me one thing. Can director pressurize you? Can director pressurize you to make a projections which are not correct? Ah. The current projected cash flows doesn't meet bank criteria. But directors told bank, don't worry, we'll give you a revised projection. We'll give you a revised projection which will meet the criteria. And our CA will give you. And CA has newly joined the company. CA has recently joined the company. And you cannot lose the job because of your financial commitment. You see, I am in a situation, directors are telling me to make a projected financials which are wrong. If I don't do it, they'll remove me. If I don't do it, I'll lose my job. So see, I cannot lose the job also. And I have to remain ethical. I have to remain ethical. I should not be giving wrong projection also. What to do? Kya kare ya na kare ya kaish si mushkil hai. So discuss potential conflict of interest and guide how the chartered accountant should respond to the situation. Answer me always ethics comes. Practicality is different. Okay, the present given scenario, there are two fold conflict of interest. One is a pressure to obtain finance. Okay, the company needs money. The loan to chahiye. And chartered accountant, personal circumstances, I have financial difficulty, I cannot lose my job. And duty to shareholder, employees and bank. Duty to shareholder, employees and bank. Now see, if I try to see over here. The directors have duty to act in best interest of company shareholder. Okay. Injection of capital to modernize the plant appears will lead to greater profit. This appears to be in interest of shareholder. Ah, so if at all they are able to pump in new money, they are able to modernize the plant, profit will increase. It will be benefit to shareholders, employees only. But but if you give, if you take up that loan, if you take up that loan based on the wrong projections that we will be earning this, this, this and based on that you are taking loan and later if you are not able to repay the loan, can I say there is a winding up issue also coming up, going concern might be affected. If such finance is obtained based on misleading information, it could be detrimental to the going concern status of the company. So you think that okay this is good for shareholder but yeah you are taking a loan beyond your limit you are not able to repay it then going concern itself will be affected can i say that's detrimental to the shareholders now what should the newly ca in service who came up should do the chartered accountants financial circumstances coupled with pressure from directors could end up in knowingly disclosing the incorrect information to bank you might give wrong projections to bank because of director's pressure, your financial commitments and thereby compromising the fundamental principles of objectivity, integrity, professional competence. Okay, so one talk about fundamental principles and then talk about schedule. See all the answers. In all answers, talk about fundamental principles and talk about the schedules violated. Okay, I just put a star here. In all answers, give fundamental principle which is violated. And clauses of CA Act getting violated. The so talk about two things. One is the fundamental principle getting violated, and second is you talk about 
द क्लॉज इज ऑफ सी एक्ट गेटिंग वायलेट अच्छा नाउ ही इज अ एम्प्लॉई कैन आई से आई शुड टॉक अबाउट पार्ट टू ऑफ सेकेंड स्कड्यूल क्लॉज वन पार्ट टू सेकेंड स्कड्यूल वायलेट्स एनी ऑफ द प्रोविजन ऑफ दिस एक्ट और द रेगुलेशन मेड देर अंडर और द गाइडलाइन इज शुड बाई काउंसिल एंड आई शुड ऑल्सो राइट अबाउट द गाइडलाइन टेलिंग दैट शुड एक्ट You should act due diligently. You should not be grossly negligent. All that things. ठीक है. So appropriate action. What should be done by the newly CA who came in? It is suggested that chartered accountant should communicate to director to submit the projected statement of cash flow, which reflects the current position of the company. Knowingly providing incorrect information will be considered as a professional misconduct. still still if you submit the incorrect projected cash flow you will be liable for professional misconduct as per clause 1 part 2 of second schedule as well as the guidelines issued by the council yeah, as per the guidelines issued by the council you employee should exercise due diligence should not be grossly negligent did you understood did you understood okay next a uh, preparation presentation of financial statement see ca is in service ca is in service you are preparing financial statement ca is in service you are preparing financial statement as you are in service you are in preparation of financial statement so you need to prepare the financial statement based on what the relevant reporting framework means as or in days whatever applicable second you need to prepare it in a manner that is neither to mislead nor to influence any contract or regulatory outcome means you are preparing it unbiasedly you should exercise professional judgment you should not omit anything which is important Okay, the one it has to be as per AS or NDAs. It should not be biased. You should exercise professional judgment, and you should not omit anything which is important. You are in service. You are in preparation site. Okay. Now, use of discretion. Use of discretion in preparation and present. Discretion means own judgment. जो अच्छा लगे वैसे करो. Oh, we want to show good profits. Let's reduce the provision. we want to show more profits we want to show more profits we are reducing provision we want to show lesser profits we are increasing provision no 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 that should not be done so preparation or presenting information might require exercise of discretion judgments the chartered accountant shall not exercise such discretion with the intention of misleading others discretion ka meaning hota hai judgment you will need judgment So don't take judgment based on your benefit don't take judgments based on your benefit clear next uh, relying on work of others relying on work of others can i say many times many times the work of expert is taken you know you had sa 500 audit evidence in that there was a word called management expert this sa 620 auditors expert so there's a management expert also auditors expert also management expert is hired by management management expert is hired by management who's helping the management in preparation of financial statement yeah management expert is hired by management who is helping management in preparation of financial statement an auditors expert is hired by auditor was helping auditor in obtaining sufficient appropriate audit evidence theek hai to chartered accountant who intends to rely on work of others internal or external expert should exercise professional judgment to determine whether whether that expert is properly qualified this that all that things you need to check you need to check his skill competence objectivity you need to check basically the data used by him the assumptions used by him that all you need to check it if you are using the work of others is it clear 
नेक्स्ट एड्रेसिंग इंफॉर्मेशन दैट इज और माइट बी मिसलीडिंग एड्रेसिंग इंफॉर्मेशन दैट इज और माइट बी मिसलीडिंग वेन अ चार्ट अकाउंटेंट नोज और यू हैव अ रीजन टू बिलीव दैट दिस इंफॉर्मेशन इज और माइट बी मिसलीडिंग वॉट टू डू डिस्कस विद द अप्रोप्रिएट लेवल ऑफ पीपल एंड रिजोल्व द मैटर इफ आई फील दैट दिस इंफॉर्मेशन माइट बी मिसलीडिंग द अकाउंटेंट शुड टेक अप्रोप्रिएट एक्शन टू रिजोल्व द मैटर यू शुड टेक अप्रोप्रिएट एक्शन टू रिजोल्व द मैटर वॉट कैन बी द अप्रोप्रिएट एक्शन डिस्कस विद द अप्रोप्रिएट लेवल ऑफ पीपल So check over here the actions that might include discussing, discussing with appropriate level of management or basically your superior. You discuss with them and requesting to take appropriate action to resolve the matter. If I feel this information is wrong, talk. Talk with your superiors. Talk to the board of directors. Tell them to correct it. Tell them this is not the way. It should be like this. That should be done. You are in pra. You are in service. You are in service. If you find something misleading, talk to your superiors. Okay. Now come to question number four. Five more minutes, then we take a break. Five more minutes, then we take a break. come to question number 4 sunshine limited as debt covenant covenant means condition you have taken a loan loan mein there are conditions attached sunshine limited as debt covenants attached to some of its borrowing and they are required to repay the debt in full if you fail to maintain the liquidity ratio or operating margin above a specified limit acha so if liquidity ratios are not kept proper the bank can ask to repay the loan now only the cfo is a chartered accountant cfo is a chartered accountant and company is entering into a fresh five year leasing arrangement tell me five year lease arrangement we are taking a property on lease for five years can i say i have to book a rou asset and a lease liability a problem if you book a lease liability your liquidity ratios operating margin ke ratios might get affected so if you book a lease liability they might get affected wo problem hai so what the cfo say the cfo proposes rather than basically having this five year agreement you draft a agreement in a manner that there are Six ten months के leases see five years into twelve months sixty months तो एक काम करो ना six ten ten months वाले agreement तो ten ten months वाले six agreement we do it rather than having a one agreement of five years the lease agreement be drafted in a manner it's a series of six ten month leases rather than a single five year lease so that you get a short term lease exemption याद है Uh, under a short term lease exemption you don't book a rou asset you don't book a lease liability this is only if the lease term is less than 12 months uh, short term lease is lease term less than 12 months wahan pe you don't book a rou asset you don't book a lease liability chalega but tell me really whether really this is a short term lease uh, legally aapne chalo you made it 10 lease of matlab uh, 6 leases of 10 10 months each aapne alag kar diya but tell me really Really, is it a short term? No, it is actually a lease of property of five years. So the CFO is trying to avoid that lease liability in book intentionally, and you are trying to violate the concept. Legally, you might be right, but substance-wise, you are wrong. And you know, India says you should be having substance over legal form. Okay, the check discuss the ethical issues from the perspective of CFO. the so lease agreement uh, the proposed action by sunshine limited appears to be a deliberate attempt to circumvent the terms of covenant the legal form will require treatment as a series of short term which could be recorded in pnl without rou asset lease liability coming this will be form of off balance sheet finance will not report the true assets and obligation will not report the true assets and obligation liquidity ratios will also be misrepresented 
the operating margins also will be affected because now see uh, why operating margins will be affected if you book a rou asset it's a depreciation goes in pnl depreciation what depreciation ke roop se jata hai but if at all you're not booking rou asset you're taking rental rental will go directly under other expense so one goes under other expense other goes under depreciation two goes in different places only so if someone is calculating ebitda you know ebitda earning before interest depreciation and amortization earnings before interest tax depreciation amortization so if i calculate ebitda so if that rental is put in other expense ebitda will come less if rental is put in other expense ebitda will come less but if i had booked the rou asset and that was a part of depreciation the ebitda will be coming more because i am having earnings before depreciation so ebitda calculations will also go wrong your ebitda calculations will also be going wrong so if at all you are following that okay so what they are telling so sunshine limited is aware that the proposed treatment will be contrary to indes and such manipulation is a clear breach of fundamental principles of objectivity integrity it's a clear breach of objectivity integrity if cfo fails to comply with his duty cfo you are in service i should write about clause 1 part 2 of second schedule and i should also write about the guideline so all questions of ca in service all questions of ca in service clause 1 part 2 second schedule will come and council guidelines will come okay let me just write down that sentence all questions of ca in service comma clause 1 part 2 of second schedule and council guidelines will come any doubts anybody with this question this is nothing but fr only just they are adding the element of audit over here what will be the implications related to professional ethics Okay now we take a break of 10 minutes and then we finish off the remaining portion of this chapter we'll finish off the entire chapter today only maybe 5 10 minutes the lecture will get extended maybe the 5 10 minutes lecture will get extended but uh, we are finishing it off today so we finish till question number 4 acting with sufficient expertise we start after the break it's 8 hours 7 minutes we are meeting back at 8 hours 18 minutes It's eight hours seven minutes. We're meeting back at eight hours eighteen minutes. Enjoy your break.
Hi friends, welcome back. Give me high five, thumbs up. Chalo, let's move ahead. We want to finish off this chapter today. Thank you. Let's move ahead. Okay, next one. <clears throat> you are a CA in service. You are a CA in service. You need to act with sufficient expertise. Uh, you are a CA in service. You need to act with what? A sufficient expertise. A CA in a chartered accountant shall not intentionally mislead an employing organization as to the level of experience or as to the level of expertise which you are having. So in your resume, don't try to claim you have more experience than what it is. Don't try to claim more expertise than what it is. Like you're telling to them, yes, I've done IPO work. And now company hires you for IPO work and you don't know the IPO work. That should not be happening. So if a threat to compliance or principle of professional competence and due care cannot be addressed. Achha, you need to work with professional competence, due care. You cannot address it. Now what to do? See, one option is you try to get training, all that things. One option is you try to get training, all that things. But second option, if I don't know only how to do this work, tell them clearly, decline the service, decline to perform the duties in question. If I don't know IPO work, so don't boost about yourself and don't say I've done IPO work. As a new one, So examples of action that might address one is basically obtaining training. One is obtaining assistance or training from someone based on that you are able to learn or if you are still not able to learn, you don't know about it, then simple is decline that duty. Clear? Okay, come to question number five. Come to question number five. Directors of Agastya Limited are entitled to incentive based on operating profit margin. Whatever is operating profit margin based on that, the incentives are given to director. Now the issue. 1st April 1, Agastya Limited defined benefit pension scheme. They have a defined benefit pension scheme. It was amended. Achha. So, defined benefit pension scheme was amended and now pension entitlement. From 12% of salary, we made it 18.5% of salary. So, as per the scheme earlier, you were entitled for 12% of final salary. Now, you will get 18.5% of final salary. This is called plan amendment. Yade? This is called plan amendment in days 19 employee benefit. Okay, that's per in days 19 employee benefit. Whenever a plan is amended and an extra cost is coming here, 12% becomes 18.5% to be paid. So, where does the difference go? Does it go in PNL? Does it go in OCI? Due to plan amendment, whatever the difference is coming, liability going up or down, the difference goes in PNL or OCI. Okay, the chartered accountant has shown such increase in pension entitlement 85 crore under that employee benefit. The directors propose a change in accounting policy telling that all such gain losses on pension scheme should go to OCI. The chartered accountant has taken it in PNL. Directors are telling take it in OCI. Take it in OCI and the, discuss the ethical and accounting implication from the perspective of the consultant what do i do see only two things goes in oci so which are the two things going in oci one is that net interest uh, so on your liability we have unwinding of discount happening so interest added to and on your plan asset also there's interest so net interest goes in oci Sorry, not net interest. Net interest goes in PNL. It's a return on plan asset other than interest. Correct. Sorry. The return on your plan asset. Return on plan asset other than interest goes in OCI. And second thing which goes in OCI is actuarial assumptions are changed. If actuary assumptions are changed and because of that some gain loss comes, that goes in OCI. Only that two things go in OCI. Remaining everything goes in PNL. So, here pay plan amendment done, that will go in PNL, correct. Okay, net interest goes in PNL only, return on plan asset other than interest, that goes in OCI. 
Okay, if I see over here, India's 19 employee benefit requires all gain losses on defined benefit plan to be recognized in PNL except for the remeasurement component relating to plan asset and defined benefit obligation. Accordingly, the current service cost, the past service cost, interest cost, they all go in PNL. So it should all go in PNL. Now directors are telling you take it in OCI reason. If it is taken in OCI, the operating margin go up, directors ka come bonus go up. Uh, if it is taken in OCI, the operating margins will go up, directors bonuses will go up. So it is a self-interest in the pension scheme that is making the directors consider a change in accounting policy so that they are able to maximize the profit. Achha, directors are telling you to change the policy. I should also write about Indies 8. Achha, to Indies 8. A change in accounting policy is permitted. When it's required by Indies or result in more reliable and relevant information. Okay. So I should also write about that Indies 8 as well. It appears the directors wish to manipulate the aspects of pension schemes such as current service costs since the pension scheme is giving a net deficit. And directors are purposefully manipulating by presenting the item in equity instead of PNL. So they are taking it in OCI rather than PNL. When a chartered accountant discovers, whenever you come to know that company ke people, they are trying to manipulate the things, you go to higher authority. So the financial position has been compromised through misstatement. They have two options. They can either report the non-compliance to authorities or you can withdraw from engagement. Achha, pe if you see the question, question is from the perspective of a consultant. You are a consultant, not an employee. Pe. Perspective of a consultant. So you have two options. One, you report to the authorities or you withdraw from the engagement. And both the actions ensure integrity, transparency, interest of stakeholder. And as you are basically over here a CA in practice as a consultant, don't write about Clause 1, Part 2. Write about Clause 5, 6, 7. Uh, so financial statements are containing a misstatement. If you fail to report, you'll be guilty of professional misconduct. Write about Clause 5, 6, 7. Wo sari cheeze. So if I see over here, consultant. Right over here, not an employee. Not an employee. Okay. So, in case the consultant, the chartered accountant is influenced by directors and you report accordingly. If you are reporting accordingly, you will be guilty of clause number 5, 7, 8 of part 1 of second schedule. Clause number 5, you fail to disclose a material fact known to him, which is not disclosed in financial statement and disclosure of which is necessary in making those financial statement. I can also add clause 6. You can also add clause 6 also here. Clause 7, if you are guilty, if you are grossly negligent in conduct of your duties and clause 8, if you fail to obtain sufficient information, uh, for purpose of giving your opinion, so that is clause number 8. Clause 5, 6, 7 would have been better rather than clause 5, 7, 8. I repeat, clause 5, 6, 7 would have been a better answer rather than clause 5, 7, 8. They should have written 567 rather than clause 578. This is given. Better is stick to what they have given. Exam purpose, whatever ICI has done, do that. Okay, this is over. Moving to the next point. This is over going to the next point. 
फिनेंशियल इंटरेस्ट कंपेंसेशन इंसेंटिव लिंक्ड टू फिनेंशियल रिपोर्टिंग सी मेनी टाइम योर इंसेंटिव बोनसेज आर लिंक्ड विथ द प्रॉफिट डोंट ट्राई टू मेन्यूपुलेट प्रॉफिट दिस इज वॉट दे आर टेलिंग अ चार्ट अकाउंटेंट शेल नॉट मेन्यूपुलेट द फिनेंशियल इंफॉर्मेशन फॉर पर्सनल गेन्स और फॉर फिनेंशियल गेन ऑफ अदर्स डायरेक्टर्स का बोनस बेस्ड ऑन परसेंटेज ऑफ प्रॉफिट डायरेक्टर्स आर टेलिंग यू टू शो मोर प्रॉफिट डोंट एग्री डोंट मेन्यूपुलेट फिनेंशियल इंफॉर्मेशन फॉर पर्सनल गेन और फॉर फिनेंशियल गेन ऑफ अदर्स ओके चेक क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स चेक क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स ओके डायरेक्टर्स ऑफ स्पिंस डायरेक्टर्स ऑफ स्पिंस लिमिटेड दे आर एलिजिबल फॉर एन इंसेंटिव कंप्यूटेड बेस्ड ऑन कैश जनरेटेड फ्रॉम ऑपरेशंस ओके कैश जनरेटेड फ्रॉम ऑपरेटिंग एक्टिविटी ऑपरेशंस एज पर योर इंडे सेवन व्हाट इज द कैश जनरेटेड फ्रॉम योर ऑपरेशंस कैश फ्लो फ्रॉम ऑपरेटिंग एक्टिविटी द डायरेक्टर्स आर प्लानिंग टू सेल ऑफ इक्विपमेंट एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट ओके देर आर सम इक्विपमेंट पीपी and there are some investment which you want to sell off now tell me if i sell off equipment investment can i say that will come under your investing activity sale of pp sale of investment the directors opine that this cash generated from sale of equipment and investment would be used in operations so we should present it under cash flow from operating activity we should basically put it in cash flow from operating activity and the directors are concerned about meeting the targets in order to ensure security of their job and they feel that this would enhance the cash flow picture so rather than showing under investing activity if i show under operating things will look good discuss the ethical responsibility of a chartered accountant who is a employee acha employee hai i'll write about i'll write about clause number 1 part 2 second schedule and the council guidelines Okay, so check the solution. Presenting proceeds of investment and equipment as a part of operation, cash flow from operation, gives a misleading picture of financial statement. The proposed misclassification should be regarded as a deliberate attempt to mislead the shareholders about the performance of spins and the future performance, which is unethical. Objectivity is gone. ठीक है. ओके प्रोसीड्स रिसीव्ड फ्रॉम सेल ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट शुड बी प्रेजेंटेड अंडर कैश फ्लो फ्रॉम इन्वेस्टिंग एक्टिविटी इन अकॉर्डेंस विद इन डे एस सेवन ना वॉट शुड अ सी ए डू द सी ए शुड प्रिवेंट द मैनेजमेंट नॉट टू प्रोसीड विद अफोर्सेड अकाउंटिंग ट्रीटमेंट विच इज वायोलेटिंग इन डे एस सेवन इन केस द मैनेजमेंट स्टिल कंटिन्यूस देन सी ए शुड ब्रिंग दिस टू द अटेंशन ऑफ ऑडिटर but otherwise if ca agrees you are employee you agree to what directors are telling then you will be guilty of professional misconduct under clause 1 part 2 first schedule as well as the guidelines which are issued by icai telling that a ca who is in employment should exercise due diligence should not be grossly negligent in conduct of duties okay any doubts question number 6 any doubts question number 6 okay question number 7 question number 7 infostar limited the directors are paid bonus based on profits infostar limited directors are paid bonus based on profit and the range is given profit itna directors ka bonus itna the draft pnl shows a profit of 2 cr The draft PNL shows a profit of two CR. Now, employees of InfoStar, not the directors, employees. The directors are getting bonus based on percentage of profit. Employees. Employees have been historically paid off discretionary incentive based on individual performances. to employees based on how individual performs i give them bonus discretionary not mandatory as per law discretionary bonuses are given last 15 years say we are doing it last 15 years say we are doing it we give bonus to employees and based on past trend 
based on past trend, if I have to give bonus this year to employee, it will come 3 CR. Now tell me, what's your profit? Tell me, what's your profit? Currently 2. Profit is currently 2. If I give bonus to employee 3 CR, can I say we'll run into loss? And if I run into loss, directors will not get any bonus and second, they will get blasting from the shareholders. Ek to directors will not get any bonus and they'll get blasting. From whom? The shareholders. Okay, the employees have been paid bonus based on individual performance and if I try to see that only, so this year bonus to employees will come around 3 CR. So in view of possibility of directors not receiving bonus, so because of company's poor performance, if we give bonus to employees, nothing is left for basically the directors. So CFO, the CFO is a chartered accountant, CFO employee. CFO is a chartered accountant. What did he suggest? CFO has suggested that discretionary incentive. Uh, employee co to give incentive is not mandatory. It's a discretionary, discretionary in incentive. So, we can avoid the discretionary in uh, incentive. So, let's not pay anything to the employees. So, that profit is there and so that things look good and the directors can also get bonus. He has suggested discretionary incentive usually payable to employee could be avoided in current year, which would result in company reporting profit and employee satisfaction score, staff iteration rate, gender equalities, employee absenteeism, what non-financial parameters are there. You give it in annual report. The annual report may that non-financial parameters you give, but he's telling nobody reads it. Now tell me, if I don't give bonuses to employee, can I say employees will not be happy? The employees will not be happy. They will try to search job somewhere else. So my iteration rate goes up. What That all issues will come up. So employee satisfaction score, staff iteration rate, that will be affected. But he's telling that's a non-financial thing. Nobody's going to read it. The calm corona. Don't pay any incentive to employees so that we have profits and directors are able to get bonus. So, discuss the ethical and accounting implication from the perspective of CA Shushil Bhupati. Actually, make it from the perspective of CFO. They have not given the name. Or you can write CA Sushil Bhupati, that is CFO. Okay, now they're telling long term success of any organization depends on fair treatment of employee. In the case, CFO has suggested not to pay the discretionary incentive to employee so that we are able to pay bonus to directors. This suggestion is not illegal at all. It's not illegal because it's a discretionary bonus. It's a discretionary incentive you may give, you may not give. You may give, you may not give. But on moral ground, the suggestion is likely to have a negative consequence on company. Yeah. The moral ground may the suggestion will have a negative consequence on the company. The employees would be dissatisfied if bonus are not given. The employee will be dissatisfied if bonus are not given. This will have a negative impact on employee morale, low employee satisfaction. They will try to look for job outside. So can I say indirectly it's having a negative effect on company? The CFO statement that above action will not negatively impact the company because it's non-financial thing. Dear, you are looking from that reporting angle. Look from a wider angle. The CFO is looking just from a reporting angle. It's a non-financial thing. Nobody reads the annual financial statement. Correct, but employees leaving company, company will be affected. No. Okay, so will not negatively impact are not widely read by the users. The non-financial information is becoming increasingly important to the users as they care about the company's treatment of their employees. The chartered accountant has responsibility to exercise due diligence and clearly consider. The CA should consider both financial and non-financial information while discharging his duty. CA should consider both financial and non-financial thing while discharging his duty. The chartered accountant responsibility is not exclusively to satisfy the needs of individual client, but you have a moral responsibility to act in public interest. You have a moral responsibility to act in public interest. So, 
what you are telling not to pay discretionary bonus to employees and give bonus to director it's not wrong legally at all it's not wrong legally at all but morally wo galat hoga that type of suggestion should not come from you did you understood that type of suggestion should not be coming from you that is what they are trying to say okay next one inducement including gift hospitality now someone giving you gift or someone giving your near and dear ones gift okay aapko gift diya hai aapke near and dear ones ko gift diya to can i say later on they might ask you to do something for you so inducement is nothing but gifts so imagine diwali was there diwali was then one of the director gives me a car one of the director not company company is not gifting me a car one of the director is gifting me a car so can i say if later on the director has done something wrong he will tell me to hide it so you need to understand that this inducements gifts hospitality is not affecting your objectivity it's not affecting your unbiased attitude so inducements can be to you or to your close family members it can be to you or to your close family members it can be to you or to your close family members fine next responding to non compliance with laws and regulation you know there is sa 250 audit ke andar sa 250 non compliance of laws and regulation okay so whenever imagine you are a employee acha sa is basically for those who are in practice sa is basically for those who are in practice but just in case you are in employment and you come to know about any non compliance of laws and regulation what you should do so you should inform first you should inform to appropriate level in your management that sir your non compliance has happened let's rectify it okay so when responding to a non compliance or suspected non compliance the objective of auditor r what are your objective to comply with the principles of integrity professional behavior to alert the management to alert the management or basically wherever appropriate those charged with governance to seek enable them to rectify it or to deter the non compliance which has not yet occurred abhi tak hua nahi hai if i tell them it will not occur only or to take some further actions as appropriate in public interest theek hai so if at all you are a chartered accountant working in a company you find some non compliance or you are suspecting some non compliance to kya karna chahiye so one you need to comply with the principles of integrity professional behavior you need to bring it to the attention of management so that management can rectify it or if if non compliance was not yet done though it can be avoided and you need to take actions in public interest is it clear is it clear okay responsibility of all chartered accountants okay so all the chartered accountants if any protocol is there in the company if company me there's a protocol you find some non compliance of laws and regulation these are the steps to be followed follow the steps if protocol or procedure exist within the chartered accountants employing organization to address the non compliance the chartered accountant should consider them in determining how to respond to such non compliance acha now they have written the word senior chartered accountant in service senior chartered accountant in service ab sir ye kya hai can i say company can have more than one chartered accountants in service job mein so if you go to reliance industries limited there might be hundreds of ca which are employed or thousands of ca which are employed ha uh, usme lower level pe bhi cas will be there higher level pe bhi cas will be there and cfo might be a chartered accountant also so what is happening over here is responsibility of a senior chartered accountant senior chartered accountant in service will be include what the chartered accountants who are a directors or cfo or ceo they will come under senior chartered accountant in service 
तो सीनियर चार्ट अकाउंटेंट सर्विस आर डायरेक्टर्स ऑफिसर्स और सीनियर एम्प्लॉयज ओके दे इज अ ग्रेटर एक्सपेक्टेशन फ्रॉम देम दे आर सीनियर ना दे आर ग्रेटर एक्सपेक्टेशन फ्रॉम देम दैट वॉट एवर एक्शन इज अप्रोप्रिएट इन पब्लिक इंटरेस्ट दैट इज वॉट दे विल फॉलो If there is a non-compliance of laws and regulation, they will ensure it gets corrected. If it doesn't get corrected, it is ensured that it is appropriately disclosed or shown in financial statement, appropriately communicated to auditors, appropriately communicated to the authorities. So, basically, senior chartered accountant in service, they have a greater responsibility to act in public interest. to act in public interest now how do they address the matter the one they have to discuss the matter whenever you find something na always discuss the matter with immediate supervisor or superior if i found some non compliance i should communicate to my superior if i found non compliance i should communicate to my superior acha if superior appears to be involved then uske bhi upar jao if the accountant's immediate su superior appears to be involved you should discuss the matter with the next higher level of authority you should discuss the matter with next higher level authority so whenever you find any non compliance or suspected non compliance discuss it with your superior superior appears to be involved in that then next higher authority of superior to uske bhi upar chale jao as a senior chartered accountant shall determine whether the disclosure should also be done to the external auditor or the senior chartered accountant in practice as a senior chartered accountant in service he should also think whether i should disclose it to the auditors as well or not the first is basically you discuss the matter with your superiors second determine whether any further action is required the senior chartered accountant shall assess the appropriateness of the response of accountant sup superiors the superior ke jo actions hai responses hai is it proper but if i feel the response of superiors are not proper if i feel the response of superior are not proper i can take appropriate actions and third seeking advice there might be some complex analysis of judgments required assessment involves some complex analysis judgment really fraud is there not there really non compliance there not there you can take the advice of appropriate third party legal advice le sakte assessment of matter might involve complex analysis and judgment so you can take the help of in house legal department outside lawyers outside chartered accountants you can take their help and determining whether to disclose the matter to appropriate authority okay so should we also communicate to regulatory body so should we also communicate to regulatory body so they need to take a call basically the chartered accountants who are in service they found any fraud in the company so should they disclose to regulatory authority or not see they will not tell you directly yes or no it goes based on facts and circumstances They will not tell you directly yes or no. It will always go based on facts and circumstances. The first is, you communicate about the matter to your superior. Second, determine whether any further action is required. Third, if it's a complex thing, you seek the advice of internal legal department or outside chartered accountants or outside lawyers, anyone, and you also decide. whether we should disclose it to the appropriate authority the regulatory bodies or not theek okay. and responsibility of chartered accountant other than senior chartered accountant okay other than senior chartered accountant what they should do so whenever you are finding such a kind of thing they should obtain knowledge of the matter to so seek understanding of the matter inform the immediate sup superior if superior appears to be involved next higher level of authority if superior appears to be involved next higher level of authority and they may disclose it to appropriate authority appropriate authority is regulators if you feel that's a appropriate course of action actually the same thing what was written earlier but in one thing in one point everything given first obtain understanding of the matter inform to your immediate superior 
superior involved, next higher level of authority, and you may determine disclosure of matter to appropriate authorities, appropriate course. So then you should disclose if disclosure is permitted. You can make a disclosure if disclosure is permitted. Fine. Uh, theory not much relevant from exam angle. Come to question number eight. Come to question number eight. Okay, Agastya Limited. The directors are entitled to incentive based on your operating profit margin. Operating profit margin based, the incentives are given to directors. Issue. There was 75 lakh loan given to director. No repayment terms. Okay, 75 lakh loan given to director. No repayment terms. It's repayable on demand. Whenever I'll demand, you'll give it back. What if we never demand? Okay, whenever I'll demand, the director will give it back. But what if we never demand? It will never come back. If that loan is never going to come back, it should be included in director's remuneration. If that loan is never going to come back, it should be included in director's remuneration. Okay. And if you just remember, interest-free loans which we give. If I give interest-free loans to director or subsidiary, it's a financial asset. I should record financial asset at its fair value. So if I know this loan is never going to come back, fair value will be zero. If I know this loan is never going to come back, the fair value will be zero, then it should be treated as director's remuneration, not shown as an asset. Okay, what they have shown? They have shown that loan given as cash and cash equivalent. Oh, they're showing it as cash and cash equivalent. It's a repayable on demand. Now, whenever we demand, we'll get back money. Whenever we demand, we'll get back money. That's why they've shown under cash and cash equivalent. Directors opine the financial statements are prepared in accordance with accounting policy, which is our choice. And our choice is to show this loan as cash and cash equivalent. So they say financials are based on accounting policy, which is based on choice. Our choice is loan is cash and cash equivalent. Discuss ethical and accounting implication. Let's see. The loan should be regarded as a financial asset. The loan should be regarded as what? Financial asset as per 109. Further information would be required to find out what's the fair value. So 75 lakh is the fair value or less than that is the fair value. We need to find out. question mark. It could be said that loan will never be repaid. And accordingly, the fair value will be nil and it will be treated as director's remuneration. Okay, I just put a star here. If if loan would never be repaid then it should it should not be shown as an as a financial asset rather rupees 75 lakh paid will be treated as director's remuneration to director's remuneration ho gaya Rupees 75 lakh paid will be treated as director's remuneration. Okay, plus you are given a loan to director. Can I say it appears under your related party transaction? 
The director is falling under KMP. Related party disclosures are also necessary. Treatment of loan as cash equivalent bridges the two fundamental qualitative characteristics, relevance. So it's a relevant thing, should be shown separately. They're not doing it. It's a relevant thing, should be shown separately. They're not doing it. And second, faithful representation. They're not faithfully representing. It's not a cash and cash equivalent. Plus, it also violates the enhancing qualitative characteristics. Remember, there were four enhancing quality, qualitative characteristics. Us the three are violated. First, understandability. This is something which is wrong. It's not a cash and cash equivalent. People will misunderstand it. Two is verifiability. The person verifying it will say this is wrong. Timeliness is not a problem you hear. And third one, the comparability. We are showing under cash. Others are not showing under cash. We are showing under cash. Others are not showing under cash. So can I say there will be lack of comparability of our cash and cash equivalent with others? We can't compare it. Okay, so two main qualitative characteristics are violated. Your enhancing qualitative characteristics, they are also violated. So by masking the nature of transaction, you're trying to hide. It's not really cash. You're showing it as cash. Usko bolte masking. It is possible the directors are motivated by personal interest and thus failing in their duty to act honestly, ethically. So as a consultant, what you should do? As a consultant, consultant is CA in practice. So don't write about clause 1, part 2. No, 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 you are not in service. As a consultant, so you should basically tell them to rectify the financials. It should not come under cash and cash equivalent. It should be shown as loan to directors. That way it should be shown. If they are not doing it and still you agree, you don't report. The financial statement contains a material misstatement. You are not reporting it. The cash is wrong. Still you are not reporting it. You will be violating clause number 6 and 7. 6. Fail to report a material misstatement appearing in financial statement. And then they have explained clause number 6 and 7. Any doubts? Anybody? Any doubts? Anybody? Okay, moving ahead, next point they're telling is pressure to bridge the fundamental principles. Sometimes you might have a pressure and the pressure is telling you to bridge the fundamental principles, what to do. So first of all, to assess the level of threat, you should discuss this point with others. Always discuss such kind of thing to the higher level people or your friends or basically the colleagues, etc. So discussing the circumstances, creating the pressure, consulting with others about those circumstances might assist you to evaluate the level of threat. Discuss karo, pata chalega, level of threat kitna hai. And then how can you put safeguards? Then how can you put a safeguard? As an example of action, that can eliminate threat. As an example of basically action that can eliminate the threat, created by pressure is chartered accountant request for segregating certain responsibilities and duties. So, sir, do one thing. This work don't keep me. This work you hand over to someone else. So, this work you don't keep me. This work you hand over to someone else. That's basically you're trying to tell them, take this duty away from me so that I don't have that conflict of interest over here. Okay, so that accountant is no longer involved with the individual or entity exerting the pressure did you understood there might be certain sometimes pressure to bridge the fundamental principle should you bridge it they are telling no to discuss with the people consult others so that you're able to evaluate the level of threat based on that come out with some safeguard based on that come out with some safeguard come to question number nine Come to question number nine. Again, I'm repeating theory in this chapter will not be much relevant. More relevant will be the questions which have been given. Plus, you need to remember. Plus, you need to remember wo second schedule part one. Usme clause five, six, seven. Ah, for 
CA in practice, clause 5, 6, 7 will mostly come. For CA in service, clause 1, part 2, second schedule will come. And the council guidelines. Okay. Question number 9. As at 31st March 4, Mitra Limited has a plan to dispose of its 75% subsidiary Dosti Limited. Okay, Mitra and Dosti, both are friends. The Mitra Limited has 75% in Dosti. And the plan is approved by board of directors. You are reported in media also that you are disposing of your 75% in Dosti. And you are talking with Jaya Limited. Jaya Limited holds 25% in Dosti and they will buy the remaining 75%. So you had 75% in Dosti, Jaya Limited had 25. And now you will be selling the remaining 75 to them only. The sale is expected to be completed in October 4. Achha, now this is March 4. Sale khatam ho jayega October 4. Do you think this is fulfilling the definition of held for sale? Do you think this is fulfilling the definition for held for sale? And a subsidiary is a component. The component which is held for sale, which is fulfilling the criteria as held for sale, it will be a part of discontinued operation. Uh, it will be a part of discontinued operation, kind of. Okay, the, does it fulfill the criteria for L4 sale? Yeah, the plan is already approved, announcement is done, we are actively looking for buyer, discussion with Jaya Limited is going on, it's available for immediate sale. Uh, we feel sale will be completed by October, remember? The sale should be completed within one year. So, it looks criteria for held for sale are being satisfied, it will be a part of your discontinued operation. Aisha, are you clear? Okay, Dosti Limited is expected to have substantial trading loss in that period. Okay, the from March to October. From March to October, they will have some trading losses. X, a chartered accountant who is an employee. Achha, employee aya, to we have to write about part 1. Okay. Uh, who is an employee in the finance department wishes to show Dosti Limited as held for sale in financial statement and he wants to create a restructuring provision. You want to make a restructuring provision for cost of disposal and future trading losses. Okay, go to index 37. <coughs> okay, go to index 37. What are provision for restructuring? Okay, the should I make a provision for cost expected cost of disposal and should I make a provision for future trading losses? Future trading losses, we don't make a provision. <coughs> so that trading loss will come when? April, May, June, July, August, September, October. It will be recorded during that time. The so trading loss will be recorded during that time, but uh, we have already decided to shut down the expected cost of disposal, whatever is going to come, some contract needs to be cancelled. Uska provision is to be done right now. Okay, the provision for expected trading losses will not be done. Uh, the trading losses which will be coming, uska provision nahi hoga, but the provision will be done for the expected cost of disposal which will be coming up. <coughs> okay, the CFO not CFO, CO. the chief operating officer does not want to show it as held for sale nor he wants to provide any losses. The CFO says, no, 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 nothing to be done. We don't want to show it as uh, discontinued operation. We'll put it under continued only and no provisions to be done. He has also hinted that if, if X is insisting on all these things that to make this provision, to show under discontinued operation, you lose your job. Ah, the employee ko bol diya, bohut chucha mat karna. If at all you say that this should come under discontinued operation, this should be basically provision to be done, we can't do it. If you basically say go and find another job. Okay, the expected cost related to sale. What are the expected cost related to sale? A future trading loss 20 crore not to be provided. No provision. Okay, legal cost of sale which we are expecting, redundancy cost related to employees, employees co will have to make some payment, provision required. Hmm. 
this our provision required impairment loss on pp anyways pp if pp is classified as held for sale if pp is classified as held for sale it will be measured at carrying amount or fair value less cost to sell whichever is lower so this is to be recognized now only uh, this is to be recognized impairment loss we are required to recognize we don't have to make a provision for impairment loss we have to recognize it to be recognized so as it is fulfilling the definition of held for sale it should be measured as per india's 105 carrying amount or fair value less cost to sell whichever is lower okay discuss the accounting treatment which mitra should adopt and discuss the ethical issues so one india's 105 is there one there's an india's 105 they would have explained india's 105 i'm not going for that directly the disposal of Doste Limited appears to meet the criteria of held for sale. Jaya Limited is a probable acquirer. Sale is highly probable, expected to be completed in 12 months only, that is 7 months agya. Well within the 12 months criteria, accordingly, Doste should be treated as a disposal group. And as it's a disposal group, it's a component, it should be shown separately as a discontinued operation. It should be presented separately as what? Discontinued operation. Plus, any non-current asset, PP, if in non-current asset, it will be measured at carrying amount and fair value less cost to sell. You are required to measure at carrying amount and fair value less cost to sell. Whichever is lower, the impairment loss will be recognized. And if you recall, if you recall, that impairment loss it's a disposal group it's a disposal group so first it is attributable to goodwill then to the remaining assets on the base of their carrying amount okay that's a disposal group so dosti limited is treated as a disposal group the impairment loss first allocated to goodwill then to other non-current asset in proportion to their carrying amount Okay. Now, the chief operating officer's statement not to show under discontinued operation, not to make any provision is wrong. The COO is incorrect to exclude any form of provision. Since the disposal is communicated to media as well as stock exchange, there is a constructive obligation. There is a constructive obligation and provision is required. How much provision do you have? 1.5 plus 4. 1.5 वो expected legal cost, 4 rupees वो employee re, uh, redundant हो जाएंगे, we are removing them, उसके related. तो 1.5 plus 4, a future operating losses should be excluded. Future operating losses should be excluded, we don't make any provision for them. And same way, no provision is required for impairment of... Uh, PP because it is already considered in remeasurement at fair value less cost to sell. When I'm measuring them at carrying amount or fair value less cost to sell, that loss is already recognized. No need to create provision for that. Now coming to ethics. Bechara new CA. So CA was working there. He told director this is wrong. He told the CEO, sir, this is wrong. You should not do like this. We should show it under discontinued operation. We should create a provision. But CEO told. If at all you want to do all these things, find a new job. Now what to do? The X has committed several mistakes. What are the several mistakes X has committed? Now let us just go back to question. There's one thing. What are one thing? Achha, one thing is uh, X wants to create provision for future trading losses also. He wanted to make a provision for expected cost of disposal and future trading loss. Achha, X wants to make a provision for future trading loss also. Is Mr. X right? No. So Mr. X doesn't have professional competence because he doesn't know that future trading losses ka provision nahi hota hai. There should not be a provision for that. That is one. Okay, so let's go down. 
तो मिस्टर एक्स एस कमिटेड सेवरल मिस्टेक ही वॉज अन अवेयर विच कॉज शुड बी इंक्लूडेड इन रीस्ट्रक्चरिंग एंड अकॉर्डिंगली ही मस्ट अपडेट इज नॉलेज अकॉर्डिंगली ही मस्ट अपडेट इज नॉलेज सेकेंड इट अपियर्स सी ओ ओ इज लुकिंग फॉर मीन्स टू मेन्यूपुलेट द फिनेंशियल्स फॉर मीटिंग द बोनस रिक्वायरमेंट एक्सेट्रा तो इफ एक्स फॉल्स अंडर अंड्यू इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ सी ओ तो इफ एक्स इज एक्सेप्टिंग वॉट सी ओ इज टेलिंग सी ओ इज टेलिंग यू डोंट डिस्कलोज एज डिसकंटिन्यूड डोंट मेक एनी प्रोविजन इफ यू आर फॉलोइंग दैट देन यू विल बी गिल्टी अंडर यू आर एम्प्लॉय ना तो पार्ट क्लॉज नंबर वन पार्ट टू सेकेंड स्कड्यूल एंड द गाइडलाइंस इश्यूड बाय आई सी आई इज इट क्लियर इज इट क्लियर If you fall under the influence of CEO and you apply the incorrect treatment, you'll be liable for professional misconduct under Clause One, Part Two, Second Schedule of Chartered Accountants Act and Council Guidelines. Okay, coming to question number ten. Coming to question number ten. ओके शास्त्र लिमिटेड शास्त्र लिमिटेड ऑन फर्स्ट अप्रैल 2005 एंटर्ड इनटू अ प्रॉपर्टी लीज अरेंजमेंट टू गेट सम टैक्स बेनिफिट एंड द ड्राफ्ट फिनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट डू नॉट शो अ लीज एसेट और अ लीज लायबिलिटी नाउ टेल मी इफ आई टेक अ प्रॉपर्टी ऑन लीज डू आई नीड टू बुक आर यू एसेट लीज लायबिलिटी या या द न्यू फिनेंस कंट्रोलर न्यू फिनेंस कंट्रोलर सी सुनील राघवन अच्छा ही इज एम्प्लॉई न्यू फिनेंस कंट्रोलर इज एन एम्प्लॉई ही जॉइंट शास्त्र लिमिटेड बिफोर द इयर इज ओवर बिफोर द इयर इज ओवर एंड ही वॉज ट्राइंग टू सी द फिनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट बेसिकली एंड ही वॉज ऑल्सो ट्राइंग टू मेक अ लोन एप्लीकेशन फॉर सम लोन विच दे वॉन्ट तो सी ए सुनील राघवन बिलीव दैट लीज एग्रीमेंट शुड बी रेकग्नाइज इन बैलेंस शीट तो सी ए सुनील राघवन फील्स आर शुड बी आर ओ यू एस एट लीज लाइबिलिटी हाउर द मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर मिस अनुषा एम बी ए फिनेंस स्ट्रॉन्गली डिसग्री सी से लीज रेंटल शुड गो टू पी एन एल दैट इट लीज रेंटल शुड गो टू पी एन एल नो आर ओ यू एस एट नो लीज लाइबिलिटी अर डिसग्रीमेंट ऑल्सो स्टेम्स From the fact that company wants to have a loan, if they show a lease liability, liability goes up, then ratios are getting affected. And Anusha made it clear to Sunil Raghavan, the managing director has made it clear that the stake is not only the loan application but also his future prospects in the company. So if you pressure me, telling that yes, so much, yes, so much, yes, no, 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 I am not going to do it. So will not book ROU asset. Will not book lease liability. If you still want, you can find a new job. Oh, bechara naya naya to aya. New finance controller. Discuss the potential conflict and guide how finance controller should respond to the situation. One in days one one six we are required to explain leases. In days one one six we are required to explain which is leases. They have given description or theory about NDA S one one six. I am directly moving at it. Not recognizing ROU asset or lease liability would not only be violation of NDA S one one six, but also would be incorrect presentation of financial position, which is critical given the Sastra Limited is interested in taking loan. So loan के लिए the data which you are submitting वो भी गलत होगा. The managing director's threat to finance controller. Has put finance control in a dilemma. If I can try to convince, my job will be gone. The pressure is greater because the finance control is new. So what to do? What to do? Okay. So there is a threat to fundamental principles, so professional competence, professional behavior. You are not able to have it. Uh, objectivity, integrity, honesty is also getting compromised. Okay. There is a intimidation threat to fundamental principles of objectivity, integrity. Intimidation threat. MD has basically given you a dhamki that you can find another job. We are not going to do all these things. 
So while preparing financial statement, the financial controller should ensure that the fundamental principles of professional competence should be followed, which requires accounts to be as per NDS. Since the arrangement meets criteria of 116 lease, ROU asset should be recognized, lease liability should be recognized, otherwise the liabilities are understated. Otherwise the liabilities are understated. If the financial controller were to bend under the pressure of MD, if you whatever MD says, if at all you are accepting whatever MD says and you are not showing ROU asset, lease liability, you will be guilty of professional misconduct. As you are an employee, it will be clause number one, part two, second schedule and the council guidelines. So, you will be subject to professional misconduct under clause one, part two, second schedule as well as the council guidelines. Any doubts? Anybody? Ho gaya? Any doubts? Anybody? This chapter is over. We are left with only one chapter now. That's your chapter number 17, which we'll be doing it tomorrow. So tomorrow your syllabus will get over. Very simple sentence for you. Your dreams don't work unless you do. Yeah. Unless you are working, your dreams are not going to work. If you want your dreams to work, if you want your dreams to be fulfilled, make sure you are working for it. Just thinking and dreaming is not going to help. You need to do the things, you need to act. That's why the Nike, Nike has a logo or a slogan, just do it. Don't think, just do it ah. okay now i'll just share my experience when i was a student i was doing my foundation inter final so many mistakes i did so many things i learned during my journey so let me share a brief about my journey i'll share half of it today half of it tomorrow see i come from a very small town named as buj uh, kutch district in gujarat you might have seen earthquake was there and earthquake my epicenter was buj the Kutch district of Gujarat, I belong to that town named as Puch. And in the entire district of Kutch, that time there was only one English medium BCom college. I'm talking about BCom college, only one English medium BCom college was there, otherwise, all Gujarati medium colleges were there. So, for further studies, we had to move out of the district. So, I came to Ahmedabad with my friend. My friend wanted to join CA, together with him, I also joined CA. So see, sometimes you don't know what you want to do. Yeah, sometimes you don't know what you want to do. So whatever your friends are doing, you just try to join them. Friends CA kar rahe, chalo, bhi CA kar lete. But I tell you one thing, if you don't know what you want to do, do whatever you're doing in the best manner possible. I repeat, if you don't know what you want to do, do whatever you're doing. In a best manner possible. Sir, this is not I don't feel happy doing all these things. I want to do something else. What? I don't know. Sir, wo malum nahi hai. I don't know what to do. Then do whatever you're doing in a best manner possible. So I didn't add a goal of basically becoming a CA from beginning. No. And I started frankly CA because my friend started. But I had one thing. Because I started this, I'm doing this thing. I give my 100% to it. Because I don't know what I want to do. I was doing whatever I'm doing in the best manner possible. Number two, I was a very homesick guy. And because of that, you won't believe it. Within a week, I actually left Ahmedabad and returned to my hometown. And I told my parents I don't want to study there. I would have done some permanent mistake. Yeah, I would have done some permanent mistake because I was temporarily upset. First time you're away from family. And because of that, you're missing your family. It happens. Everything new you start, hiccups will be there, you are out of your comfort zone, problems will be coming. So don't do something permanently foolish. 
if you are temporarily upset. One of your paper doesn't go to your expectation, don't skip your exams. That's doing something permanently foolish because you are temporarily upset. That thing I learned. Number three, I used to go home. Achha, after a week when I went back home, people pushed me back. So I came back again to Ahmedabad. Now, thereafter, every week I used to go home. You won't believe, Friday night I sit in a bus. Every Saturday I skip my lecture. And we didn't add that online facility. Every Saturday I've skipped my lecture. Every Sunday was a test in our class. I never gave only. First six months I never gave any test. But one thing I ensured, Saturday my lecture was missed. But Monday when I return and when I sit in a class, my concepts were never incomplete. I would have learned the concept from my friends and then only I was sitting in class. I understood one thing, your books might be incomplete, your concepts can never be incomplete. If you miss a class today, make sure. Kaise karo, it's up to you. You learn from your friends, you learn from online coaching, you learn from YouTube, whatever you do. Next class when you're sitting, you should be knowing the concept what was done in the last class. It should not happen one class you missed and then you miss the entire chapter. Otherwise, every week I missed one class. So, so I should have skipped all chapters only. So your concepts <coughs> can never be incomplete. Number four, you should know your limitation. So what's limitation? See, I am a person I cannot study alone. If I see people studying, I'll study. But if at all I don't see anybody studying alone, I'll never study. So what happened? What happened is, I used to stay in a hostel. And the syllabus got over two months before the examination. Class made the syllabus foundation. It's two, two and a half months before the syllabus was over. My friends, they went to the native place for studying. But now the thing is, after I shifted to Ahmedabad, my parents shifted to another town. So now my native place and my friend's native place are different. So, uh, earlier, we both were staying in Bhuj. We both came to Ahmedabad. Now my parents have shifted from Bhuj to another town named as Basically, Gandhidam. So, my friend is staying in Burj. I stay at Gandhidam. We won't be together. So, I decided to stay in my hostel only. Because in hostel, there are other friends who are studying. So, my limitation is I cannot study alone. I want some people. I see people studying, I'll study. And I cannot study in library also. Uh, so, I don't want that much kind of uh, strict atmosphere also. But I need people. I see someone studying, I'll be studying. I decided to stay here even though my friend had gone back to the native place. This is knowing your limitation. And fourth, uh, fifth thing which I understood in my foundation, it needs one push. It needs just one push to make you reach to a next level. If you want to reach to a next level, you just one push. Chahiye. One time you reach to that level, you don't want to come back. So for me, what had happened was, Never in my school I got a rank in school. The school may generally my rank will be around 10, 15, kind of that. Uh, 11, 12th may science wale, good students went out, commerce wale were there. So now my rank will be in top 5 of school. But still, it was top 5 of school. Never in a district, never in a state, kabi nahi aya. But when I gave this examination of CA foundation, I had studied really well. Now, sir, why did you study really well? Because my friend studied. I told you, na, I was in hostel. And hostel me, there were roommates of mine who were doing CA and they were Gujarati medium students. And being a Gujarati medium students, they were putting in more efforts. So by seeing them put more efforts, I also put more efforts. And that's why I told you, in the company of wind, even a dust achieves a great height. That really put in good efforts because my friends were putting good efforts. And now I gave the examination of foundation. Definitely my preparations were much better than what efforts I had given in 12th standard. And because of that, I got an All India 20th rank. I never expected. Well, the expectation was that pass ho jaya, that's more than sufficient. But I got an All India 20th rank in my CA foundation. And I told you, once you reach to a certain level, you don't want to go back. It needs one push to make you reach to a next level. Now, what happened in inter and final, I'll tell you tomorrow. So, what all did I learn in my journey of CA foundation? First thing I learned is basically don't do something permanently foolish because you are temporarily upset. I went back to my native place telling I don't want to stay at Andhapath. Second thing which I learned is in the company of winds, even a dust achieves a great height, you need some friends 
who are motivating you, who are making an effort by seeing them, you are also making efforts. Third thing I realize is your books can be incomplete, but concepts should never be incomplete. Concepts can be incomplete. And fourth thing I realized is it needs just one push. Yeah, you need one push to make you reach to a next level. Once you get that push, definitely you will not have any problems later. So keep all the small, small things in mind. What happened in enter? What happened in final? I'll be telling it to you tomorrow. Any doubts anybody is having, please tell me. And just a reminder, last day to get 1000 rupee off on FR and auditing. If you or any of your friend wants to buy any of the subjects, better is buy today only. Now, tomorrow's timing, morning 7.30 to 10.30. I repeat, tomorrow's timing is morning 7.30 to 10.30. Bye-bye Vishnu, bye Shravani, bye-bye another Shravani, bye Aisha, bye Aditya, bye everyone. Any doubts or anything you want to ask, please ask it. Bye-bye. 16, chapter 17 are the new chapters which have been added. Yesterday, we finished with chapter number 16. Today, we are starting with chapter number 17. And it's a small chapter. We'll be able to finish it today itself. So, sir, is it the last class? Answer is yes. Today will be the last class of our syllabus. Now, sir, what about MCQs? ICI is going to ask MCQs. I'll take a separate session on MCQs later. I repeat, I'm going to take a separate session on MCQs later. As of now, I see AI has not came out with any MCQs. They're not given an MCQ booklet or they're not given MCQs basically at the end of the chapter also. They'll come up with MCQs later on based on what I see AI comes up with. Okay. So as such, today normally is the last session of basically our course. Later on, MCQs will be done separately. Another announcement from 1st of December, I'm starting the batch for auditing. So this was FR as per new syllabus. We are starting auditing as per new syllabus from 1st of December. And I'll just tell you one thing, don't take theory subjects lightly. So many times we feel theory is kind of self-study, but we don't give justice to the theory subjects. And the majority students who are getting negative result, it's basically in theories. So don't take theory subjects lightly. Okay, chalo, let's begin. Let's begin with chapter number 17. The name is Accounting and Technology. Okay, the name is what? Accounting and Technology. Now, we know that uh, there were times when accounts was manually written. If you just try to recall 10, 15 years ago, uh, not much also, 15 years, 20 years ago, everything was kind of a manual accounting. You used to have a red colored book and wherein people used to write their accounts. But now, since last 10, 15 years or 20 years, I'll say, you have shifted everything from manual to kind of computers. You have Tally, you have basically your QuickBooks, you have Zoho, so many accounting softwares are there. And there are many companies which have their customized accounting software as well. Now, does this chapter talk about how to basically use tally how to use quickbooks how to use basically the other accounting software answer is no so this chapter doesn't talk about any commands of tally no kuch bhi nahi iske andar so sir what does this chapter talk about it talks about basically the impact of technology on your accounting I repeat impact of technology on what your accounting this will focus more on new age technologies, not just the accounting software. 
So this chapter is not talking just of accounting software, it's talking about the new age technologies having an impact on accounting. For example, you have a cloud computing. You know cloud computing? Simple example of cloud computing, I tell you, Google Drive. Okay, if I store my data on Google Drive, you heard this word Google Drive? Yeah, if I store my data on Google Drive, can I say I can access it from anywhere? I am not storing it in my PC, I am storing it on Google Drive. It's a cloud computing, so cloud storage. Okay, same way, if you store data on iCloud, see if a data is on your phone, aapke iPhone pe, on your phone the data is there, then you need a phone to access it, your phone only. Aapi ke phone mein hai, you need your phone to access the data. But if you store it on iCloud, you can access it from any iPhone device or any basically Apple device. If it is stored on iCloud, so iCloud or Google Drive, they are nothing but the cloud storage. You are not storing it on your device, you are storing it somewhere else. Okay, so this will talk about cloud computing. This chapter will talk about ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning. You know, ERP softwares are there integrating the entire companies. There are ERP softwares available which can integrate the entire companies. Customized ERP softwares are also available and the ready-made ERP softwares can also be there. Now, under ERP software, what happens? Under ERP software, what happens? For example, I just tell you a simplest example under this ERP wala system. Uh, for example, whenever, whenever basically you are purchasing some goods, so can I say you have to issue a PO? So if goods are to be purchased, one department sends a requisition to another department. It's not manual. It's through that ERP system. So through ERP system, you send a requisition. So production department sends a requisition to the procure procurement or purchase department. Based on the requisition received, approval will be done online only. Basically, in the system itself, they will do the things. Then based on that, the order will go to your supplier. Supplier will send the goods. When supplier is sending the goods, it comes in the storage department. Storage department will then issue to production department. Production department will then produce it. And whenever sale happens, it's given to basically the sales department, delivery department, deliver it. And whenever goods go out, automatically from system, the quantities are updated. The goods purchased, system quantities updated, goods sold, quantities in system updated. ERP system, you try to connect the whole enterprise. So we'll learn bit. I'm telling we'll learn bit. Uh, we are not going to learn everything in detail. This chapter is only 24 pages. We are kind of learning 2-3-2-3 two, three, two, three pages of everything. So we'll learn something about cloud computing. We'll learn something about basically your enterprise resource planning ERP. We'll learn something about your AI, artificial intelligence machine learning, AI ML. That is basically what is called. So that we'll be learning. And fourth, we'll be learning about the word called blockchain. So the new word blockchain we have heard somewhere basically related to cryptocurrency and all that things. Uh, so these are the few kind of new age technologies, how it will have an impact on your accounting that we are going to learn. Now sir, would I be able to understand all that technologies in detail? Uh, so would I be able to understand blockchain, artificial intelligence, ERP as well as basically your uh, other things all in detail answer is no. Here we are learning two, two pages of each one of them. Yeah, total 24 pages chapter and that also last seven, eight pages are question answers. So actually your learning is around 10, 15 pages of all things together. If you think that in 10, 15 pages, you are able to understand everything about new age technologies, never. Even if you read 1500 pages, na, still it might not be sufficient. So leave 15 pages, 1500 pages also related to all these things might not be sufficient. So don't expect that you will be able to understand this technologies in detail. No. So we are just covering what is basically over here. And this is a subject of FR. This is not a subject of IT. So don't expect that I also will be knowing everything related to this technology. Not possible. Okay, so let's begin. Pay attention. Just one minute. 
yeah accounting and technology we start with the introduction what does this chapter cover so they are telling the field of accounting has gone significant changes in recent years and primary due to advancement in technology primary due to advancement in technology the accounting field has undergone significant changes fine now are we going to learn basically the commands of tally or commands of sap in this chapter answer is no so this chapter this chapter does not contain commands to pass the entries in tally or sap this chapter just gives an overview of the impact of technology on accounting profession see the word written it's an overview i told you don't expect you learn everything about this technology okay this chapter starts with history of accounting i know it was earlier paper based once manual and paper based it starts with the history of accounting and then it this chapter delves into various technologies that have a significant impact on accounting profession the various technologies which are having a significant impact on accounting profession that we are going to learn about what all technologies will be learning we are not learning any software we are not learning any software particular the so cloud computing artificial intelligence cyber security that all will be discussing acha the impact of this all technology is coming on accounting and see any technology coming can i say it will also have some risk attached to it so this chapter also examines the challenges that accounting professionals will face when you are adopting a new technology simplest thing if i want to adopt a new technology i need to take some training yeah without training you won't be able to understand the things in a proper way so you will need to basically have to invest in resources training etc all that things and this chapter concludes by highlighting the importance of accounting professional to stay updated with the latest technology now tell me if someone today says if someone today says i don't understand tally i can do audit in basically manual accounting only or i can write accounts manually only i don't know tally so can i say you'll be out of job because now nobody writes accounts manually same way in auditing also if you say that i can't understand any of the software i can do audit only manual things then that will not work so this chapter concludes by highlighting the importance of accounting professionals chartered accountants accounting professionals are chartered accountants staying up to date with the latest technology is it clear introduction is it clear introduction i know you would have learned something about erp etc in your subject of eis you had a subject of eis in your ca intermediate you had learned something about it yahan pe to we have lesser than that what you learned in inter here it's lesser than that just one two pages given okay now coming to evolution of accounting they are telling okay the ancient civilizations greek civilization egyptian civilization roman civilization there were something related to accounting the accounts were maintained from that time and they are telling at that time the accounts were maintained just for tax purpose how much you are earning based on that your tax was collected now so this is basically tracked to ancient civilization such as egyptian greek roman etc in india chanakya manuscripted so he came out with a book which is similar to the financial management book is book named as arthashastra contains detailed aspect of maintenance of bookkeeping basically in their empire so chanakya has came out with a book called arthashastra and that is basically a useful thing and wo india ke liye acha now we know double entry system was invented by uh, sir foundation luca pascioli so luca pascioli is basically the founder of double entry system and he is called the father of accounting okay so that double entry system was invented by the italian luca pascioli recognized as father of accounting and bookkeeping was the first person to work on double entry system he was the first person to work on double entry system okay 
Now, with industrial revolution, with industrial revolution, significant changes came in accounting profession. Uh, 1991, you know, we opened the doors basically for foreign investors to come in India. That was basically one. Uske pehle, before basically India got independent, the Britishers came over here and they started doing businesses over here in India. The East India Company. Yeah, that was basically the one which was formed. So, industrial revolution, the significant changes came in the field of accounting. The Institute of Chartered Account of Scotland was the first one. Which was the first professional chartered accountant body? Institute of Chartered Accountant of Scotland and that was established in 1854. That was established in 1854. Our ICAI came in 1949. The Chartered Accountant Act 1949. The Institute of Chartered Accountant of Scotland was the first one. 1854 it came up. TK. Now, in the post industrial period, the technological advancements such as computers came up. And because of computers, accounting profession changed drastically. Okay, the introduction of computers enable the accountants to automate many of the manual processes simplest example the interest calculation is done in bank automatedly see nobody is sitting in a bank doing interest calculation on a monthly or a quarterly basis yaar sbi state bank of india has more than 10 crore accounts so sbi has more than 10 crore accounts each savings account each savings account they give you interest on a quarterly basis so can i say four times in a year interest calculation come 10 crore account four times in a year 40 crore interest entries are there do you think someone is sitting and calculating your interest manually no it's done by the systems so because of computers coming many of the manual processes associated with accounting got automated simplest example interest calculation in bank okay Okay, now let's move ahead. The current state of technology in accounting. So this chapter we are going to discuss what the current state of technology, the latest ones. We are going to discuss about the current state of technology, including your cloud computing, including your AI, including your uh, kind of cyber security, blockchain, all that things. Take care. Now coming to the word automation process. Now coming to the word automation process. Okay, I just remind you one thing. Chapter 16, 17 are new chapters which have been added. Whatever question ICAI is given, they'll try to focus more on that only. They'll not be asking something new. They'll be focusing on the chap questions which they have given. So we should also focus more on what is given over here rather than thinking about outside what is basically of the chapter. Okay, so what do you mean by the word automation? Automation is the use of software and other tool to automate the manual process. You are using software and other tool to automate the manual process, making them faster and more accurate. Making them faster and more accurate. Now, see this example. They are given a process of procuring the groceries from a departmental store. Okay, imagine you go to Reliance Mart. Imagine you go to Reliance Mart or you go to D-Mart and you buy some product. You buy some product. The customer picks up the product. Okay. Customer goes to the counter. Can I say counter guy will scan the product? He is not basically entering the name of the product. Now, barcode scanners are okay. So, when he scans the product, the scanner will capture all the details of the product. Bill made is added, customer makes the payment, takes away the goods. Customer makes the payment, takes away the goods. This is the process. So check what is written. Step 1, customer picks the product. Step 2, he goes to the counter. The counter guy will scan it. Step 3, the scanning machine automatically reads the data and based on that, whatever items are purchased are added in the bill. The customer makes the payment and the basically the counter guy will give you the product. This is the routine step. But you know, back end pay, what is happening? Back end. What is happening at back end? 
Now tell me one thing. Tell me one thing. Your bill generated. Your bill generated and you bought certain items. So can I say inventory of that items will be reduced in the system now? Ah, so back end pe inventory is also updated. Wo alag hai. So that is not visible to customer. Wo customer ko visible nahi hai, but back end pe the inventories have been updated. However, at back end, the following activities are taking place. The inventory of the said thing is simultaneously updated. Inventory update hogi. Achha, ta, now system will show you the updated inventory. Achha, every month, what this departmental stores do? You know, every month they do a physical counting. So system shows this much inventory. Physically they will count and if they match, ah, inventory is fine. And if at all there is a shortage coming, they will record the shortage every month. Because it's possible few items get damaged, few items. You go to a Reliance Mart, you are hungry. What did you do? You had dairy milk there, you had it. Now sir, they will see in CCTV camera. Oh. So what you can do is, you can take up a dairy milk in a trial room. You can eat there. No cameras are there in trial room. So the thing is, there might be certain shortages coming. That's why. System shows this inventory, they do a physical verification on monthly basis as well. A periodic physical check of inventory will give the conclusive evidence of correctness of data. Okay, number two, you know whenever you buy the product, product is scanned, automatically the GST rate applicable on it will only be added. Few items GST 18%, few items GST 5% automatically in the bill they will basically take that. And now you might have a system wherein your GST records automatically are updated in the portal of GST. The software is so programmed that the indirect tax, the GST, As per invoice is updated simultaneously, which gets updated on the GST portal. This ensures accuracy in the returns which have been uploaded. Okay. Now, another thing, you know, whenever you are scanning, up scan karo, in your system, the bill is getting generated. And you know the total amount uh, Near to the customer, they have kept one kind of thing. Where the total amount is getting reflected. Every time they scan, the total amount update. Okay, every time they scan, the total account gets updated. The customer is able to see that how much is the total billing, and based on that, they can make the payment. Or, you know, the swiping machines nowadays. What they have done is they have integrated the swiping machines with the billing system. So, whenever basically a billing system and swiping machines are integrated, what is happening is, customer's debit card or credit card, you put in a swiping machine. Customer's debit card or credit card, you put in a swiping machine, amount is not to be entered. The amount of the bill automatically comes over there. The swiping machine may amount is not to be entered. The billing system and the swiping machine are integrated. That also happens. The softwares are also programmed that bill amount is automatically displayed on the point of sale machine. So customers pay by debit card, credit card, UPI. You scan karo, aapko amount le likhna hai. Automatically amount will come. When you scan it, amount how much to be paid automatically comes. So these are all basically the new age technologies which are coming up and having an impact. Achha. Plus, you know one more thing, whenever a customer opts for a cash payment, pe, on the screen, a cashier selects cash. When on the screen, the cashier selects cash, automatically drawer opens. So, tab tak the drawer will remain co closed. Whenever he selects cash over there in the payment option, then only the drawer will open. So, that's also basically use of IT. If the customer opts for cash payment, entering the amount on the screen will open the cash drawer. Okay. So, we see that customer picked the product, he came to counter, counter guy scanned it, scan karne ke baad, the things came in the billing system, automatically customer makes payment, takes away. But back end pay various processes are happening, this is back end. 
Any doubts? Anybody till now? Any doubts? Anybody till now? The automatically the inventory records are updated. Automatically the billing detail come in that swiping machine or the barcode scanner. You scan the barcode scanner. Uh, the payment wala barcode. Payment barcode. You scan it automatically. Amount comes. You don't have to write the amount. How much to be paid? Okay, now going to the benefits of automation process. Keep replying. What are the benefits of this automation process? Okay, streamlining data entry. Can I say data entry became more easier? With this barcode scanner, correct item, whatever it is, it comes automatically, uska rate, everything. If at all I had to do manual input, can I say there might be an error in manual input? So OCR or barcode recognition technology are there streamlining the data entry. Achha, OCR kya hai? See barcode recognition you understood. Now what is this OCR technology? Optical character recognition. Okay, imagine uh, I have solved one sum manually. So I have sum solved I scan it. And then if there's an OCR reader, now that's that thing converts my manual handwritten thing into computerized language or basically into your uh, ABCD wala, the normal thing coming up. So what is happening over here is under your optical character recognition, the manual handwritten thing gets converted into computerized thing. That is also there. Uh, you might have seen. Uh, so many places in your phone also there are things available you write it with your hand they will recognize the character which you are writing and then they will convert it into a proper character if i write like this oh this is n so they will write a proper n over there that's optical character recognition second there's an accelerated data processing you are able to process large amount of data So, pehla the streamlining, it reduces the amount of time and efforts required for manual data entry. Here you are able to basically process large volume of data. Third, there is an enhanced accuracy. It minimizes the risk which is caused by human errors. Improved decision making, yeah, very simple because, because I have the data available fast, I will be able to take decisions faster. The automation can provide real-time insight, inventory update, ho gaye, should I order a new quantity and you are able to make the decisions more quickly. Inventory got automatically updated, so should I order it right now or should I wait still? Saves time and money, saves time and money, so reduces the amount of time and resources required for manual task, data entry, reconciliation. Achha, you don't need that much staff now. If it was manual, you needed a lot of staff. Now you need lesser staff. And it helps you in complying with laws and regulations. The automation helps business to stay compliant with regulation. Just now we understood. Automatically, the GST rate applicable on each and every item is taken properly. And from that, my GST records are automatically updated. I can basically upload my returns on a faster basis properly, facilitating compliance. Did you understood advantages? Streamlining data entry, accelerating data entry, enhancing accuracy, improving decision making, saving time and money, helping you in complying with laws and regulations. Benefits. But there are some disadvantages also. What are the disadvantages? Any automated system you are adopting first time, can I say you need training, how to use it? So there's a need for ongoing training and education to keep up with the latest technology. Second, risk of data breach, cyber attack. I tell you lately, five, seven days back, I went to Reliance Smart. I wanted to buy some Diwali gifting things. So Reliance Smart, I had gone and I was at the billing counter and the billing system was hacked. You won't believe I had to stay over there for 20 minutes. And the system was hanged for the 20 minutes. So data breaches, cyber attacks, 
डिनाइल ऑफ सर्विस हाँ दिस इज कॉल्ड डिनाइल ऑफ सर्विस द सिस्टम इज काइंड ऑफ जैम्ड तो वो सारे इश्यूज कम अप इफ इट वॉज मैन्यूअल माई बिलिंग वुड है डन इन टू मिनट्स बट एज इट वॉज ऑटोमेटेड द सिस्टम गॉड जैम माई बिलिंग टू ट्वेंटी मिनट्स दैट ऑल्सो हैपन समटाइम्स and there's a potential for job loss you'll not need that many people you need lesser people uh, unless you yourself keep yourself updated you will be out of the job if you say i don't know tally you're out of job you can't have manual accounting right now you say i don't know this nahi hoga you need to keep yourself updated theek hai okay next is robotic process automation robotic process automation you try to implement robots you try to implement the robots which will be doing the work which was otherwise to be done by a human human ki jagah you are trying to bring robots they are going to do the work that's called robotic process automation it's an emerging technology you know there's a restaurant in japan they don't have human waiters There's a restaurant in Japan. They don't have human waiters at all. They have only robots at the restaurant. That revolution, revolution, uh, revolutionize the financial reporting process. So, RPA, robotic process automation, use robots or they call it as bots to process manual repetitive task of. financial data processing analysis reporting acha with mimicking the human interaction with digital system how human will interact the robots will interact in a similar way that's called mimicking uh, copying mimicking ka meaning kya hota hai copy karna to so, copying the human interaction the rpa bots a simple words robots can extract and consolidate data perform calculation generate report ensure compliances with accounting standards acha now don't tell me sir how this can happen i told you we are not learning all this technologies in detail a few examples they would have given we'll see the examples what they have given theek hai so adoption of rpa in financial reporting improves accuracy enhances efficiency frees up your valuable time that all things are then that is fine chalo examples using rpa in financial reporting using rpa in financial reporting now there's an entity trying to prepare a consolidated financial statement there's an entity trying to prepare a consolidated financial statement how we can have a rpa over here So can I say we need data of parent, data of each of the subsidiary? ठीक है. So you have multiple subsidiaries. Okay. So RPAs are RPA boards are implemented to automate the process of extracting the financial data from the subsidiary system. So from subsidiary system they will take the relevant data. Okay. Then. the boards retrieve the financial information they perform necessary currency conversion if at all there is a subsidiary abroad so unka figures are in dollars we have to convert into inr they will basically convert do the necessary currency conversion okay intercompany transaction needs to be eliminated so rpa boards are program to identify the intercompany transactions the boards automatically eliminate this transactions boat automatically eliminate this transaction boat retrieve the consolidated financial data from the parents financial statement and apply so the boards apply necessary consolidation adjustment unrealized profit in stock kind of that consolidation adjustments required they will do the consolidation adjustment they'll perform calculation of nci your share and nci ka share of income and then they'll generate the consolidated balance sheet st income statement statement of changes in equity cash flow and ensure consistency and accuracy in the reporting process 
the simple words the boards will do all the things you don't have to do anything they will extract the data from subsidiary Achha. then if subsidiary is abroad they'll do the currency conversion then they will identify the intercompany transaction they will eliminate the intercompany transaction they will do the necessary consolidation adjustment and then they'll come out with the consolidated balance sheet consolidated pnl consolidated statement of changes in equity and consolidated cash flow statement did you understood did you understood it's nothing but whatever steps to be done manually they will do it bus the steps are not new only thing they've written boats will do this boats will do this boats will do this that's it instead of we doing it they do it the steps are same okay now coming to the word cloud computing i told you in this chapter we'll learn about cloud computing erp artificial intelligence uh, then we'll learn about blockchain so that all so many new age technologies we are learning two two pages each don't expect you'll become a master in that okay cloud computing cloud computing refers to delivery of computing services over the internet it's not in your pc or it's not in your mobile wo mere pc pe ya mere mobile pe nahi hai if i'm storing some data on a google drive or if i'm storing a data on icloud that's cloud computing wo cloud storage hai Okay, just as there's a cloud storage, there are so many other things which can be done on cloud. Acha, now tell me, you're using Zoom. Zoom use करते हो? Acha, now Zoom के लिए you don't need necessarily a Zoom application. I tell you, for using Zoom, you don't need necessarily a Zoom application. You can have a web-based Zoom. हाँ, तो Zoom की website है, वहाँ से भी आप कर सकते हो. So whenever I do that, that is basically a cloud communication. तो वो क्लाउड स्टोरेज नहीं है आई एम नॉट स्टोरिंग डेटा ऑन जूम दैट्स क्लाउड कम्युनिकेशन तो सो मेनी थिंग्स अंडर क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग कम्स अप तो इट अलाउज द अकाउंटेंट टू एक्सेस द डेटा एंड सॉफ्टवेयर फ्रॉम एनी डिवाइस विथ एन इंटरनेट कनेक्शन आई टेल यू वन थिंग आई मेंटेन दिस इज प्रैक्टिकली वॉट आई डू आई मेंटेन ऑल माई मटीरियल्स तो वॉट एवर materials of each and every subject i have i keep all the materials on my google drive the reason is i might not have a laptop with me and i want to do some changes in basically material or i want to update my material or i want to just refer my material see a new chapter to be done today can i say i also have to refer it so i want to refer my material i don't have a laptop with me so i can access my google drive with my mobile i can access google drive anywhere so i always keep all my data on google drive not on my pc ah uh, google drive i can access it from anywhere so this allows the accountant to access the data and software from any device with an internet connection acha covid came up you know due to covid you had work from home now you are not having the pc you are not having the pc which was there in your office and it was a sudden lockdown So were you able to bring the PC at your home? No. So suppose your PC is at office only. Now the problem is how do you work? So data was there. Data was there. That's why the problem came. If data was on G Drive, Google Drive, if data was basically on cloud basis, can I say the problem would not have came? You'd be able to access the data from other laptop also. So with the advent of cloud computing, the person could access the system from the respective location. working remotely during lockdown and ensuring that the accounting and reporting requirements don't suffer did you understood the word cloud computing you are not having the data or the server or basically the softwares at your place aapke place pe nahi hai it's at somewhere else Okay, now common applications related to cloud computing. Common applications of cloud computing. When I told you cloud storage, when I told you cloud storage, its examples are Google Drive, Dropbox, iCloud. That all are basically cloud storage. You can store your data over there. 
you can store your data over there did you understood users can save documents photos videos other files in the cloud and access through multiple devices okay then sas sas is a software which is on cloud so if cloud storage kya tha that was i keep my data over there wo data rakh raha yahan pe software is available over there the software is not installed in my pc software is not installed in my pc it's on cloud basis <clears throat> so it's a it provides cloud based software application it provides cloud based software application that users can access and utilize via internet okay sir iske examples iske example is you have quickbooks online which is for accounting so you don't have to install a quickbooks in your pc quickbooks online is you go to a website of quickbooks and once you have log in karo and then you are able to have use of it quickbooks online there are salesforce salesforce is basically for a customer relationship management for customer relationship management a software is available salesforce now you don't keep that software in your pc you are keeping it on cloud basis so that's sas next infrastructure as a service infrastructure as a service now see what happens over here is under infrastructure as a service uh whenever you are whenever you are at a certain level you need a certain level of computers so to have a certain level of computers the cost will be very high so you might not want to buy them and you don't want to basically have that so what you do here you have a normal computer here you have a normal computer the bigger server the bigger server etc whatever you need it's basically on a cloud basis you're using the service of someone else you know amazon gives amazon web services aws uh, i can use amazon ke servers i can use google ke servers that is basically available the so infrastructure as a service it offers virtualized computing service like servers storage networking infrastructure example okay so for for my work for my work i needed a bigger server okay so one option is i buy a bigger server myself and now wo server se my computers will then be connected but rather than buying a server i am using amazon's web server and i am connecting my computer with amazon's web server that is possible so examples include your amazon web services microsoft azure google ka cloud platform etc and you are allowed to so, yahan se benefit kya hai you don't have to invest in big big it devices so without the need for physical hardware you don't have to invest in big big devices no need to invest in it devices okay next one platform as a service platform as a service ab sir ye kya hai so saas was software available on cloud basis infrastructure available on cloud basis the servers etc they were available now platform now if i am developing a software if i am developing a software the developer need certain platform jis pe wo softwares are built so either you have that so platform on your own और वो प्लेटफॉर्म आप ले सकते हो ऑन रेंट विच इज ऑन क्लाउड बेसिस तो दिस इज बेसिकली फॉर द डेवलपर्स इट अनेबल्स डेवलपर्स नॉट द रूटीन पीपल इट अनेबल्स डेवलपर्स तो आई एम डेवलपिंग वन सॉफ्टवेयर मैं सॉफ्टवेयर विल रन ऑन सर्टन प्लेटफॉर्म वो प्लेटफॉर्म इधर आई कैन ओन इट और आई कैन रेंट इट तो क्लाउड बेसिस पे किसी और का आई एम यूजिंग इट 
विदाउट द कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर मैनेजमेंट ठीक है तो अगेन एग्जाम्पल्स ओवर हियर विल इंक्लूड गूगल एप इंजिन माइक्रोसॉफ्ट एजर एप एक्सेट्रा क्लाउड बेस्ड कम्युनिकेशन वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड इट्स लाइक जूम माइक्रोसॉफ्ट का टीम्स या क्लाउड बेस्ड कम्युनिकेशन ओके क्लाउड बेस्ड ई कॉमर्स ओके तो दे अलाउ यू टू होस्ट योर प्रोडक्ट ऑनलाइन तो माय प्रोडक्ट्स ऑनलाइन आर अवेलेबल फॉर बाइंग नॉट ऑन माय वेबसाइट नॉट ऑन माय वेबसाइट तो दिस प्लेटफॉर्म प्रोवाइड दे अलाउ यू टू सेट अप ऑनलाइन स्टोर्स यूजिंग द क्लाउड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बिग डेटा एनालिसिस big data analytics so there are some data analytics things available you don't want to have it at your place kisi aur ka wo data analytics softwares or basically applications what they are having you can use that so it enables organization to process large volume of data efficiently the examples over here is amazon ka redshift google ka big query Microsoft everywhere its data Microsoft Azure is basically the company's name data lake lake analysis analytics so these are some examples which are there now sir have you used a student asked me sir kya aapne this all you used answer is no i have not used all but a few i have used few i have definitely used so sir which all are you have used i use google drive i told you all my materials i store it on google drive only that's one which i have used okay second which i have used is your zoom or basically the microsoft teams that also i have used third i have used is that quickbooks online which we heard about earlier so that also i have used amazon ka web service i have used amazon ka web service bit i have used uh, this was related to sale of my products so when i wanted to sell my lectures online to lectures to wo lecture ka jo storing hai na when students will access are using that amazon web services that time uh, currently i am not using earlier i was using it the different different things you are used you are not used but this are the different applications of cloud computing cloud storage software as a service infrastructure as a service platform as a service platform as a service is for developers so if i am developing a software i need certain platforms to uske related that's basically platform as service cloud based communication cloud based e-commerce and big data analytics any doubts anybody any doubts anybody thank you now what are the benefits of cloud computing one improved accessibility can i say you can access from any location with just an internet connection okay then enhanced security see if it's in my pc mere pc mein hota the problem is i would not have that much strong firewalls i would not have that much strong encryption ke securities all that things But oh, Google Drive pay. Can I say Google will be using the latest of security technologies? So they provide advanced security features such as encryption, firewalls, etc. Multi-factor authentication. Ah, this is newly added. You know, nowadays whenever you want to log in, log in ke time pay. You want to access some of your data which is basically stored on cloud base. When you want to log in, na. Log in me, they don't just ask your password. With the password, they ask you OTP every time. That's multi-factor authentication. Multi-factor authentication, not just your password. With that password, also we ask for the OTP. Acha, if you are using all this cloud-based thing, can I say I don't have to invest in infrastructure? Ah, the servers I'm not owning. I've used Amazon ka web server. increased scalability without having to invest in additional hardware or software reduced cost uh, less upfront investment in hardware and software streamlined collaboration streamlined collaboration reason 
इफ एट ऑल थिंग्स आर बेसिकली केप्ट ऑन क्लाउड बेसिस एक जगह चेंज मतलब यू चेंज इट ओवर देयर कैन आई से नाउ द थिंग्स आर अपडेटेड एनीबडी हु इज एक्सेसिंग एनीबडी हु इज एक्सेसिंग दे विल गेट द काइंड ऑफ अमेंडेड और अपडेटेड डेटा तो अलाउज मल्टीपल यूजर टू कोलैबोरेट इन रियल टाइम allows multiple user to collaborate in real time acha have you used the word google sheet google sheet you can share it with others or excel chalo google sheet mein excel i'm telling so if at all there's excel file now i tell you one thing say for example daily daily i schedule a lecture so what time my lecture is which topic i'll do i'll update in a google sheet and based on that back end pay the team back end pay the team will create a link Uh, back in pay i am not creating a link i am just updating a google sheet writing that this day this time this lecture will be taken now he will create a link basically wherein that lecture basically will be started so i just have to click the link and the lecture will start but can i say link is created by someone else so i and that guy can i say both should have access to that google sheet i have a editor right he will have a viewer right now uh, so i will just input which lecture i want to take and he will have a viewer right based on that he will create a link for youtube or anything and based on that the lectures will be taken to so, streamlined collaboration streamlined collaboration improved reporting and analysis so you have powerful reporting analysis tool that will help you to understand the business in a more deeper way so that is there acha now whenever there are some benefits there are always some problems also so what are the problems basically in a cloud based computing simple prone to hackers wo to sab jagah hai whenever computers are involved data can be hacked prone to hackers second you need a strong connectivity imagine my data is on google drive and my internet is not working my data is on google drive internet not working so now i'm stuck up i cannot do anything if data was on my pc i could have used it without internet If data is on Google Drive, you need internet. Internet not working, things will go bad. Okay. Now they have given one example of using cloud computing. Okay, there is a finance team. The finance team consists of chartered accountant as well as other financial analyst. तो कैन आई से वी डोंट जस्ट हैव अ सी ए वी हैव सम अदर पीपल आल्सो इन द फाइनेंस टीम ठीक है एंड दे यूज कोलैबोरेशन टूल लाइक गूगल टीम्स गूगल वर्कस्पेस एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा तो वन दे कैन यूज दैट स्प्रेडशीट स्प्रेडशीट इज नथिंग बट अ गूगल शीट व्हिच आई टोल्ड यू ओके यूजिंग क्लाउड बेस्ड स्प्रेडशीट द फाइनेंस प्रोफेशनल फ्रॉम वेरियस लोकेशन इनपुट्स द डेटा अच्छा तो एक ही शीट पे वेरियस पीपल कैन साइमल्टेनियसली वर्क तो टीम मेंबर्स कैन वर्क ऑन इनकम स्टेटमेंट साइमल्टेनियसली रिगार्डलेस ऑफ द फिजिकल लोकेशन ठीक है यूजिंग कोलैबोरेशन टूल अच्छा नाउ वेन एवर आई एम यूजिंग गूगल शीट हु मेड विच चेंजेस दैट इज ऑल्सो अवेलेबल इफ आई गिव एडिटर एडिटर राइट टू फाइव पीपल if i give editor right to five people in google sheet all five people can input the data but who inputted which data is also available so it also allows the team to track the changes what was done maintaining the audit trail acha once the income statement is prepared you can use cloud based communication video conferencing etc over zoom or over microsoft teams to address any queries or concern to address any queries or concern plus a uh, many time i want that this data should appear only to this guy imagine in google sheet you have five sheets in google sheet you are having five sheets purchase sheet sales sheet inventory sheet etc now purchase sheet should be available only to purchase guys sales sheet should be available only to sales guys and inventory sheet should be available only to basically the inventory department so i want that everybody should not be able to access everything 
so you can have that user access controls as well so cloud based collaboration ensures that all team members have a secure access and a user access controls and permission can be managed to restrict access to only authorized person okay so this are some examples of cloud based computing they are telling a finance team consists of chartered accountant various financial analysts all are working on preparation of pnl everybody is working so one guy is doing sales one guy is doing purchase one guy is doing this so all are working so can i say everybody will put figures over there so if i use a google sheet in one sheet everybody will be able to up input the data regardless of location second they will be able to work simultaneously then who did what changes will also be available then we can come up over cloud communication zoom pe aake we can address the queries etc all that things and lastly based on all these things we can also have like okay this guy should be having access only to this much so all data will not be available to him he will be having access only to the relevant data any doubts anybody with cloud computing according to me important is this applications which are there in cloud computing according to me this is important applications of cloud computing see benefits disadvantages they are simpler that any person can write it very easily but uh, this applications in cloud computing becomes a specific question now going to the word erp see erp is nothing but you are trying to have a whole enterprise kind of integrated you are trying to integrate everything whenever whenever a sales happen automatically inventory records are updated that's erp whenever purchase happens automatically inventory records updated that's erp okay one department sending requisition to so purchase uh, this production department needs a material they give request they give request basically to the purchase department so that request are sent via system approvals of that request are done via system that's all erp that's all erp now i tell you one thing have you heard the word bomb b o m bill of material okay imagine customer has ordered 10 units the customer comes up with order of 10 units so can i say production department has to manufacture 10 units theek hai so now the production department though what will happen first of all the marketing department will put that 10 units ka order received and automatically now it goes to production department the production department will raise a requisition we need material for 10 units acha now in each unit which which material required how much for each unit which which material required how much that will be there in the system which is called bomb bill of material so for one unit we'll need we'll need raw material a this much raw material b this much raw material c this much raw material d this much that's basically covered under your bomb ठीक है तो प्रोडक्शन डिपार्टमेंट डजेंट हैव टू राइट ईच एंड एवरी क्वांटिटी ऑफ ईच एंड एवरी रॉ मटेरियल नीडेड दे जस्ट राइट वी गॉट ऑर्डर ऑफ 10 यूनिट्स 10 यूनिट्स का ऑर्डर है नाउ 10 यूनिट्स विल रिक्वायर हाउ मच रॉ मटेरियल ऑटोमेटिकली सिस्टम विल कैलकुलेट एंड दैट बॉम्ब विल बी जनरेटेड बाय सिस्टम एंड द बॉम्ब विल बी देन अप्रूव्ड या अप्रूव होगा एंड देन देन अ परचेस ऑर्डर इज सेंड टू द सप्लायर तो सारे इंटीग्रेटेड सिस्टम है यू वोंट बिलीव बट आई हैव सीन अ ईआरपी सिस्टम वेयर इन inventory in your system goes down below a limit automatically a purchase order goes to supplier i have seen a erp system wherein in your system aapki system mein if inventory of a particular unit ha they would have defined the order levels so if inventory goes down this automatically order goes to supplier so no manual ordering also automatically the order goes to supplier 
तो योर सिस्टम एंड योर सप्लायर सिस्टम आर लिंक्ड दैट मच इंटीग्रेशन इज ऑल्सो दैट ओके तो ई आर पी इज अ टाइप ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर दैट द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन यूज फॉर मैनेजिंग द डे टू डे एक्टिविटीज लाइक प्रोक्योरमेंट प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट अकाउंटिंग सप्लाई चेन मैनेजमेंट एक्सेट्रा ऑल थिंग्स तो इट कनेक्ट्स एंड कोरिलेट्स द मल्टीट्यूड ऑफ बिजनेस प्रोसेसिस यू जस्ट ट्राइंग टू कनेक्ट कोरिलेट द बिजनेस प्रोसेसिस एंड अनेबल्स द फ्लो ऑफ डेटा बिटवीन दैम एवरीथिंग इज काइंड ऑफ कंप्यूटराइज ऑटोमेटेड डेटा फ्लो कम्स ठीक है तो दे ट्राई टू हैव अ कॉमन डेटा बेस एक ही डेटा बेस है बेस्ड ऑन दैट द थिंग्स आर देयर सो दैट ऑटोमेटेड अपडेट हैपेंस तो ईआरपी सिस्टम आर डिजाइन अराउंड अ सिंगल डिफाइंड डेटा स्ट्रक्चर कॉल्ड अ स्कीमा दैट टिपिकली हैज अ कॉमन डेटा बेस कॉमन डेटा बेस ठीक है सिंस डेटा इज द लाइफ ब्लड ऑफ अ मॉडर्न कंपनी ERP makes it easier to collect, organize, analyze and distribute the information to every individual and that system and the system that needs it to fulfill their roles and responsibility. So whatever data you will need to fulfill your roles and responsibility will be accessible to you. Whatever role someone else need, whatever data someone else need to fulfill his roles and responsibility, that much data only will be available to him, not everything to everyone. So a key ERP principle is central collection of data for wider distribution. It's a central collection of data for wider distribution. Fine. What are the benefits of ERP? What are the benefits of ERP? Can I say real time updates are happening? Okay, sales happen automatically, inventory reduced. The improved business insight because of real time reports generated. Real time reports generated. less operational cost because the business is streamlined processes are streamlined enhanced collaboration of users the users can collaborate in a better way better efficiency through a common user experience better efficiency through a well defined business process from back end to front end everybody is connected in a proper way <clears throat> from back end to front end everybody is connected in a proper way increased user adoption rate ah to erp people are adopting more and more reduction in risk now because you have a common database can i say that one place you have to keep the firewalls and all uh, basically the encryption thing very properly कॉमन डेटा बेस है एक जगह पे एक जगह पे यू नीड अ वेरी टाइट सिक्योरिटी अदर ऑल प्लेसेस यू डोंट नीड दैट मच टाइट सिक्योरिटी यू कैन हैव अ बेटर सिक्योरिटी बिकॉज ओनली वन प्लेस यू नीड टू सिक्योर इट लेस मैनेजमेंट एंड ऑपरेशनल कॉस्ट लेस मैनेजमेंट एंड ऑपरेशनल कॉस्ट ओके तो दिस आर सम बेनिफिट्स विच आर गिवन ऑफ ई आर पी सिंपल वन हाउ ई आर पी वर्क वी ऑलरेडी अंडरस्टूड इट्स थ्रू अ डिफाइंड स्टैंडर्ड डेटा स्ट्रक्चर they try to have they try to have a common database how does a erp work by a standard data structure information entered by one department is available to authorized user across all the organization the whole real time data is then woven into the business process and flows across the various departments so all departments are kind of connected All departments are kind of connected. Sales हुआ inventory भी update हो जाएगी ठीक है And it delivers the most value when the company has all मेज modules for each business function. तो see, under ERP पी ना देर आर वेरियस मॉड्यूल्स अवेलेबल प्रोडक्शन मॉड्यूल सेल्स मॉड्यूल फिक्सड एसेट मॉड्यूल इफ यू ऑल द मॉड्यूल्स विच आर देर एंड ऑल आर कनेक्टेड देन इट विल वर्क बेस्ट there are sometimes you don't have all the modules connected under erp so some functions are not connected if they are not connected waha pe there might be a problem coming up because they don't have a real time updated data okay next point this is important
next point this is important so till now i've highlighted what are important things number one i highlighted was your cloud-based application so applications which are in cloud computing that now steps for integrating internal control over financial reporting with erp steps for integrating internal control over financial reporting internal control over financial reporting simple words mean internal controls now you know what is internal control oh, sir we have done in auditing okay now tell me the internal controls are implemented by whom internal controls are implemented by whom management or auditor internal controls are implemented by whom management or the auditor m or a sir management theek hai you see management has implemented some internal controls now why they implement the internal controls in order to prevent and detect the frauds and errors on a timely basis at the purpose the purpose of basically putting in internal control is to prevent detect and correct the frauds and errors on a timely basis okay now as an auditor can i say we need to verify those controls which has been put by the management sometimes that internal controls are integrated with erp sometimes that internal controls are integrated with the erp system so how should we verify it so the following are the steps for integrating internal control within the erp it's actually how to verify it the answer is actually not on how to integrate answer is actually in how to verify it okay they put a star and i write down at top steps are not on how to integrate internal controls with erp but how to verify the internal controls integrated with erp steps are not on how to integrate the internal controls with erp but how to verify the internal controls integrated with erp okay for a internal control in any of the processes for whenever the entire business is laying there are certain processes so process may this type of internal control should be there so how do you check it verify this is done or not verify this is done or not verify this is done or not that is basically the answer to verify all the processes are linked verify that the requisitions the entries are done only by authorized person verify that the approval approval of requisition is done by authorized person verify any subsequent changes have been done to the system or not Achha, if any requisition is changed what change is authorized by appropriate person whether any master file is updated the master file is approved by higher level person that all will be written over here okay the check the answer verify that the process includes identifying and updating the internal and external financial reporting requirements and deadlines okay so if at all if at all tds if at all the tds is to be paid by 7th of next month does your system have the deadlines which is there in the system to kya system mein wo deadlines dal diye gst is to be paid by 20th of every month so last month ka gst we pay by 20th of this month to verify that the process includes and see we are talking over financial reporting so more important will be about financial reporting the internal control over financial reporting what is internal control over financial reporting internal control related to financial reporting process that is 
इंटरनल कंट्रोल ओवर रिलेटेड टू फिनेंशियल रिपोर्टिंग प्रोसेस सी ऑडिटर इज नॉट कंसर्न विद ऑल योर इंटरनल कंट्रोल्स यू हैव सम ऑपरेशनल कंट्रोल ऑडिटर डजेंट केयर अबाउट योर ऑपरेशनल कंट्रोल ऑडिटर केयर्स अबाउट योर इंटरनल कंट्रोल रिलेटेड टू फिनेंशियल रिपोर्टिंग So do you have a system wherein the deadlines of all the legal requirements etc are basically input the process includes identifying updating of internal external financial reporting requirements and the deadlines okay iske examples uh periodic returns which are to be filed under gst or some labor law requirement you are required to pay pf esic on a regular basis that theek hai to one two review the documented process whatever process is basically there under erp system does it align with the organizational's report uh, financial reporting policy and the regulatory guideline for example the accounting policies are proper or not so what does a erp system do and is it is it matching with the basically kind of the financial reporting policies the policies say your accounting policy says we account like this your policy says simple example i tell you uh, in your pp can i say interest cost is not added unless it's a qualifying asset so in your pp the interest borrowing cost is not included unless it's a qualifying asset so does your erp system ensure Does your ERP system ensure that only qualifying asset related borrowing costs are added, not all borrowing cost? That all you try to check. Third, use the ERP change management functionality to check anybody has changed any of the to track and validate the changes made to the financials, closing and reporting process. So, close close may anybody has done some entries, try to check that. verify that the changes are authorized by the designated individual you can use the system log you can use the system log to understand who accessed the system who made the changes so based on that you try to understand the changes are authorized by designated individual okay review change request okay someone would have put a change request so a change request ko review karo approvals for that you review it and ensure there is a proper documentation and validation of the entire process change okay verify whether the roles and responsibilities are clearly defined within the erp system who can access what data who can access what data do you try to verify it by using the metrics configuration to by reviewing the user access metric configuration what is the user access metrics configuration which user has access to what things uska table to so user a access to this this thing user b access to this thing user c access to this wo table ko bolte hain matrix so review the user access matrix configuration to understand the roles and responsibilities related to financial closing and reporting process okay access the qualification and training records of individual assigned within the erp system so erp system ke andar the training records last training taken by this employee when see all data will be put in the system acha to we can understand whether is taking up the latest trainings or not verify that the individuals who are responsible for financial reporting have a understanding of the organization as well as the appropriate accounting knowledge verify that the decisions on alternative accounting treatment acha sometimes there is a non routine transaction there is a non routine transaction can i say yahan pe the routine accounting treatment is not there something unusual is there to so verify that the alternative accounting treatment are documented approved by the management for non routine transaction there will be alternative accounting treatments review the documentation for accounting treatment ka decision 
any big thing is there uske accounting treatment ka decision whatever is basically taken audit committee etc would have taken it you review basically the documentation of it review the erp system user administration functionality to ensure appropriate individual access is given to appropriate person okay to so try to understand from the responsibility assignment matrix rm this guy has this responsibility so this guy should be having only this much access so my access to data should match with my roles and responsibility so review the erp system user administration functionality to ensure appropriate individual have access to financial reporting process acha kyc know your client whether proper kyc validation control are there when you are creating a master file acha master file ke andar uska pan number etc is properly written so that tds deducted goes in a proper pan master file okay verify that the erp system captures and documents appropriate accounting treatment for each non routine event transaction account balance etc so something is non return uska kind of maybe a manual entry is done in the system alag se entry hua hoga so you can review the journal voucher listing separate journal voucher would be created for it okay use the audit trail use the audit trail the whole sequence and validate all the postings which have been done whether they have been done in a proper period so using audit trail you try to understand all things are recorded in a correct period and review the system control from preventing backdating the system should not allow you to backdate the entry or unauthorized adjustments acha uh, i tell you one thing uh, people mostly use tally people are mostly using tally but if you go to a very big company the listed companies if you go to a very big company mostly the listed companies you will not find them using tally they all have their own softwares and one of the reason why they are not using tally is tally allows you to backdate the entry means i am doing accounting today i can go back and change the dates any time i want i can go back and do it the so back date entries should actually not be allowed ah, tally ke andar bhi there is a tally erp you know erp version of tally usme you can stop that back date entries the back date entries will not be allowed wo sare features are available but the thing is the system should prevent back dating or unauthorized adjustments something is done they should not be able to delete it ab kya karo uska adjusting entry karo वो डिलीट नहीं होना चाहिए रिवर्स एंट्री शुड नाउ बी पास्ड सो दैट पीपल कैन अंडरस्टैंड दिस वाज डन नाउ इट इज रिवर्स्ड सो दिस आर पॉइंट्स व्हिच दे हैव गिवन आई एम टेलिंग यू अगेन दिस आर पॉइंट्स रिलेटेड टू हाउ टू वेरीफाई इंटरनल कंट्रोल्स ओवर फाइनेंशियल रिपोर्टिंग अच्छा आई शुड नॉट राइट द वर्ड ओनली इंटरनल कंट्रोल द वर्ड शुड बी इंटरनल कंट्रोल्स ओवर फाइनेंशियल रिपोर्टिंग to verify this verify that all that things are given 15 point just a theoretical normal answer 15 points a theoretical normal answer one verify the process includes identifying updation of your deadlines second verify the documented process is meeting with your regulatory framework your policies okay third if any changes are done in the financial statement closing process try to review that check that the change are authorized okay change request approvals documentation all that you try to verify roles and responsibilities are properly defined okay the people who are involved in work do they have a proper qualification training fine uh verify the individuals they have a knowledge of organization appropriate accounting knowledge okay if there's something non routine thing alternative accounting treatment you try to check theek hai if any decisions are taken by audit committee related to any of the documentation or anything you try to see that fine then uh those who are having responsibility they are given only that much access so try to see the 
रोल्स रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी वाला मेट्रिक्स विथ द एक्सेस गिवन टू देम के वाई सी ऑफ कस्टमर्स वेन दे आर डूइंग इट फर्स्ट टाइम फर्स्ट टाइम मास्टर फाइल इज क्रिएटेड मास्टर फाइल इज क्रिएटेड प्रॉपरली ई आर पी कैप्चर्स एंड डॉक्यूमेंट्स ऑल नॉन रूटीन थिंग्स यू ट्राई टू चेक इट थ्रू वाउचर जर्नल वाउचर लिस्टिंग एंड चेक द ऑडिट ट्रेल टू अंडरस्टैंड इफ देर इज एनी चेंजेस विच हैज बिन डन एंड करेक्ट पीरियड में इट हैज बिन अकाउंटेड बैक डेट एंट्रीज आर प्रिवेंटेड अनऑथोराइज एडजस्टमेंट्स आर प्रिवेंटेड ट्राई टू चेक दैट डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस Did you understood this fifteen points? Now do one thing. Come to question number one. Come to question number one, page number sixteen. Come to question number one, page number sixteen. Okay, I'll come back later. Just come over here. Come to question number one. The listed company's financial transactions are carried out through an ERP, and the following financial reporting weaknesses were observed. Okay, the following weaknesses were observed during internal control over financial reporting. okay there is no proper documented process related to financial closing changes made are not properly valid or authorized roles responsibilities are not clearly defined individuals do not have necessary understanding remember that 15 points likhe the usme se so they are telling ye sare issues are there so they have given 24 point ka issue what they have given the issues 24 points now what is the question asked Okay, now question is this. यहाँ पे actually there should be enter. Provide illustrative steps for financial closing and reporting. Provide illustrative steps for financial closing and reporting. How should this be done? What all you should be verifying? So actually the answer is nothing but that fifteen points. So. Following are the illustrative steps of financial closing and reporting. Following are the illustrative steps of closing and reporting. Check out fifteen steps. Sab ke headings are written. Check out fifteen steps. Headings of all are written. Starting with the first one, your process for identifying, updating internal, external financial reporting requirements and deadlines. And last one, a back date entry is not allowed. Fifteenth. Review the system prevents backdating unauthorized adjustments. Question is bigger than the answer. In question, they have given some twenty-five points. Answer may we had to write down that fifteen points. Did you understood? Did you understood? Okay come to question number 2 Okay come to question number 2 market as important That 15 points I already marked as important earlier let me just check if I have written as important or not that 15 points that's already written as important so 15 points already marked as important now come to question number 2 mark it as important okay company xyz is a manufacturing company that implements india s2 and wants your advice on utility of erp system for inventory management okay they implement india s2 and how should they apply in erp system for inventory management and they also aim to integrate internal control over financial reporting in erp system so that they get the correct inventory valuation 
एडवाइज ऑन स्टेप्स टू बी अच्छा दिस इज वन सेकेंड क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो ऑल्सो दैट्स अ सेपरेट क्वेश्चन एडवाइस टू बी फॉलोड इफ यू कैन नॉट हैव इन्वेंट्री मतलब ई आर पी सिस्टम अच्छा इफ आई कांट हैव ई आर पी सिस्टम टू कैन सेव टू मेंटेन एवरी थिंग इन मैन्यूअल फॉर्म मैन्यूअल में आई कैन हैव इन एक्सेल ऑल्सो एक्सेल आई कैन मेंटेन ओके तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू वॉन्ट योर दे वॉन्ट योर एडवाइज ऑन यूटिलिटी ऑफ ई आर पी सिस्टम फॉर इन्वेंट्री मैनेजमेंट हाउ ई आर पी सिस्टम विल बी हेल्पिंग यू हाउ ई आर पी सिस्टम विल बी हेल्पिंग यू इन इन्वेंट्री मैनेजमेंट तो चेक आउट दे हैव रिटर्न इन्वेंट्री सिस्टम ई आर पी सिस्टम फॉर इन्वेंट्री मैनेजमेंट तो ई आर पी सिस्टम इंटीग्रेट्स ऑल मॉड्यूल्स सच एस इन्वेंट्री मैनेजमेंट प्रोडक्शन परचेजिंग कॉस्ट एंड दिस विल एंश्योर डेटा कंसिस्टेंसी रिड्यूस द मैन्यूल एरर्स दिस विल गिव डेटा कंसिस्टेंसी रिड्यूस द मैन्यूल एरर्स Now, following steps may be followed to configure and enable ERP with the following module. Okay, we are talking about inventory management. If you recall, the main thing under inventory is can I say the cost of inventory which is calculated? The so one you need a bomb bill of material. The production department says we need to produce ten units. So for ten units, which all material will be required? How much will be there in your bomb? So for one unit, you need this, 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 this is material. Even how many screws required? That also will be written in bomb. So you have to maintain one updated bomb. Second, you need to ensure the purchase orders coming under ERP are properly authorized. Okay. Third, you need to ensure that the material ka cost is calculated properly. Not just material, the labor cost is also calculated properly. The allocation of overheads is done properly. Total cost is calculated properly. So check out the answer. maintain an updated and accurate bill of material management within the system specifying the components required for each unit if i want to produce one unit which all items i'll need including the screws also implement purchase order control you should implement a purchase order control within the ERP system, like this will include your purchase requisitions coming. They are verified, obtaining approvals, correct quantities are there. That all thing. Define appropriate costing method to allocate the cost. Remember, inventory ka allocation can be based on FIFO or weighted average. So should I take a FIFO or weighted average cost? Appropriate costing method. track labor cost within the operating system by integrating the attendance time keeping all that things so how many hours workers are working for this thing track should be kept define a overhead absorption rate so that the production overhead goes integrate erp system with a general ledger and expense allocation to non production overhead non production overheads they are also added if at all they relate to the inventory so this expenses are appropriately reflected plus you should have a system you should have a system for doing a physical verification a system will show you inventory every month physically verify whether it's matching or not the periodic verification should be done by physical counts and you should basically use the analytical tool under erp so that you are able to understand last month cost this month cost last month material last month labor this month material this month labor all that analysis can be done so this is basically the steps a utility of erp system for inventory management the steps may be followed to configure and enable erp related to inventory
Okay, now integration of internal control of financial reporting. Integration of internal control over financial reporting in ERP system. How should I have a internal control over financial reporting? To try to have segregation of duty. Try to have physical checking on a routine basis. They are kind of internal controls. See, internal control kya hai? Work of one person checked by another person. No person allowed to carry out the work from origin till its end. Do you recall? So, what you try to do over here, the integration is configured to enforce segregation of duties. Okay, the one who is, the one who is putting in the requisition should not be allowed to approve it. May and the requisition dalta may approve karta No, that should not be there. Segregation of duties you try to implement. No person is allowed to carry out transaction from origin till its end. Then you have an excess control. Those people who are responsible for work, that people only have access to that data. The excess control is kind of internal control. Then there should be a proper authorization for approval. The proper authorization is also a kind of internal control. Proper authorization is also internal control. Try to use barcode technology or basically RFID technology to enhance the inventory accuracy and inventory control. See, if it will have a barcode, so whenever the item comes in, it's scanned. Whenever item goes out, it's scanned. Can I say the records will be available very properly? That's barcode. RFID technology is used under your fast tag. Uh, car ke andar, you know the fast tags so they use RFID technology okay then periodic physical counts periodic physical count should be done so that we are able to understand system inventory and physical are they matching or not okay technology driven data analytics tool can be integrated you come up with some data analytics tool they will help you to identify they will help you to identify a slow moving inventory so because i'm using some data analytics tool usse pata chalega. that's also a part of internal control this will be to analyze the inventory turnover ratio slow moving items abnormal inventory etc and you can also provide some management dashboards Management dashboards are kind of summary. Management dashboards are kind of summary. They basically give you information about inventory turnover, stock levels, valuation accuracy, all that things. So that is also a part of internal control. Okay, so which are internal control over financial reporting related to inventory management? Okay, so first of all, we understood ERP me kya kya dalna chi. So related to inventory management, what all things should be put under inventory management? Achha, then we understood how do I integrate the internal controls in that? How do I integrate the internal controls in that? So try to have segregation of duty. Try to see that excess controls are properly given. Try to basically have proper authorization. Try to have a barcode system. Sir, why barcode? So that in out are properly recorded inventory will come proper see that there's a physical inventory taken on a regular basis so that the book inventory physical inventory matching or not can be compared this all thing so this all basically is integration of what the internal control or financial reporting under your inventory management okay now there's one more question asked you see if you check there were three questions one, they want your advice on utility of ERP system. Second, they also want to integrate internal control or financial reporting to ensure accurate inventory system. And third, so there are three questions. This is first, this is second, this is third. If company cannot afford ERP, if I cannot afford ERP, what to do? Do one thing, na. 
पुट ऑल थिंग्स इन एक्सेल हाँ तो एक्सेल में बॉम्ब बना दो हाँ तो वन यूनिट विल रिक्वायर हाउ मच रॉ मटीरियल्स एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा तो फुल बॉम यू प्रिपेयर इट इन एक्सेल दैट्स वन अच्छा नंबर टू वॉट यू कैन डू इज वॉट एवर योर कॉस्ट वॉट एवर कॉस्ट इज बेसिकली इनकर्ड एक्सेल में ट्राई टू हैव द कॉस्ट रॉ मटेरियल का लेबर एब्जॉर्बशन रेट यू ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट डू इट ऑल थिंग्स इन एक्सेल इफ यू कैन नॉट अफोर्ड ई आर पी तो चेक द सोल्यूशन इन्वेंट्री मैनेजमेंट इन एबसेंस ऑफ ई आर पी सिस्टम ओके द ऑल्टरनेटिव प्रोसीजर अवेलेबल इज एक्सपोर्टिंग द डेटा टू अ स्प्रेडशीट स्प्रेडशीट इज नथिंग बट एक्सेल स्प्रेडशीट इज नथिंग बट एक्सेल and perform the following steps okay export the relevant data from accounting package from your accounting software what all data as you need try to extract it to jo jo data chahiye wo aap extract karo now organize the exported data with the appropriate column now you give proper columns headings in excel Use formula to calculate the cost of each one of them. Multiply the quantities. Use formula to calculate the labor cost. Multiply the labor hours. Determine overhead absorption rate based on normal level of production. If there are any non-production expense, allocate them using some appropriate method. But this all now you are doing in Excel. Well, this all work was done by ERP. answer actually same but now this is done by excel sum up all your cost to obtain a total inventory cost if you have a physical inventory count compare the total cost so whatever you calculated in excel with the physical you try to compare it and create report in spreadsheet that gives you breakdown of the inventory cost so report bana do which is showing you which all items which which cost is incurred and use formatting charts to present the information clearly okay the simple words if i don't have erp what to do if i don't have erp the functions what erp is were doing you try to do the similar functions in excel did you understood any doubts anybody till now any doubts anybody till now you have done question 1 question 2 you have done question 1 question 2 acha theory is still pending where did we reach blockchain is pending acha cyber security we have reached cyber security okay thank you we take a break we are taking a break 10 minutes probably our lecture may extend by 10 15 minutes today so instead of 10 30 we might get over by 10 45 or 10 50 so that will be there uh, uh, it's 9 hours 10 minutes we meet back at 9 hours 21 minutes it's 9 hours 10 minutes we are meeting back at 9 hours 21 minutes enjoy your break
Okay, hi, welcome back. Give me high five, thumbs up, everyone. Chalo, chalo, chalo. Last one and a half hour. Okay, the next point which we are required to do is cyber security in accounting. There are a few theory left and there are a few questions which are left. We'll finish it off today itself. Total six questions are there. Out of six, we did two. So four questions are left and some theory. Chalo, cyber security in accounting. So here we'll just understand an overview of cyber security threat, the risk that comes up due to cyber security breaches and see if at all you breach any cyber security norms, see there are, uh, there's a basically a data protection act also. So whenever that act is violated, IT act is also there, IT act if you're violating automatically there are a lot of penalties which come on you. So that all has to be taken care. So check over here. Okay, so this section provides an overview of the cyber security threats and risks, whatever are there. And it also provides how to mitigate those risks. How to mitigate those risks. <clears throat> protecting information is very crucial. So protecting financial information is crucial to prevent unauthorized access and data breaches. There are legal framework like IT Act, which has been amended in 2008, which governs collection, storage, transmission of data. And whenever there is a non-compliance, there will be a huge penalties which will be applicable. Okay. So organizations have legal and ethical obligation to disclose the cyber security incidents. Whatever has happened, you are required to disclose it. And cyber security is a critical concern for accounting professional also because sensitive financial data is being transmitted nowadays online. So increasing use of technology, the risk of cyber security threats and breaches have also increased. Just a brief introduction about cyber security. Nothing else, just a brief introduction. Important is this. Which are common cyber security threats? Which are common cyber security threats? One is called as a phishing attack. Okay, what is this phishing attack? Have you got a message anytime that you won a lottery of rupees 10 lakh? Click on this to claim your prize. You won a lottery of rupees 10 lakh, click on this to claim a prize and when you click on it, when you click on it, your phone gets hacked. So that's called phishing attack. So it is tricking users to click on malicious links. That's phishing attack. Second, malware attack. Malware attack is nothing but they're infecting your computers or network with viruses that's where they are doing it infecting computer with network with malicious software so that they're able to steal data or disrupt your operation so that they're able to steal data or disrupt your operation that's malware attack take it third ransomware attack ransomware is nothing but locking out your computer it locks your computer you cannot move it Your computer lock kar dete. And now they say we'll open it only when you give us some money and demand a ransom payment in excess uh, in exchange for restoring the excess. Okay, the phishing attack, some link pay you click and the phone gets hacked. Malware attack, they put some virus or other kind of softwares in, in your computer or network. Ransomware is they lock your computer. Computer lock kar diya. You are not able to access only. To access it, they will say transfer this much money to this account, then only we'll open it. Then insider threat, it's basically done by employee. It's malicious action by employee, insider. 
denial of service attack oh i give you example of that reliance smart the system got jammed 20 minutes it was out that's denial of service attack uh, what happens is we put a lot of traffic in your network imagine your website say big billion day sale big billion day sale uh, flipkart pay many people many people are accessing together so can i say website gets jammed and you might have noticed that the website was not working for some time so that's denial of service due to putting a lot of traffic in your system to involve overhelving a system or network with a traffic with a traffic okay supply chain attack is nothing but in your overall system aapke puri system mein whatever is a weak point we identify that weak point and we try to hack that weak point so it is compromising third party software or hardware see anything is written software or hardware so out of your entire system whatever is your weak point we try to gain access through that that's called as a supply chain attack okay i put a star i write down at the top under supply chain attack the hackers try to gain access from the weak point in our entire system maybe hardware maybe software anything that is through hardware or software Are you clear? Through hardware or software? That's called as a supply chain attack. Okay, so which are the types of cyber security attacks? Number one, phishing. They send you some link. You click on the link. Your phone or system is hacked malicious attack they put some virus basically kind of it in your system ransomware attack they lock your system they lock your system and to unlock it they're asking money inside the threat is done by some employee denial of service attack they put traffic in your website they put traffic in your application application gets jammed with traffic they are locking out the user And they ask money for restoring the excess. Did you understood all of them? Did you understood all of them? That's a good question. Now, how to mitigate cyber security risk? Okay, we know there's a cyber security risk. So, how to prevent it? One, try to put strong passwords. You know, many times when you are putting a password, now some applications or some website, they require that you should have at least one uppercase, one lowercase, one numeric, as well as one special character. So try to have a strong password. That's one. Second, have a proper encryption of data. Whenever sensitive data is being passed, proper encryption method should be used. Access control should be defined. Access control is critical for preventing the unauthorized access. Okay, network security should be ensured with the proper firewalls and other security measures. 
employee training should be given the employee training should be given so that the employee knows so that the employee knows how to protect the data all that things so importance you need to make aware of importance of cyber security and understand how to protect the financial data so give training to your things Achha, have a data backup Chalo. Kitna bhi aap training de do, whatever you do, something bad happened, you should have a data backup. So, critical for ensuring the data is not lost in the event of cyber attack and incident response planning. So, in place, suppose this thing happens, what to do? You should have an incident response planning. This plan should include procedure for detecting containing and mitigating the impact of cyber attack did you understood okay so what are the ways we can mitigate the cyber security risk password management then good encryption access control uh, network security through firewalls other security measures give proper training to your employees make them aware about the cyber security uh, importance of how to have the data basically protected uh, data backup should be taken in case it happens so still backup is there with us and incident response planning any doubts anybody next point is the future of technology in accounting future of technology see erp is already there erp already hai cloud computing is already there to wo sab hai. future of technology in accounting ai blockchain they are all future Okay, so I'll come to blockchain later. Yeah, I'm coming to blockchain at the end. Come to AI first. Blockchain, I'm coming at the end. Coming to AI. What is AI? Artificial intelligence. They'll try to simulate what a human will do. They will also try to evolve. Oh, it's not just basically doing past things. They also try to predict AI. So AI refers to a situation of human intelligence in machine. It's a human intelligence in machine enabling them to perform tasks that normally requires human intervention. They'll be able to do the task which normally humans were required to do it. So AI can be used to analyze a last large amount of data and make prediction about the future trends. Make prediction about the future trends, which can be useful for forecasting the financial performance, potential risk you are able to identify, all that things. This section seeks to provide understanding on how AI and machine learning are disrupting the accounting profession. And we are just having introduction. So this chapter provides introduction to AI machine learning. Explore their account application in accounting and discuss the benefits and challenges. This is what we are going to do in this chapter related to AI. What are benefits of AI? artificial intelligence and machine learning when used in accounting so can i say automated data entry will be there so they can process and extract data from invoice receipts other documents reducing the need for manual entry they can review bank statement ah, bank statement check karke automatic entries from bank statement also they can do it so you just so what will happen is automatically the bank statement gets downloaded it gets basically scanned usme they will see whose name is written automatically in that account the entries are done payment or receipt whatever entries the automated data entry they can review bank statement pass entries in the system they can auto could do the bank reconciliation also all that things second fraud detection they are able to analyze the large amount of data so they can indicate a fraudulent activity if they find something unusual financial forecasting Achha, the predictive models which are there they can help you to understand future kya hoga Achha, this one example i tell you they've given it very good uh, you remember under india's 115 
under index 115 uh, if customer buys goods together with the goods we give him a voucher we did index 115 with the goods he is also given a voucher so can i say i'm selling him two things right now i'm giving him goods also and i'm giving him a right to buy the goods at discounted rate in future okay so that right to buy goods that voucher the voucher is a separate performance obligation if it's a material right so whenever i'm trying to find out whenever i'm trying to find out the ssp of voucher when i am trying to find out ssp of voucher can i say i need to evaluate i need to evaluate how many people are going to exercise that voucher uska probability kitna hai so to find the ssp of voucher i need to understand how many people are going to exercise the voucher use that voucher acha to uske liye i can have ai to so ai can evaluate all my past data Uh, AI can evaluate this customer in past, whenever he got voucher, whether he exercised, did not exercise, what he has done. Based on that, how much is the percentage probability that he will exercise this voucher? AI can help me with that. So financial forecasting. So example they have given about one one five. When a store sells goods, offers voucher to customer. Index one one five requires a degree of estimation of likelihood. that the person will avail the discount predictive model can track customer preference likelihood of availing the voucher and based on that you are you can record the revenue theek hai then accounting automation to so ai can analyze the financial statement others to identify errors or inconsistencies making accounts more accurate reliable तो ऑटोमेटेड डेटा एंट्री फ्रॉड डिटेक्शन में इट इज हेल्पिंग फोरकास्टिंग में इट इज हेल्पिंग मेकिंग इट मोर रिलायबल एंड यू कैन डू अ बेटर टैक्स कंप्लायंस इट कैन हेल्प ऑटोमेट द टैक्स कंप्लायंसेस ओके तो दिस आर सम बेनिफिट्स ऑफ एआई और मशीन लर्निंग व्हाट आर द चैलेंजेस द सेम थिंग डेटा प्राइवेसी सिक्योरिटी कंसर्न टेक्निकल कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी हाँ developing a ai technical complexity need to train employees to extract the capability of ai see to have ai and able to use ai properly is different ai hona alag cheez hai and to use that ai properly is a different thing so you need to train employees so that they are able to extract capabilities of ai from the system any doubts anybody with benefits and challenges any doubts anybody with benefits and challenges thank you now just see the accounting professional the chartered accountant must be willing to adapt the changes and develop new skill and competencies to stay relevant in the industry so the chartered accountant have to keep themselves updated whatever basically is this you need to basically ensure that you are also working the late, using the latest technology I'll tell you one thing uh, we all friends were sitting and one of my friend had to give a speech he is a president of his community in our town So in our town, he's a president of his community, and he had to give a speech over there in one of the function. So we were just thinking how to draft the speech, what all he should speak over there. Rather than drafting the speech manually, we opened up a Chat GPT application. Yeah, we opened up a Chat GPT application, and just usme likha speech of community president for this function, and you won't believe a full speech came up. So rather than basically writing the entire speech on our own, we just opened up a Chat GPT application and we wrote speech of community president for this function, and the entire speech has came up. Now what did he do? He just basically took a printout of it or copy pasted in Word and just did some modification what he wanted. So rather than writing entire speech, full speech mil gaya. Just modify what all modifications you want to do. Can I say task became much simpler? Okay, but we should be willing to adapt. 
अब ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए नेवर ओपन अ चैट जीपीटी ऐप ओनली ना जस्ट थिंक हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू हैव ओपन अप अ चैट जीपीटी ऐप दैट शुड नॉट बी देयर यू शुड बी विलिंग टू अडेप्ट एंड डेवलप दिस न्यू स्किल्स एंड कॉम्पिटेंसीज टू स्टे रेलिवेंट इन द इंडस्ट्री ठीक है Now going to some examples using artificial intelligence in financial reporting. Examples of using AI in financial reporting. Okay, there is this company. They have a vast amount of data, which is in Excel or PDF or scanned documents. acha you have vast data in excel or pdf or some scanned documents what you can do you can use ai they will basically read all your pdfs they will read all your basically excel and they will come out with a proper data which you want in a ma manner which you want so manually extracting analyzing this data is time consuming so you can use ocr technology so ai driven ocr technology the company automates the data extraction process and now it converts into a structured process the way you want it uh, to i'm manually reading and extracting the relevant lines was a difficult hoga to ai driven ai driven ocr technology you use it you will directly get the relevant things from all your excel files pdf scan documents whatever it is okay second they have given example over here this is a financial institution and they are mitigating fraud risk they are mitigating fraud risk financial institution to so ai powered algorithm can analyze the large volume of transaction identify the anomalies and they can basically help you to find where there can be a fraud i'm not telling there is a fraud there can be fraud theek hai Uh, this is a manufacturing company wants to forecast the financial performance. How will be the performance next year? You can use AI. The AI will see your past data. AI will see the market trend, external factors, and based on that, the AI can come up with different scenarios. They can give you basically that this much will be your sales. But ah, uh, if you say market grows not by twenty percent, market grows by nineteen percent. So what will happen? market grows by 15% what will happen that all will also be available the company can simulate different scenarios also by using ai machine learning you can also simulate different scenarios as well theek hai a a to z limited faces challenge of a timely reporting they are not able to do timely reporting to so, kaam karo na ai use karo So they are telling AI powered tool can integrate the company's financial system automatically extract the data on a real time basis and they'll they'll be able to basically make it more faster theek hai this example is okay leave it other three were good other three were more better example rather than the last one okay so examples of using AI in financial reporting now blockchain is pending i'll come to blockchain later now indias and it indias and it now see indias are principle based indias kaise hai aapke principle based to so, they give principles not the rules wo principle based for implementation of indias technology can play a key role in automating the process of validating while generating reports so whatever reports are being generated they are as per indias or not we can do some use of technology and automated the things and you have to do configuration at a account level the base level the role of technology will be basically base level pe you need to put some configuration you need to implement some predefined rules to understand whether they are complying with indias or not base level pe account level is base level to so put some predefined rules in your system based on which we are able to understand whether indias is being followed or not 
इंडिया इज कम्प्लाई हुआ नहीं हुआ दे विल हाईलाइट दैट पॉइंट लाइक यर दिस इज नॉट मैचिंग विद द प्रोविजन ऑफ इंडिया अच्छा इफ दैट बेज लेवल इफ दैट बेज लेवल यू आर नॉट डूइंग दिस देन इन दैट केस इट विल फॉल एट द लास्ट लेवल तो या तो आप बेस लेवल पे पुट डाउन द रूल्स रेगुलेशन इंडिया से दिस दिस इज हाउ इट शुड बी देर इफ समथिंग इज नॉट मैचिंग देन दैट ए आई विल टेल यू और आई टी विल टेल यू द टेक्नोलॉजी विल टेल यू दैट दिस इज समथिंग वेयर इंडिया आर नॉट बींग फॉलोड बट इफ यू आर नॉट पुट दैट बेस लेवल कॉन्फिग्रेशन देन एट द एंड रिपोर्ट कम रिपोर्ट कम देन यू टू डू अ मैनुअल चेकिंग ओनली हाँ यू मे यूज सम एनालिसिस टूल टू अंडरस्टैंड समथिंग बट देन वो मैनुअल हो जाएगा If account level configuration is not done properly, the next using technology will be after generating reports. Next will be after generating reports. Then you can use some Google Sheets etc. to perform certain validation. But this is purely dependent on human intelligence. फिर वो human पे चला जाएगा rather than technology. तो बेटर इज बेस लेवल बेस लेवल ओनली यू पुट सम कॉन्फ़िगरेशन रिलेटेड टू इंडियस रिक्वायरमेंट ऑल दैट थिंग्स एंड वेन एवर द ट्रांजेक्शन इज नॉट मीटिंग दैट इंडियस रिक्वायरमेंट्स द टेक्नोलॉजी विल बेसिकली गिव यू अ ग्लांस ऑफ इट एंड टेक्नोलॉजी विल पॉप आउट दैट ओ दिस इज समथिंग नॉट मैचिंग विद इंडियस रिक्वायरमेंट तो यू आर एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड इंडियस आर नॉट बींग कंप्लाइड ओवर हियर डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड Did you understood? This is okay. Not much relevant from exam angle. Now we are done with question one. We are done with question number two. We are done with question one and two. Come to question number three. Okay, this question was there in your. This question was there in your NDS one o nine. Okay, if you recall, under your NDS one o nine, if I have a contract to buy or sell non-financial item, which will be settled by delivery. If I have a contract to buy or sell non-financial item, which is to be settled by delivery, is it covered under one o nine or is it scoped out of one o nine? Covered me see, likho scoped out. Write down S. I have a contract to buy or sell non-financial item. Which will be settled by delivery? Is it covered under one o nine or scoped out of one o nine? Sir, it is scoped out of one o nine. Correct. So that is an executory contract, not covered under one o nine. But if it is, if it is expected to be settled in net, if contract can be settled in net and expected to be settled in net amount, then it's covered under your one o nine. ठीक है. The same question, same question was there under one o nine. Now check out Z wants to determine if contracts entered into for purchase and oil are covered within the scope of one o nine or they are executory contract out of the scope of one o nine. अच्छा तो I want to know whether they are covered or out of scope, but उसके लिए I don't want to do it manually. Whether they are covered or not covered, I don't want to do manually. I want automated steps for it. So they request you whether such process of determining is possible through a use of external source of technology so whether i can use technology to identify whether it's covered under 109 or not covered under 109 remember i told you base level pe you should have to put the rules aapko sare rules dalne padenge aisa hai aisa hai aisa hai so this is covered this is not covered this is covered this is not covered kind of that so answer is yes Yes, it is possible by extracting the data from accounting package. You can extract the data from your accounting package, or by connecting the database to the accounting package. Whatever. So what you can do is the same can also be done by connecting the spreadsheet with the database. So up in your accounting database, Excel ko link karo. Or extract data to a Excel and then do it. Extract data to a Excel and then do it. This one word written ODBC. ODBC is nothing but Open Database Connectivity. Okay, Open Database Connectivity. So 
तो इधर यू कैन कनेक्ट द स्प्रेडशीट विथ योर अकाउंटिंग पैकेज और यू कैन एक्सट्रैक्ट द डेटा फ्रॉम अकाउंटिंग पैकेज एंड डू इट सेपरेटली इन एक्सेल दिस इज वॉट देव रिटर्न हो सकता है ना सर हाउ डू आई डू इट आई वॉन्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड वेदर दिस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज कवर्ड अंडर वन ओ नाइन और नॉट कवर्ड अंडर वन ओ नाइन वॉट टू डू तो स्टेप्स देव गिवन इफ डेटा हैज बिन एक्सट्रैक्टेड अगर आपने डेटा एक्सेल पे ले लिया ओके फ्रॉम योर सॉफ्टवेयर अकाउंटिंग सॉफ्टवेयर यू टेकन द डेटा इन एक्सेल तो ना वॉट टू डू आइडेंटिफाई द रेलिवेंट डेटा फील्ड्स इन द अकाउंटिंग पैकेज that contains the contract information to so contract details uska quantity uska rate uska settlement detail all that data was there in your system you extract it in excel theek hai to export the relevant data from accounting package to a compatible format say excel now open the data in excel see this is just a logical step the first identify which all data from your system related to contract contract ka data you will need which all data you will need extract that data open the data in excel excel pe aa gaya now clean the data by removing unnecessary columns and rows whatever extra columns rows are there you remove it make sure you properly format the data why should it properly format the data so that i'm able to use the formulas properly now i tell you very simple so let me just open up excel over here i'll show you a very simple thing now imagine i'm putting some figures here 10 rupees here 20 rupees here 50 rupees here 80 rupees here 100 rupees okay this is what i've written then i leave one line and then i write 200 rupees and then some 300 rupees and now when i'm applying a sum When I am applying a sum ka formula, you know normally what do we do? Normally what do we do? So, a sum ka formula. Whenever I am applying over here, so sometimes what happens is this blank space is there, na? So this will do a summation of this two only. Ah, so if at all I remove this in between, ye isko nikal dunga na beech mein se, then they will be able to do total of all. Then they will be able to do total of. Otherwise, I have to put the manual way. Otherwise, मुझे manual way लिखना पड़ेगा from this cell to this cell number. So sometimes there are some extra columns in between, extra rows in between. Usko eliminate kar do, format it properly so that the formula can work properly. Do you get it? So that the formula can work properly. Okay. ठीक है. Now you have your rules. आप अपने rules डाल दो. How do you categorize the contract? Okay, the rules may I would have put whether the contract can be settled in net, yes, no, yes, no, आ गया. अच्छा, whether it is for expected sale, purchase, or production, yes, no. If contract settlement में cash में yes, no में if it is no written, तो I can understand it doesn't fall under one o nine. But वहाँ पे yes written, वहाँ पे yes written, then I go to next question. तो so whether basically it's expected to be settled in net. Is it for purchase, sale, or something like that? Wow. So, who, depending on the answers coming, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Last, me overall result will come. So, define the rules or criteria for categorizing the contract. This is based on Indies one o nine. Establish conditions using Excel Excel formulas or logical function. Apply the rules or criteria to the contract data. So, data pe ap apply karo apna rules. You may use some functions like if function, and function, we lookup function. Create some additional columns if you want to categorize the contracts. So these are covered, these are not covered, and assign appropriate labels and values to indicate whether it's a derivative or whether it's basically an executory contract. So this is how they've given the answer. So to identify whether it's covered under one o nine or not. can we automate the process can we use technology yeah so they said that you try to use excel excel use karo to extract data from your accounting package to excel to first identify which all data you will need kaun sa kaun sa aapko data chahiye export that to excel open up in excel 
clean up the data extra low rows column you remove it in between some blank column is there you remove it all that things so format the data now define the rules criteria. I can have some rules criteria basically which are there as per 109. Establish the conditions using Excel formulas or logical functions in Excel. So, I have added the other if, if simple words, if I can use a if formula, if contract can be settled in net, usme yes hai. Contract can be settled in net, yes, and contract is for purchase sale or own consumption usme no hai to ek mein yes hai isme no hai then it is a derivative contract else it is basically a executory contract i have used some formula i have used which formula to if formula used and formula used if this is yes and this is no you give me this answer to create additional columns to categorize the contract and then appropriate labels. So, these are executory, these are derivative. Did you understood? Did you understood? Okay, next one, question number four. Next one, question number four. You provide broadband services. Also, you give voice call services. And also, customer can buy modem from you. So, three performance obligation. Three performance obligation. One is you are giving broadband service. Second, you are giving is voice call service. Third, you are giving is sale of modem. Now, the three performance obligations are there. Comment on how to identify whether performance obligation under contract is a distinct performance obligation by using automated process. How many performance obligations are there in a contract? I want to understand by an automated process. Same earlier question also. Through use of technology. Now, so you might find that sir, the same question was there under India S109. Same question was there under India S115. Uh, same question, the last line is different. Through use of technology. Here word by using automated process. So how do we identify that they have given the steps? Again, the same thing. First, analyze the clauses in the contract. So, which which clauses are which which service I have to provide? Okay. Each clause should be codified. Each clause should be codified using parameters and assign a Boolean values. Boolean values is basically if you have 0, 0 means no. And if you have one, one means yes to each parameter. So instead of writing no and yes, you can directly have zero and one. Okay, now you can define the criteria for evaluating the performance obligation based on parameters. Achha, considering factors such as the type of service involved, the benefit derived to customer, the promises made in the contract. Now remember whether it's a distinct performance obligation or not, whether whether it's a distinct performance obligation or not, we need to see what? Whether the customer is able to enjoy the benefits on its own. Achha, is it a is it separately identifiable under the contract? The few criteria are there as per 115. Wo criteria likho. Us my answer aega, 0, 1. 0 means no, 1 means yes. And the based on answers, whatever are coming, then you can understand whether it's a separate performance obligation or not. The so develop an algorithm that evaluates the Boolean value. Calculate the scores or weight for each parameter. Utilize the score assigned. Utilize the score assigned if the performance obligations are distinct or not to determine it. And if the total score exceeds a threshold, you say it's a separate performance obligation. So, yahan pe no aya, yahan pe yes aya, yahan pe no aya, yahan pe yes aya. So, we would have basically given that if out of four items, three is yes, it's a separate performance obligation, or all four are yes, then only it's a separate performance obligation. To so calculate the score, utilize the score to determine. And if it exceeds certain threshold, consider it as a separate performance obligation. Did you understood? 
did you understood that the answer which is written is similar to the earlier answer the way i'm telling is the way of writing is similar to the earlier answer the earlier question was determining whether a contract will be a derivative contract or it will be executory contract this question was determining whether it's a separate performance obligation or not. Next one, number five. Achha, this question was there under India's 108 operating segments. This question was there under India's 108 operating segment. Remember, uh, segment one is a local transport wala thing. Segment 2 is basically an intercity route and segment 3 was contract hiring. Segment 1 is showing a decline in profitability but segment 2 is performing well. Management wants to show overall thing. They don't want to give segment wise. So management would like to aggregate segment 1 and 2. We had the same question in days 108. Required. What are the steps involved? To automate the process of determining whether we can aggregate or not. Achha, to whether we can aggregate it or not, what will be the steps involved to automate? Achha, to, you know, to aggregate the two segments. To aggregate the two segments, there were five criteria given. So based on the answers coming in five criteria, we can determine whether the contract can be aggregated or not aggregated. So uske related automation process over here. To check. First, extract the relevant financial data. Extract the relevant financial data related to segment 1 and 2. Ensure that the data includes all the segment specific information. Segment revenue, segment expense, segment assets, liability, everything. Define the criteria whether it should be segregated or not. The criteria are the nature of business activity, the economic characteristic, the customers of both the things are same. The way they are delivered are same, risk return are same. Remember, I gave you an example of dairy milk and five star that time. Uh, so that can be aggregated. Okay, utilize automated analysis tool or software which is capable of proce processing the large volume of data. Okay. Apply that algorithm to evaluate the financial performance and the characteristics of segment one and two. Based on analysis and finding, evaluate whether it's appropriate to aggregate or not and document the rationale behind the decision making including the result analysis and supporting evidence. You see, similar way of answering because they are telling how do we automate the process. The three questions, all three were kind of similar. Here, nothing is actually to be taught. You just have to read this and it's a simple steps logically going on. The first we did was whether basically it's a derivative contract or a executory contract. Second, whether it's a separate performance obligation or not. And third one, whether we can aggregate this operating segment or not. Did you understood? Usme, the main point should be covered. This one. Consider the factors such as business activity, economic characteristic, customer base, risk return associated. That is to be considered. Okay, now come to question number six. Now come to question number six. And then the last topic, blockchain, that's it. Okay, New Way Limited decides to enter a market that is currently experiencing economic difficulty. Okay, you are trying to explore new market. And you enter into a contract with customer in the new region. You enter into a contract with customer into a new region for Rs. 1250. At contract inception, you want to define criteria for identifying contract with customer. Remember, under your NDS, under your India's 115 revenue recognition, there was a five-step model. 
yeah, under your NDS 115 revenue recognition five step model step number one is identify the contract with customer and whether it's a contract with customer or not uske liye five criteria were there uske under five criteria tell me tell me i sold goods to someone but on day one only i sold goods to someone but on day one only substantially all of collection is not probable Okay, I sold goods to someone, but on day one only, substantially all of collection is not probable. So can I record revenue? No. Yada, you cannot record revenue because the contract with customer does not exist in that case. To so define criteria, he wants to define criteria for identifying the contract with customer, such as is there an enforceable right and obligation, agreed terms, consideration, and he wants to establish rules to link the relevant transaction to a specific contract and assign unique identifier to each contract. You want to link the relevant transaction to the contract and each contract should have a specific identifier. Advise the steps to automate the process. Advise the steps to automate the process. Okay. So here we call it as a contract management system. The so contract management system may be implemented, which allows you to store and organize the contract documents electronically. And you can also capture the key contract details from it. The so contract management system shall be unable to configure a mechanism where a unique identifier for each contract is given unique identifier for each contract is given to so integrate the contract management system with your other systems whatever other systems you are having uske saath integrate kar do. assign specific tag or attribute to contracts assign specific tag or attributes to contract based on criteria okay so you want contract based on customer's name contract start date, contract end date, what are the criteria as you put it. Achha, use custom queries or template to extract information on number of contract identified, their characteristic associated transaction. This will help you to monitor in days 115 compliances. So how many contracts did you enter? Is it really a contract as per 115 or not to put that parameters? In addition to above, what you can do? You can use OCR technology. Achha, OCR, yeah, that is character recognition. Wala. Optical character recognition. The contracts which are there, okay, it's there in a scan form, PDF form. So from that, from that, based on OCR technology, the contract start date, contract end date, party name, uska PAN number, Aadhaar number, that all can be automatically fetched. That all can be automatically fetched. So to extract relevant information automatically. Apply machine learning. Is can there up AI use karo to analyze and extract the content of basically this. So OCR will read. Usme se kya capture karna hai? OCR is going to read it. Capture kya karna hai? That is basically you need machine learning. Machine learning or you can say there's one more programming, Neuro Linguistic Programming, NLP. Sir, how does that NLP work? It's a kind of AI only. So you can use basically machine or Neuro Linguistic Programming basically to extract the contract data whichever you want and utilize this workflow automation to streamline the contract identification process. The established predefined rules which are there to understand whether it's a new contract or a same contract that can be done did you understood the contract management system you put it so that each contract will be having a unique kind of the identifier Achha, which all details basically will be relevant for that you understand the detail sir how do i extract the detail you have contract in physical form pdf form tk pdf mein hai. OCR you use it, the OCR will convert it into kind of the normal language and then 
then you can use machine and AI to extract the relevant data which you want. And now based on parameters, you decide whether it's a separate contract or an existing contract only. Any doubts? Anybody with this? Any doubts? Anybody with this? Okay, all questions are over. All questions are over. We are left with only one theory that's related to blockchain. We're left with only one theory related to blockchain. I'll just do one thing. I'm taking two minutes break. Okay, two minutes break we are taking and then we are starting with blockchain. I'll be back in two minutes. Okay, hi, welcome back. Chalo, let's go to the last topic that is blockchain. Let us go to the last topic that is blockchain. Now, sir, what do you mean by this word blockchain? The name only says, it's a chain of blocks. A one block, two block, three block, it's a chain. It started with one block, then two blocks happen, then three blocks happen. Ye blocks hai. Now, so block kya? Each block is a record. Each block is a record of transaction. All blocks together, record of all blocks, we call it as ledger. record of all blocks together is ledger okay now just tell me one thing a sold goods to b b sold goods to c c sold goods to d and so many times these goods have basically been sold so many times the goods have been sold now tell me a sold to b b sold to c c sold to d now question, whether D knows, whether D knows that this goods have came originally from A? A sold to B, B sold to C, C sold to D. Whether D knows that this goods have originally came from A? No. 
No, reason is D has purchased from C. So he knows only about C. Where did C purchase from? B. Where did B purchase from? That all is not known. So can I say D knows only about his transaction? Can I say D doesn't know about the previous transaction? But under blockchain system, under blockchain system, you will have a knowledge of all the previous transaction which happened over here. I repeat, under blockchain system, you will have a knowledge of all, all the previous transaction which happened over here. Now, instead of goods, I change it to money. So, A paid to B. A paid to B. So, this is recorded here. A to B, 100 rupees. Okay, then B paid to C. B paid to C. So now in second block, it is A to B tha plus now B to C ho gaya. Can I say yaha pe the record of previous is also there? Then C paid to D. So now it will be this block, the third block, new block which is added. It will have all things. A to B, B to C, C to D. Are you getting it? So, record of all previous transaction is maintained under blockchain. That's why it's called blockchain. Are you getting my point? This is one. Now, sir, iska use is. Iska use. Now, see what happened over here is, whenever this transaction happens, whenever C paid to D, so this block was created. Whenever C paid to D, this block was created. Yes, no? Now, details of this block goes to all parties. So, whenever C paid to D, the last block was created. And details of this goes to everybody. Everybody kon kon hai pe? Everybody kon kon hai pe? A, B, C and D all. So, whenever C has paid to D, the details of the block goes to everyone. Details of the block goes to everyone. Now, <clears throat> if someone, if someone tries to change the data, if someone tries to change the data, can I say data is not just with one person, data is with four different persons. So C paid to D, this block was created and this block is available with whom? Ye block kiske paas available hai? This block is available with A also, B also, C also, D also. A also, B also, C also, D also. So all four people are having this information. Now if someone tries to change the data, can I say others will say no, 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 this is not correct. No change has happened. So this is nothing but a decentralized system. So here data is available not with D. Data is available with A, B, C, D. That is basically what is happening under your blockchain. Under your blockchain, it's a decentralized thing. What it is? Decentralized thing. I'll recommend you go to YouTube. You go to YouTube, type blockchain over there and initial first two videos which comes now, first, second, third video. You try to watch that first two, three videos related to blockchain to understand it in a more better way. I'll try to explain here, but the thing is, if you see the videos, it becomes more clear over there. Okay, so blockchain ke under every transaction, every transaction happened, a new block created. Every transaction happened, a new block is created. So each block is a record of transaction and record of all block together. Record of all block together is nothing but a ledger. Okay? And whenever a new block is created, it also has the data about the previous block. So all the data is basically there. And now that data remains not just with last party, the data remains with all the party. If someone tries to change the data, if someone tries to change the data, it becomes very, very difficult. So can I say over here, more data security is there? Because you cannot change it easily. There are others who will stop you telling that no, 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 this change is not correct. So whenever someone tries to change any of the block in between, actually kya hota? when anybody is trying to change a block in between, the notification goes to all parties involved. Previous, whatever, till now. So till now, whichever parties were involved, sabko notification goes. And if someone says no, 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 this change is not valid, then we understand that someone is trying to hack the system. We understand that someone is trying to Hack the system. Did you understood? This is basically a blockchain. Okay, that's kind of a more secure environment, but the data is not centralized. 
data is decentralized available to everyone so all parties involved are having the data theek hai to check the theory written check the theory written <clears throat> see blockchain is a decentralized and transparent ledger did you understood the word decentralized data is available with a b c d all of them ledger means the record of all blocks that enables secure and immutable transaction immutable means which cannot be altered so later people cannot alter it because if someone tries to alter it it's not just with one person it's with four person so can i say i have to alter it all four places it cannot be at one and if you try to alter others will say no 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 this change is not valid so unlike traditional centralized system ye decentralized hai this is not centralized this decentralized unlike traditional centralized system blockchain offers a distributed network where the in where the information is shared and verified by multiple participants so if someone tries to change others ke paas notification will go they have to approve whether the change is fine or not if they say no this change is not fine change cannot be made change cannot be made this will enhance the data integrity this will enhance the data integrity acha there is one more thing written word the eliminating the need for intermediary what is this eliminating the need for intermediary i give another example for it eliminating the need for intermediary okay imagine a is in india and he wants to send money to b who is in us how do you send money can i say i have to give it to a bank in between ye indian bank hogi i give inr to him Indian bank will give it to US wali bank India wants it for US and US bank will give it to this guy so i give him inr inr will basically be converted into US dollar that goes to US bank US bank to Mr B so can i say this banks are involved in between and that inr to us conversion will happen and banks don't work for free can i say they will have commission or charges in between they will have commission or charges in between this is how things were working but now if a wants to make payment to b rather than giving we give inr to bank a matlab india and then basically they give it to us wala bank wo dollar mein convert hua and then the dollar goes basically to whom mr b uski jagah imagine a blockchain wala system blockchain does not involve this intermediaries in between cryptocurrency cryptocurrency is based on blockchain cryptocurrency is based on blockchain to so imagine a bitcoin to so a can directly give bitcoin to b a can directly give bitcoin to b no conversion comes in between no bank comes in between ye koi nahi aayega beech mein and now when when a transfers bitcoin to b when a transfers bitcoin to b to can i say a transaction happened a transaction happened to yahan pe ek block will be created transaction happened a new block will be created it will add this transaction along with the previous transaction previous transaction ke sath ye transaction add ho jayega are you getting my point इंटरमीडियरीज तो इंटरमीडियरीज बैंक विच एवर आर देर दे गो अवे ओवर हियर एंड यहां पे द चार्जेस विच विल बी लेविड आर वेरी 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 लेस कंपेरेटिवली दिस बिकम्स अ इजियर फॉर्म ऑफ पेमेंट एंड इट्स मोर सिक्योर वाई सर इट्स मोर सिक्योर द ट्रांजेक्शन इज नाउ डिसेंट्रलाइज नोन टू एवरी वन दट ए ट्रांसफर टू बी दिस मच मनी इट्स अवेलेबल टू ऑल पीपल विच आर देर इन द ब्लॉक All people basically which were involved, सब को ये मालूम होगा लेटर ऑन इफ समन ट्राइज टू मॉडिफाई इट अदर्स कैन रिजेक्ट इट टेलिंग दैट दिस मॉडिफिकेशन इज नॉट प्रॉपर ओके 
So from a financial statement perspective, blockchain holds immense potential to streamline the processes, enhance transparency, improve the accuracy and reliability of financial reporting. Uh, this all is fine. Now what are the key impacts of blockchain on financial reporting? Enhance transparency. Why transparency? Because it's available to everyone. It's decentralized. So transparent ho gaya. So everybody knows about transaction. So blockchain provides a decentralized immutable ledger where transactions are recorded in a temper-proof way and it's available to everyone. Yeah. The transaction is available to all parties which have been all parties which have been covered till now. So everybody, A, B, C, D, everybody will know about it. Okay. Data integrity is better data integrity is better preventing unauthorized modification or tempering it's a distributed ledger distributed is decentralized you word than a decentralized immutable which cannot be altered such kind of ledger ledger kya the record of all transaction together okay now streamlined audit process sir why streamlined audit process so we don't need intermediaries in between and directly the data or information is available every time a transaction takes place. Every time that Bitcoin, that Bitcoin is transferred A to B, B to C, C to D, everybody will know about the transaction. Okay. So it enables real-time access to financial data. Auditors can directly access the blockchain ledger to verify the transaction, reducing audit time and increasing the efficiency. Okay, enhance security. See, every time when a new block is created, oh, extra security feature is added. They call it as hash. Yeah, so whenever basically a new block is added, extra security feature, a new hash is basically added and that will also contain previous hash also amount. So whenever someone tries to change the block, Hash gets changed. If the hash gets changed, all the subsequent block may subjugate changes will come. So it becomes very difficult to change it. The so blockchain incorporates an advanced cryptographic algorithm, which is highly secure against the unauthorized access or data breaches. Simplified reconciliation. Simplified reconciliation, single shared source of truth, single shared, everybody knows about it. The last may it will not be like this transaction took place or not took place. See, reconciliation comes when I recorded, you did not record. I recorded a sales, you did not record a purchase, balances will not match, reconciliation will come in. But here, all transactions are properly recorded only, there won't be any issue coming up. Uh, or else if you have not recorded it, it will be able will be able to get it. So blockchain in simple words is having record of all transaction from origin till its end. So this is when it started. A is B, B is C, C is D and now everybody knows about it. Okay, why there is a cost reduction? Eliminating the intermediaries. Enhanced audit trail. Audit trail available and real time financial information available. So, these are basically the benefits of blockchain. Tick blockchain is important entire. Tick blockchain is important entire one. And last is examples using blockchain. How can I use a blockchain? I tell you. Uh, say, for example, Walmart. sells vegetables to customer. Ab hua kya, you know? Okay, from farm, from farm, it came to distributor. From distributor, It came to Walmart main go down. 
ओके फ्रॉम वॉलमार्ट मेन गो डाउन इट केम टू वॉलमार्ट का स्टोर and then from there it got delivered to customer now suppose customer has got a defective product chalo sells vegetable ki jagah vegetable or product anything now suppose customer has got a defective product customer is complaining Customer has got a defective product. Customer is complaining. Now Walmart is not able to understand the product got defective when. कहाँ पे defective हो गया? Was it defective from beginning only? Was it got damaged during distributor or go down pay या go down to store or store to customer? They were not able to understand. So what did Walmart do? They started applying a blockchain technique. So whenever it was at farm, inspection was done. Whenever it was at farm, inspection was done and a block was created, it is fine. Whenever it came to distributor, again it was inspection done, block was created, farm pay tick, distribution के time पे tick हाँ, it's fine. When it came to go down, again a new block was created. हाँ, farm pay it was fine, distributor पे fine, go down पे yes it's correct. And now when it reached store, again a new block created, यहाँ पे it's telling defective. तो I understand the defect happened at the store. तो what is happening is Every place it was checked and वहां पे tick होता जाता था Farm पे yes, defective, not defective, not defective. Distributor के पास defective, not defective, not defective. Go down पे defective, not defective, not defective. Store पे oh, it became defective. I understand the thing, problem happened here. या तो from transiting from go down to store or lying at store. तो क्या ऐसे block chain हो गया? You are maintaining record from initial to end. ये block chain है, simple. तो check out what is given over here so what are the examples using blockchain imagine a finance professional working for a multinational corporation and there were complex supply chain operation ah, similar walmart example same walmart example which i gave you with blockchain they can create a decentralized ledger with every step of supply chain process every step of supply chain process now suppose the goods were damaged in store the goods were damaged in store but if suppose the store guy wants to alter it and say a go down pay damage tha store guy wants to alter the records and he's telling no 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 mere paas damage nahi hua go down pay earlier only it was damaged so can i say this go down people farm people all everybody will be knowing everything I told you now, whenever any new block is added, the data goes to everybody who was involved. So can I say others will say no, 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 no? It was not damaged at that time. It was damaged at store only. That's why we call it as immutable. You cannot alter that data. It is decentralized, available to everyone. So from raw material sourcing to final delivery. This is the same as Walmart example. which i gave it's not walmart it's walmart okay consider a finance professional responsible for conducting audit of large e-commerce platform audit involved reviewing numerous financial transaction blockchain ke saath you can basically automate the records and timestamp. Okay, this time we check this. The next block is created. Ye time pe ye tha, ye naya ye check hua. So that way it can be done. So this is another example. Third one is fine, not much relevant. Actually, first example is easier to understand the blockchain. The simple word under blockchain, is it a centralized data or a decentralized data? Any transaction happened, the information will go to everyone which was involved till now. 
it goes to everyone which was involved till now another blockchain which is basically being implemented is you know uh, this land records the land records which government is maintaining they will implement the blockchain because the land record starting say first this guy sold to this then this guy to this then this guy to this this guy to this the wape blockchain system will be implemented and later if anybody tries to alter the record everybody involved everybody involved will get a notification automatically they'll say no 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 this is wrong so automatically we understand someone is trying to hack the data did you understood the word blockchain still i'll recommend you go and see one or two videos on youtube it will become much more clearer to you uh, we don't have much over here it's just a one one and a half page theory which was given that theory we have covered it but when you're writing answer the answer may the word decentralized transport transparent ledger immutable that all wording has to come in your answers if that answers may wordings are missing definitely you will be losing certain marks done that's all for our syllabus we are done with all the chapters of fr mcq i told you i'll be taking a separate session on it later on once ici comes out something related to mcq so till now they've not given any mcqs in material they've not given a separate booklet on mcqs once ici comes out something related to mcqs i'll be taking a separate session on mcqs now sir what we need to study for examination purpose should we study only the class material or do we need to do anything else kya kya cover karna hai okay for exam purpose what all you need to do refer number 1 is class material always first is class material uh, we have tried to cover all icai questions the past rtp suggested answers everything is tried to be covered in this as such this is the most important plus you are required to do last 3 rtps sir you have covered rtps now yeah i have covered rtps but still see we covered rtp say for example till november 23 or may 23 over here your exam is coming in later say november 24 you are writing or may 25 you are writing so baad mein there are few rtps which would have came up so refer always last three rtps even though they are covered in material still you refer it reason you will be able to understand how icai is writing answers the last three rtps are to be covered last three past year papers are to be covered so class material you cover last three rtps you cover last three past year papers you are required to cover and fourth if time permits go through questions in ici material you will find all are covered but still you just go through the questions in ici material for your satisfaction you will feel oh i have done ici material otherwise entirely it's covered in our material only but ab just ek bar go through kar lo is there any new question left out see if there is any new question if there is a new type of question then you solve it or then you do it otherwise just go through it upar upar se dekh lo ha this question covered ha this question covered ha this question covered so try to see all question of ici material are covered or not if you find any new question then you do that question this is what you need to do for exam purpose and you need to write two mock tests i'm telling you if at all you're not writing mock test you're directly going and writing an examination day you will not be able to complete your papers seriously i'm telling you you will not be able to complete your paper sir did you wrote mock test yes i've written two mock test in my ca final for each and every subject and i tell you first time when i wrote the mock test i was able to complete 80 to 85 marks of paper imagine 80 85 marks only you are writing in all the subjects so eight subjects into 10 15 marks 100 marks as not able to attend only second mock test i wrote i increase my speed and third time i'm writing in the final examination and final examination is able to complete almost all of my paper one or two paper five mark was left out just one or two paper the five mark got left out otherwise i was able to complete it but imagine i have not written mock test directly going writing in ici 
every paper 10 15 marks would have been skipped 100 marks i would not have written only so please make sure you write down two mock tests of each and every subject not just fr each and every subject that's advisable now i was telling you about my journey in ca yesterday i told you about my foundation level i said don't do something permanently foolish if you are temporarily upset second i told you in the company of wind even a dust achieves a great height you need to have friends who are motivating you pushing you to move to a next level third i told you your books might be incomplete your concepts can never be incomplete and fourth i told you it needs just one push it needs just one push to make you reach to a next level now inter came i prepared very well again for inter every 15 days i was going home remember i told you in foundation every week i was going home now 15 days I used to go home so every 15 days my class used to be missed but before sitting in the next class i used i would have learned it from my friends last two and a half months or two months basically the coaching were completed and that was the time i studied very properly now you need a discipline i repeat you need a discipline in your studies discipline is regarding the timings your wake up time your sleep time your study time your break time everything has to be fixed yeah, I'm telling you, your wake up time, your study time, your break time, your sleep time, try to have it fixed. I'm not telling whether you should study in morning or whether you should study at night. It's up to you. There are few people who like to study early morning. There are few people who like to study late night. Whatever you're comfortable, do what is comfortable to you, but have a fixed timing. It should not be like today I wake up at 6 o'clock, tomorrow I wake up at 10 o'clock, third day I wake up at 8 o'clock, 9, 9, 9, 9. Have a fixed timing. For me, I'm an early riser. I used to wake up at 4 o'clock. I repeat, I used to wake up at 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock, I wake up, 2 and a half, 3 hours I study, 1 hour break. Again, 2 and a half, 3 hours I study, 1 hour break. Again, 2 and a half, 3 hours I study, 1 hour break. Again, 2 and a half, 3 hours I study, 1 hour break. So, 4 times in a day, I can study four and 2 and a half to 3 hours and then I take 1 hour ka break. The break was taken so that now I become a bit fresh. Again, 2 and a half, 3 hours you study, 1 hour break. So, see, almost 10 to 12 hours a day, you can have an effective reading. And this is for the last four months or five months of your CA final. So, fixed timing is what is required. Reason, after a week or 10 days, it becomes your habit. And when something becomes your habit, now it's not painful. Yeah. Every day getting up in the morning, doing brush, is it painful? No. Because now it becomes a habit. So, you just need to ensure that your discipline becomes your habit so that it's not painful when you are studying. 10-12 hours a day will never be painful if you are taking proper breaks in between. So, have discipline with regards to your studies. That's one thing. Second thing, when I was basically in my inter, my costing of a paper didn't go well. Yeah, And it didn't go well because I did not have my food during examination days. I used to stay in a hostel and... I did not took my food and we did not add holidays in between, you know. When we were in intermediate, there were consecutive exams. It was not one day break in between. So, costing of a paper was the fourth paper. Since last four days, I did not have my food properly. Lunch, I used to avoid because after eating, I feel sleepy. I don't want to feel sleepy in exam. And dinner, I avoided because next day there is exam, I need to study. So, I did not have my food properly and because of that, on the fourth day, whenever that costing of a paper was there, I felt a bit of dizziness, I was not able to write the paper, all that things. I realized one thing, it's very, very important to have a proper diet. A healthy body does wonders on your sick mind. I know during exam time, your mind is sick, you are preparing a lot, but healthy body comes to your rescue. So, make sure you have a proper diet during that last four months, five months you are studying. A lot of fruits, a lot of salads. Avoid heavy food. Buffet to khana hai nahi hai. Don't go anywhere there's a buffet. Because you'll feel sleepy after eating. And uh, during examination time, if you have a habit like me, if you eat more, you feel sleepy, eat less food. It's okay. So less food, more number of time you do it, that is what is required. I skipped my meals in intermediate. I paid a penalty for it, but I didn't do the same mistake in my CA final. And you won't believe, after my costing of a paper, I was almost on the verge of quitting examination. But somehow, my faculty members, yeah, then my friends, my parents, everybody pushed me and I wrote the examination. And fortunately, I cracked all the papers in my CA intermediate and I got All India 22nd rank. 
the paper which didn't go well i had the lowest out of all yeah paper which didn't go well definitely the lowest out of all but other papers went well imagine this paper of yours doesn't go well and next two papers you are able to get an exemption this is what is required gone is gone you cannot change it what is there in your hand is the remaining papers try to make that remaining papers the best one I repeat gone is gone you cannot change it what is there in your hand is the remaining papers try to make the remaining papers the best one and don't skip your exams in between see if you skip it right now pakka fail ho but if you write at least there is 1% 2% 5% probability you may pass out and by skipping you are not going to do anything in next 5 7 10 days now exams will come after 6 months you are anyways going to waste that 10 days only so better is write down examination never ever skip your exams so i learned importance of discipline i learned importance of leaving the thing which has gone and focusing on the things which are there with you now final examination ah final examination the first paper fr again in fr it started with a sum on consolidation one hour gone my balance sheet didn't tally uh, one hour gone the balance sheet didn't tally so i i understand it's not necessary to start with question number 1 start with the question which you know best so i started with a 20 mark question which was basically on consolidation my balance sheet didn't tally and then the sweating starts even though it's winter november tha still sweating will come to so ensure that you start with the question which you know best and i personally prefer i personally prefer start with small small question rather than a very big question because a very big question you start it takes a lot of time balance sheet doesn't tally then the problem comes up so you can start with a question whichever you like but whenever you start with say question number 3 to so a b c d of question 3 are to be covered together a b c d of question number 3 are to be covered together you cannot have question number 3 b then 4 c then again 3 a then 4 d as a mix up nahi chalega if you start with question 3 finish question 3 then move on to the next one theek hai to one thing i realized importance of choosing the questions the way you should choose the question second my first paper didn't go up to my expectation but my remaining papers were not affected so again gone is gone you cannot change it focus on the things which are there in your hand third thing there are outside forces there to help you remember in my inter paper paper didn't go well skipping exam was the thought there are outside forces there to help you but suppose by chance outside forces doesn't come to help you need to help yourself that is the time you need to help yourself to so just maintain discipline give your best whatever is possible from your side make sure you write down all the examinations two mock tests you have written good writing practice you had and then you are writing your exams nobody can stop you from cracking both the groups of final in first attempt for me my goal was to get all india rank and i got all india rank at all the levels just that one push in foundation ek baar that foundation foundation mein never expected a rank only never thought of a rank in my life but that one push led me to get a rank in the next two levels as well So just remember the small small things again i tell you right from number 1 don't do something temp- permanently foolish if you are temporarily upset in the company of wind even a dust achieves a great height number 3 know your limitation i told you i cannot study alone so i was there in a hostel studying with a friend seeing them i studied well number 4 basically it just needs one push to make you reach to a next level number 5 the importance of discipline success is nothing but small small disciplines which are practiced every day so have discipline in your work that's number 6 number 7 gone is gone you cannot change it focus on the things which are there in your hand number 8 there are outside forces there to help you but suppose by chance outside forces are not there you need to believe in yourself and move ahead Number 9 you can choose the question which you want not necessary you should start with question number 1 but if you starting with question 3 make sure all a b c d are covered together and the last one have some writing practice before you appear for your final examination one or two mock test are must if you have written it there won't be any problem to you i hope you all enjoyed our session we have covered everything in depth any time any doubts if you have I repeat any time any doubts if you are having we already have our telegram channel 
तो वन वी हैव अ टेलीग्राम चैनल सेकेंड वी हैव अ टेलीग्राम डिस्कशन ग्रुप ओके अब चैनल इज वन वे डिस्कशन ग्रुप इज टू वे तो प्लीज मेक श्योर यूर सब्सक्राइब टू बोथ ऑफ इट यू कैन जस्ट टाइप सी ए निकेत ठक्कर इन टेलीग्राम यूल गेट बोथ अब टाइप करना सी ए निकेत ठक्कर यूल बी एबल टू एक्सेस द टेलीग्राम चैनल एज वेल एज डिस्कशन ग्रुप अच्छा बाय चांस बाय चांस द आंसर डजेंट कम इन द डिस्कशन ग्रुप तो वॉट टू डू यू कैन डायरेक्टली डी एम मी Yeah. In case the reply doesn't come up, you can directly DM to me your doubt on this number. But first, please put up your doubt on discussion group. If everybody starts to DM me only, I won't be able to reply everyone. Ah, uh, so put it in the discussion group. Me plus your friends are also there. They will also help you out. And in case you are not able to get the solution there, time chala gaya and now you are basically getting bit late, then you can directly DM me on this number double nine seven four double two nine eight double zero. I really enjoy teaching all of you. I say in a live batches, whenever are there, there's some interaction happening. It's always better rather than just the recorded ones. So live online, and later those people who are not there, they also they also can get the uh, interactions which was already done with the students, and they also are able to understand what doubt the students had. So all the best to all of you. come out with flying colors we are starting with the auditing batch from 1st of december any time any help of mine is required i'm always available love you all take care and any queries you have please put it right now okay shravani says so thank you so much for all the thoughts and daily motivation it did help a lot to cope up with the class thank you shravani Nikita says so thank you so much for such good classes and daily motivation to keep us on track and focused so thank you i'll try to have a daily motivation sentence coming up on our telegram channel also so i'm thinking to start that daily motivation on our telegram channel so that daily you see something or listen something you get pumped up and you are basically moving ahead towards your goal thank you vishnu thank you aisha thank you ahmed anything if you want to ask please ask it bye bye shravani Uh, Shravani says, "Sir, thank you for your daily motivation. Already subscribed for your audit class. What I in took from you is your discipline. Uh, see, this is what I believe. I feel that if you respect time, time will respect you. Yeah, if you respect time, time will respect you. Though you might have seen our lectures were almost started on time. They were completed on time. A few days where it was kind of Diwali, I left bit earlier." Now starting me generally, I ensure that it's never getting late. Better is otherwise. If I should have said that six thirty near time is only six forty five. So if you are telling six thirty, it has to be six thirty. So just make sure you instill discipline in yourself. Again, telling you success is nothing but small small disciplines which are practiced every day, and failure is nothing but small small mistakes which are repeated every day. So don't repeat the mistakes. Bye bye. Anybody wants to ask anything else? Okay, chalo. All the best for your examination. See you soon. MCQs. Whenever ICI comes out with, I'll also come out with a separate session on MCQs. Acha. And in your 
लेक्चर्स वेर यू आर हैविंग आई पुट अप द आर टी पी सेशन एज वेल या तो इन योर लेक्चर्स द लिस्ट विच यू आर हैविंग राइट नाउ द सेम एप मे द आर टी पी सेशन विल ऑल्सो बी अवेलेबल यू नीड टू वॉच आर टी पीज फ्रॉम आई रिपीट नवम्बर ट्वेंटी थ्री ऑनवर्ड्स नवंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री ऑनवर्ड्स ऑल आर टी पीज यू नीड टू कवर तो मेक श्योर यू आर कवरिंग ऑल द आर टी पीज बेटर यू कवर इट फ्रॉम मे ट्वेंटी थ्री ओनली तो मे ट्वेंटी थ्री ऑनवर्ड्स ऑल आर टी पी शुड बी कवर्ड बाई यू आई एल पुट अप द आर टी पी सेशन ऑल्सो इन द लेक्चर्स इट सेल्फ चलो सी यू ऑल बब्बाई टाटा टेक केयर एंड ऑल द बेस्ट एंड लेट्स होप इंडिया विंस टूडे okay nikita has a question can we refer the mtps of old syllabus if you want you can refer it otherwise it's not necessary mtp nahi karoge chalega rtp should be done mtps if you are not doing it's okay but rtps has to be done Our mtps also if you want you can do the last three mtps okay nikita चलो एंजॉय द मैच टुडे एंड सी यू सून बाय बाय टेक केयर इट्स अ लिस्टेड कंपनी विच फेज द कंपनी फॉल्स तो लेट्स कैलकुलेट द नेटवर्थ नेटवर्थ इज कैपिटल प्लस ऑल योर रिजर्व एक्सेप्ट रिवैल्यूएशन रिजर्व माइनस फिक्टिशियस एसेट तो शेयर कैपिटल Yes, securities premium. Yes, general reserve. Yes, revaluation reserve. No, P and L. Yes, and liabilities. No, this all minus the fictitious asset. To so do it, one sixty plus two hundred plus one fifty. It is one sixty plus two hundred plus one fifty plus seventy five minus eighty. Is it coming five zero five? ओके तो योर नेटवर्थ इज कमिंग फाइव ओ फाइव एज योर नेटवर्थ इज फाइव ओ फाइव कैन एस ए वन फोर सिक्सटीन ऑनवर्ड्स इट विल बी एप्लीकेबल अच्छा वुड यू आंसर चेंज इफ इट्स अनलिस्टेड वुड यू आंसर चेंज इफ इट्स अनलिस्टेड अनलिस्टेड मोर देन फाइव हंड्रेड क्रोर सेम वन फोर सिक्सटीन तो रिमेम्बर वन फोर सिक्सटीन लिस्टेड अनलिस्टेड नेटवर्थ फाइव हंड्रेड क्रोज और मोर ओके तो यहां पे लिस्टेड है तो 1416 ऑनवर्ड्स अनलिस्टेड आल्सो 1416 ऑनवर्ड्स एनी डाउट्स एंड दिस इज द डेटा ऑफ मार्च 14 तो मार्च 14 नेटवर्थ इज मोर देन 500 क्रोर्स लिस्टेड अनलिस्टेड बोथ में इट विल बी सेम अच्छा सेकंड थिंग अच्छा व्हाट इफ इन अबव इलस्ट्रेशन द पीएनएल बैलेंस इज नेगेटिव 375 ओके पीएनएल इज नेगेटिव 375 तो व्हाट आई विल डू 160 Plus two hundred. Plus general reserve is one fifty. Minus P N L three seventy five. P N L three seventy five minus and fictitious asset eighty minus. Can I say net worth is fifty five crores? If you're stuck up anywhere, stop me at the same time and please pay proper attention. Okay, so fifty five crores is it coming? Dear PNL negative, I have to deduct. While finding net worth, it will be deducted. So your net worth is coming fifty five crores. Equity share capital one sixty, security premium two hundred, general reserve is one fifty minus PNL debit is three seventy five. Miscellaneous expenditure not written of eighty. Okay, so it's only fifty five crores. It doesn't fall only. सच नहीं बेटा लिस्टेड है तो कहने से वन फोर सेवनटीन ऑल लिस्टेड आर कवर्ड तो फिर इट्स अ लिस्टेड कंपनी वन फोर सेवनटीन ऑनवर्ड ऑल लिस्टेड कवर्ड अनलिस्टेड है इट विल नॉट बी एप्लीकेबल अनलिस्टेड फिफ्टी फाइव करोड नेटवर्थ विल नॉट बी एप्लीकेबल आर यू क्लियर इफ इट्स अ लिस्टेड वन वन फोर सेवनटीन ऑनवर्ड ऑल लिस्टेड कवर्ड अनलिस्टेड फिफ्टी फाइव करोड नेटवर्थ विल नेवर बी कवर्ड NBFC, whose parent or subsidiary associate JV is a NBFC. अच्छा, non-finance company, whose parent, subsidiary, associate JV is a NBFC. अब ये क्या है? Pay attention. 
a limited nbfc they have a subsidiary b limited or a limited non finance company they have a subsidiary b limited which is nbfc okay now the problem is the problem is nbfc the india starts from 1418 for nbfc it starts from 1418 and for normal company guys it starts from 1416 normal company it was 1416 1417 for nbfc it was 1418 and 1419 are you clear okay now imagine b imagine b b limited b limited the india is applied to b limited the india is applied to whom b limited so whether india will also apply to a For B limited, it applies from 1416. For B limited, it applies from 1416. Whether India's will also apply to A from 1416? Did you got the question? Or to A, it will come from 1418. That is one. India's is applied to B from 1416. So if it applies to you, it applies to your parent, your subsidiary, your associate, your JV. Your parent A limited, so whether they have to follow from 1416 or they have to follow from 1418. This is one question. Now, second, yeah, uh, India supplies to A limited non finance company one from 16. So, to A limited, here it applies from 1416. Now, B is your subsidiary, but it's an NBFC. So whether B will also apply from 1416 onwards. Whether B will also apply from 1416 onwards. Okay, for SFS purpose, B will apply from 1418. For SFS purpose, B will apply from 1418. But can I say while preparing CFS, while preparing CFS, B's figures will be merged with A? So, for the purpose of CFS, B has to give figures to A which will be as per India's. Okay, so for SFS purpose, B. For SFS purpose, B will follow India's from 1418 onwards. But for the purpose of CFS, they have to give data to A limited. That has to be as per India's. So, can I say from 1416 to 1418, they have to maintain dual set of books. SFS will be normal AS, but for the consolidation purpose, I have to give data as per NDS. Okay, now check this theory. The so same thing written in theory. Okay, where NBFC is a parent. Okay, NBFC is a parent is this one, the first one, A limited to B limited. Okay, this is A limited is NBFC. B limited is non finance company. Okay. Uh, now tell me. Now tell me if India applies to B, if India applies to B, 
NDS will apply to A limited from 1, 4, 18 only. NDS will apply to A from 1, 4, 18, not from 1, 4, 16. So, NDS will apply to A limited from 1, 4, 18 only. Okay, so my question, 1, 4, 16, 1, 4, 17. 1, 4, 16, 1, 4, 17. Can I say NBFC who is a parent? They are following AS? Yes, no. Yes, no. NBFC who is a parent, they are following AS. 1, 4, 16, 1, 4, 17, they are following AS. 18 onwards, they will follow NDS. Now, the thing is, subsidiary is following NDS from 16 only. Parent is following from 18. So now 16 and 17 parent are preparing CFS, parent will need data from subsidiary which has to be as per AS. The parent will need data from subsidiary which has to be as per AS, the subsidiary. What happens, subsidiary will prepare as per NDS from 1 for 16 only, but for 16 and 17 they have to give data to parent. They have to give data to parent who is following AS, so they have to give data to parent as per AS. The subsidiary has to maintain dual set of books for two years. Did you got it? Subsidiary has to follow dual set of books for two years. So check over here. Such subsidiary associate joint venture shall prepare financial as per NDS for SFS purpose if it is covered in roadmap. However, can I say parent will be covered from 18 onwards? So, such subsidiary associate JV has to provide the relevant financial data in accordance with accounting policy followed by the parent for consolidation purpose. The simple words from 1, 4, 16 to 31st March 17, the subsidiary has to maintain a dual set of books which will be as per AS as well as in days. I just put a star and I write down from 1 4 16 to 31st March 17, nay, 18. Such not. Finance company which is subsidiary associate or JV of NBFC will have to provide figures to NBFC parent. as per AS for purpose of CFS. Are you clear? Okay, next one, your parent is <coughs> non-finance company. Your parent is non-finance company. This is basically your A limited non-finance. And B limited is NBFC. So can I say B will start following NDS 1418 onwards? B will start following NDS 1418 onwards, but from 1416 to March 18, they have to give figures to A limited for CFS. Okay, I will start following from 1418, but I have to give figures to my parent for the purpose of CFS. For that two years, I will have to give figure as per NDS only. See, I have to give figure to parent based on policy what parent follows. We have to give figures to parent based on policy which parent follows. So, NBFC subsidiary associate JV has to provide relevant data in accordance with the policy followed by parent for consolidation purpose. 
I put here two stars. I put here two stars and I write down below. From 1 4 16 to 31st March 18. Such NBFC, which is subsidiary associate or JV of non finance company, will have to provide figures. to non-finance company parent non-finance parent company as per indias for purpose of consolidation for purpose of cfs did you got it did you got it if parent is nbfc if parent is nbfc subsidiary started following earlier parent will follow later so two years when parent was following as subsidiary might be following in days but for cfs purpose subsidiary has to give data as per as for two years that subsidiary will have to give data as per as okay if nbfc is a subsidiary if nbfc is a subsidiary parent has started following in days i'll follow later Okay, so for that two years, I will have to give data as per NDAs for the purpose of consolidation. In simple words, whatever your parent is following, based on that, the data has to be given by you. If you are following a different one, you have to maintain a dual set of books of accounts. Any doubts? This question is very important. This point is very, very important. Please make sure whatever I have written at top and bottom, you are writing it. Whatever I have written at top and bottom, you please write it down. Ten more minutes, this will be over. Uh, Aishat, this PDF cannot be shared because it's not in PDF. The marking I'm doing is not in PDF. The marking I'm doing is basically in uh, OneNote. OneNote, see, you cannot share this file. So, I have given you the PDF. Basically, in our uh, Telegram channel, I shared you the link. You can just download and you can highlight it. Together, that's again one of the options which you are having. Okay, uh, Mohan has a question, sir. If a company gets converted into LLP, if company gets converted into LLP, when it was a company, it was India's suppose applicable. Now it becomes LLP. Whether India's will be applicable? Answer is no. See, once applicable, lifetime applicable means if it remains as a company, it's lifetime applicable. If you become a LLP, then it's no longer applicable. Are you clear? And it's very rare, like such a big company getting converted into LLP. Such a big company. Clear, Mohan? Okay, now check question number 15. Uh, it's based on this topic which we just discussed. X is a non-finance company. It's a subsidiary of Y NBFC. Okay, so Y NBFC and X non-finance company. So Y 
and below it is x y limited is nbfc and x limited is can i say non-finance okay then now from 1418 1416 to march 18 1416 to march 18 uh, x is basically having nds but uh, y doesn't have nds x is having nds y doesn't have nds so 1416 to march 18 x has to give data to y as per as okay the check out over here y is unlisted nbfc net worth 400 crore y is unlisted nbfc net worth 400 crore okay 400 crore is 1419 so company y shall apply in days 1419 onwards what shall be the date of applicability of this and subsidiary also uh, if it's applicable to you subsidiary will also follow from that date only uh, achha, if india's applicability date for parent nbfc is different from applicability date of subsidiary what to do if if the dates are different so what do we do so company x will have india's from 17 18 However, for the purpose of consolidation, that company X will give data to company Y, which will be based on AS. The two years, company X, this one, non-finance. They have to give data to parent. Parent follows AS, so they will be giving data to parent as per AS. They will also prepare. It's individual financial statement as per AS. This is for the purpose of consolidation. For the purpose of giving figures to Y limited for consolidation. Are you clear with this question? Are you clear with this question? It's important. The NBFC net worth 400 crore, it's 1419 onwards. 1419 to you, your subsidiary also gets covered from 1419. If subsidiary was covered earlier, if subsidiary was already covered earlier, they have started following NDS. But uh, for that two years, they will be giving me data for CFS, which will be as per AS. Okay, now going to the next concept going to the next concept this is a new concept which has been added in the new ici material the old ici material this concept was not there yeah it's a new concept which has been added let's check it loss of control of subsidiary in two or more arrangements okay there's a loss there's a loss of control but in two or more arrangements two or more arrangements or you also call it as two or more transaction Imagine out of 80%, you sold 30%, again you sold 30%. Out of 80, you sold 30 and then you again sold 30, total 60 sold off. Can I say now control gone? Or out of 80%, you sold 25 and then 30. Uh, you sold 25 and then 30, total 55 sold. Out of 80, 55 sold off, control gone. But can I say it's in true or more arrangements? Okay, then a question arises. The question arises imagine no need to write no need to write just pay attention out of 80 first you sold 25 then you sold 30 two different transaction so should it be treated as a single transaction question arises should this two separate sale transaction should it be treated as a sim single transaction or should i account for the first 25 percent separate Okay, the out of 80, you sold 25. Out of 80, you sold 25. Can I say control was there? Control is still there. Out of 80, 25 gone, it's 55. So control was there, control is there. So can I say this has to be accounted like? So this has to be accounted like change in proportion of NCI. 
है ना वेन दिस थर्टी इज सोल्ड नाउ कंट्रोल गॉस तो शुड आई रिकोगनाइज दिस ट्वेंटी फाइव सेल सेपरेटली एंड दिस थर्टी सेल सेपरेटली इफ आई डू लाइक दिस द प्रॉब्लम इज वेन एवर यू सोल्ड ट्वेंटी फाइव कंट्रोल इज नॉट गॉन वेन यू सोल्ड ट्वेंटी फाइव कंट्रोल इज नॉट गॉन इट्स अ चेंज इन प्रपोर्शन ऑफ एनसीआई द डिफरेंस गोज इन अदर इक्विटी याद है इट्स अ चेंज इन प्रपोर्शन ऑफ एनसीआई डिफरेंस गोज इन अदर इक्विटी है ना एंड वेन यू आर सेलिंग दिस थर्टी परसेंट दिस विल गो इन योर पी एन एल तो फर्स्ट पार्ट इज गोइंग इन अदर इक्विटी द सेकेंड पार्ट इज गोइंग इन योर पी एन एल दैट इज हैपनिंग दे आर टेलिंग वॉट आर दे टेलिंग इफ इफ दिस टू ट्रांजेक्शन ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट सोल्ड एंड थर्टी परसेंट सोल्ड इफ दे आर नेगोशिएटेड टूगेदर प्राइज ऑफ वन वॉज डिपेंडेंट ऑन प्राइज ऑफ अनदर इन सब्सटेंस इट इज वन ट्रांजेक्शन If they were negotiated together, or price of one was dependent on the price of other, so then in that case I can say in substance it's a single transaction. So account it like a single transaction. So don't account twenty five and thirty separately. So on twenty five percent sold, you say it is change in proportion of NCI difference goes in other equity, and then when thirty percent sold, then you say it is a loss of control. It goes in P and L. So you need to go by the substance. That is what they are telling. So check, check. A parent might lose control in two or more transaction. However, sometimes the circumstances indicate that it should be accounted as a single transaction. The circumstances indicate. However. now which are that circumstances which indicate it should be accounted as single transaction come to the next page one or more of the following indicate one or more of the following indicate that parent should account for the multiple arrangement as a single transaction okay they are entered in the same time or in contemplation of each other they are entered in at the same time or in contemplation of each other okay they form single transaction designed to achieve the overall commercial aspect one arrangement is dependent on another one arrangement is dependent on other arrangement one arrangement considered on its own is not economically justified unless the other one is considered the so first may you are selling shares at a very higher rate because subsequently i'll sell you share at a lower rate so can i say one is not commercially justifiable unless the second one is there the so disposal of share is below the market price is compensated by a subsequent disposal so they have given you some indicators they are entered at same time or in contemplation of each other they form a part of a single transaction designed to achieve the overall commercial aspect one transaction is dependent on other individually one is not economically justifiable because one may be are paying more second may be are paying less so these are some indicators ashat these are some indicators based on the substance you decide whether you should account it as a single transaction whether you should account it separately so it's up to you based on facts and circumstances you decide this are just kind of a indicator not mandatory they are indicating ऐसा कुछ है यू मे अकाउंट इट बेसिकली इंडिविजुअल बेसिकली एज अ सिंगल ट्रांजेक्शन आर यू क्लियर नेशर तो सर व्हाट इफ द डेट ऑफ सेल इज डिफरेंट फिनेंशियल ईयर ओके डेट ऑफ सेल इज डिफरेंट फिनेंशियल ईयर स्टिल इट डजेंट मैटर वन इज ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च अदर इज ऑन फर्स्ट अप्रिल वन इज ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च अदर इज ऑन फर्स्ट अप्रिल डिफरेंट फिनेंशियल ईयर वो भूल जाओ still accounting will be done as if it's a single transaction are you clear okay so accounting doesn't change accounting doesn't change the point is whether i should account it first transaction separately second transaction separately or should i account it as a kind of a single transaction the so accounting is same see if at all 80 minus 25 and minus 30 if i account it separately If I account it separately, so when I sold twenty five percent, it's a change in proportion of NCI. Difference will go in other equity. And when I sold thirty, at that time there's a loss of control that will go in PNL. 
But if I account as a single transaction, if I account as a single transaction, then it's directly a loss of control only. Everything goes in PNL. Clear? Okay, check question number 48. Check question number 48. MN is holding 80% in UV. Okay, you disposed of the entire stake in two different transactions. 25% for 250, 55% for 550. The first you sold 25%, 250. Then you sold 55% for 550. And in accordance with the guidance, it happened within a period of one month. So both transactions happened within a period of one month. The in accordance with guidance given, they have been accounted as a single transaction. Okay, they have been accounted as a single transaction. So don't say out of 80 first 25% sold. So control was there, control is still there. 80 may say 25 gone, 55. So don't account it like change in proportion of NCA. No, no, no. This are to be accounted as a single transaction clearly given. This are to be accounted as a single transaction clearly given. So just assume the total 80% sold for, total 80% sold for 8 lakh. The total 80% is sold for 8 lakh. The net assets and NCI on the date of both of transaction is 9 lakh and 180. Assume there is no change in earning between. Okay, the beach may koi earning me, there's no change. So net assets were 9 lakh, NCI is 180. So see, net asset goes away, NCI goes away. We got 8 lakh difference, this profit loss. So how will you account for this transaction? How will you account for this transaction? So recognize the money which you got 8 lakh. De-recognize the net asset 9 lakh and NCI basically 180. Your gain will be coming up is 80,000. NCI going away add. Net asset going away minus. NCI going away will be added. It's a credit balance going away. So NCI goes away, add. Net asset goes away, deduct. Goodwill capital is not given, ignored. Net asset goes away is deduct. Are you clear? Ah, so what we got? 8 lakh rupee. What we got? 8 lakh rupee. Bank debit. Okay, NCI goes away, the NCI debit added. Net asset goes away, net asset credit deduct. And the difference gone in your PNL. Difference is gone in your PNL. Now, if, if you lose control on the date of first transaction, it's accounted as, it's accounted as single transaction, but if you lose control on first transaction, so MN will stop consolidating from that date. And above gain will also be recorded on that date. So if you lose control on the date of first transaction, the gain 80,000 will be recorded on the date of first transaction. You will stop consolidating from that date. And as a second transaction, money receivable, show it as receivable. Consideration 550 related to second transaction, show it as receivable. Achha, if you lose control on transaction 2, if you lose control on the date of transaction 2, so you will record this gain of 80,000 on the date of transaction 2, you will stop consolidating from the date of transaction 2. And sir, pehle 250 mila, that will be treated as advanced consideration. The above gain is recognized on the date of transaction 2. You will stop consolidating from the date of transaction 2. And transaction 1 date, you got 250. That's treated as advanced consideration. Are you clear? Okay. They're just trying to tell you over here. The two transaction made, the disposal happened. 
बेस्ड ऑन सब्सटेंस दे माइट बी रिकॉग्नाइज और दे माइट बी अकाउंटेड एज इफ इट्स अ सिंगल ट्रांजेक्शन अदरवाइज वॉट हैपन्स आउट ऑफ एटी फर्स्ट ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट सोल्ड यू विल ट्रीट इट एज चेंज इन प्रपोर्शन ऑफ एन सी आई एंड देन वेन यू सोल्ड अनदर थर्टी परसेंट देन यू विल से इट इज अ लॉस ऑफ कंट्रोल तो वन गोज इन अदर इक्विटी अदर गोज इन पी एन एल नहीं नहीं तो इफ इट इज If the circumstances suggest it's a part of a single transaction, then in that case they are accounted like a single transaction. Okay, so total we received eight lakh rupee. Okay, the bank debit eight lakh. NCI goes away, NCI debit, net asset goes away, net asset credit difference went in your PNL. Now, if control went away, if control went away from the date of transaction one, then you will record this gain on the date of transaction one. and you will stop consolidating from the date of transaction 1 but on transaction 1 date you got 250 remaining 550 you'll show it as receivable so pc was 8 lakh matlab pc nahi but yahan pe we received 8 lakh 250 mil gaya remaining 550 receivable but if the control is gone on date of transaction 2 if the control is gone on which date date of transaction 2 then in that case then in that case what do you need to do So you will record this gain on the date of transaction two. You will stop consolidating from the date of transaction two. But sir, transaction one ka paisa two fifty I got earlier. The two fifty which you got earlier will be shown as advance consideration received. Now you are getting remaining five fifty. Any doubts? Anybody with this question? It's a bit different one. A new concept not there earlier. Market is important. Okay, eighth and ninth are new question which are added not there earlier. Eighth and ninth are new questions which have been added not there earlier. Both are important. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, come to question number eight. New question eighth and ninth. Okay, Mumbai Challengers Limited is the listed entity. is a sports organization owning cricket and hockey teams. Okay, the Mumbai Challengers Limited. Uh, they own cricket teams and hockey teams, and there are certain issues which are given. Your Royal Challengers and Mumbai Indians. Uska mix up kar diya. It's not Mumbai Indians Limited. It's Mumbai Challengers Limited. and they own several cricket teams and hockey teams owing to a proposed schedule of indian hockey league as well as a cricket premier tournament uh mumbai challengers limited need a new stadium acha mumbai challengers limited need a new stadium to host the sporting event the stadium will be a part of pp Mumbai Challengers Limited began construction of stadium. You started construction of stadium first December one, and this is December one. Complete hoga next year me. The construction was completed in next year, two three. This is one two, two three me it got completed. Acha cost. कॉस्ट क्या है रुपीज वन फोर्टी करोर यू स्पेंट इन डिसम्बर देन थ्री फिफ्टी करोर एवरी मंथ थ्री फिफ्टी करोर एवरी मंथ अच्छा तो डिसंबर यू स्टार्टेड कंस्ट्रक्शन इन डिसंबर यू स्पेंड वन फोर्टी करोर अच्छा देन जनवरी यू स्पेंड थ्री फिफ्टी करोर फेब्रुवरी फेंड थ्री फिफ्टी करोर मार्च यू स्पेंड थ्री फिफ्टी करोर ओके नॉट टेकन एनी स्पेसिफिक बोरोइंग यू डोंट है स्पेसिफिक बोरोइंग But uh, you have a regular OD. Oh, so can I say general borrowing is there? Okay, which were avoidable if the stadium was not constructed. So stadium nahi kia hota. So then OD also would not have been required. Okay, so this is basically a OD. It's not a specific borrowing, but still, the thing is because of that. There is a money which is used for construction of stadium. So whatever money is used for construction of stadium, on that interest can be capitalized. And a weighted average cost of borrowing. 
weighted average cost of borrowing already given for this December to March period is 15% per annum on an annualized basis. They are asking treatment of borrowing cost. Okay, so can I say if it's a general borrowing? If it's general borrowing, whatever amount you spend, uske upar interest can be capitalized. If I want to understand how much interest can be capitalized, check. Achha, December month, I spend how many crore? 140 crore. Interest capitalization 15%. How many months ke liye? 4 months. December, January, February, March. Assuming that the expense is done in the beginning of the month. Achha, then I spend 350 crore. 15% capitalization, 3 months it was used. February again 350 crore. No need to write, it's already there in your book. 15% into 2 by 12. And March again I spent 350 crore. Into 15% weighted average, it's used for 1 month, I can capitalize for 1 month. Achha, if it's a specific borrowing, the total the total borrowing cost, less income from temporary investment, that is capitalized. But if it's a general borrowing, amount used and that too for the period used, only on that, that can be capitalized. Do you got it? Achha, this, ka total karo, this is the interest to be capitalized. Total it out. This is the interest to be capitalized. Check out solution. Okay, the borrowing cost to be capitalized 33.25 crores. Kaise aaya? December May 140 crore, 15% 4 month. January May 350 crore, 15% 3 months. February May 350 crore, 15% 2 months. March May 350 crore, 15% 1 month. Any doubts? Anybody? Any doubts? Anybody? A point. 8A. Now going to 8B. This was 8A. Now going to 8B. This was simpler. Now 8B. Mumbai Challengers Limited acquire and sell player registration. So you acquire player K rights. You sell player K rights on a regular basis. For a player to play for its team, Mumbai challengers must purchase the registration for that player. If I want the player to play with me, I have to get the rights of that player. Achha, now tell me, now tell me one thing. If Mumbai challengers limited paid 100 CR for Virat Kohli for 10 years. Okay, so I have paid for Virat Kohli 100 CR for 10 years. 10 years right of Virat Kohli, 100 CR I was I have pent and can I say Virat Kohli can play only for us? So that 100 CR, how should I record? I have paid 100 CR to get the rights of Virat Kohli. Virat Kohli will play only for us. Can I record it as intangible asset? Players right. The player will play only for us. So for a player to play for Mumbai Challengers Limited, they have to obtain the player registration, means the rights of the player. I paid 100 CR, Virat Kohli will play for 10 years only for us. So that 100 CR, can I record as intangible asset? And then I uh, amortize over 10 years. Yeah, correct. That's a right which you acquired. Right, kya intangible asset. Okay, so now, for a player to play for Mumbai Challengers Limited. Mumbai Challengers must purchase the rights of that player. The cost of acquiring registration includes registration, nothing but right. Player's registration that is right. Okay, they include some transfer fees, levy fees, player ke agent hoga, wo agent fees, whatever. Fine. At end of each season, which is every year end. The club reviews its contract with player. Okay, so every reporting period end, you review your contract with players. And the company to take a decision whether they want to 
transfer that player to someone else okay i have paid some money to get the rights of a player i may sell off my right to someone else so now that player goes somewhere else Okay. The company actively markets this registration by circulating with other clubs the list of player registration, the selling price, etc. The player registrations are also sold during the season. In some cases, it becomes clear that the player will not play for club again because a player has a sustainable threatening injury or permanently removed from playing squad from some other reasons. Okay. Some cases, can I say now a player became injured? If a player becomes injured, he will not be able to play. If he will not be able to play, can I say he will not be able to generate revenue for me? I have an intangible asset. I acquired a right of a player, but now player is now not able to play. I will not be able to get future benefits. So can I say I have to record an impairment loss? You have recorded an asset. You have recorded an asset. Intangible asset right which you acquired now if you are not going to get that future economic benefit so that intangible assets are to be tested for impairment impairment losses will come okay now player registration of certain players were sold after the year end we sold it after the year end at 175 crores book may value is 49 crores book may value 49 crores we sold next year may some players right at 175 crores Okay, what is your treatment on acquisition of right? You acquire a right, intangible asset, acquisition. Extension of a right. Okay, every year end we review them. We review them. If at all they become permanently injured, future benefits will not be the impairment testing. And then when I'm selling, it's a sale of intangible asset. You see, clear question give your advice on acquisition extension they are acquisition extension will be what added to intangible asset they are added to intangible review is impairment you review whether they are going to give you future benefit not accordingly impairment testing and when you sell it's a sale of intangible asset okay the acquisition extension i just put a star here and write down at top acquisition slash extension of player right this is added to intangible asset okay review of future economic benefits what will be coming at year end this is considered for impairment testing yes no And when you sell a player, sale of player right. When I'm selling a player's right, it's a sale of intangible asset. So when you acquired, it was added in intangible. When you're selling, it's a sale of intangible asset. Any doubts, anybody? So, Mumbai Challengers or Mumbai Indians Limited, you acquire a right of a player, that's an intangible asset for you. And then you'll evaluate every year end, usme kya future economic benefit will be there or not, should I continue, should I sell off the player. If I feel future economic benefits will not be there that much, I have to see the impairment testing. And now, when I'm selling off that player right, it's a sale of intangible asset. Is that good? Clear questions, newly added. Again a reminder, last two days are there to get the Diwali offer, that is tomorrow and day after. Today is already 16, 17 and 18, only two days. So FR as well as audit, 1000 rupee discount going on for two days.
ओके चेक द सोल्यूशन चलो चेक सोल्यूशन प्लेयर रजिस्ट्रेशन का एक्विजिशन रजिस्ट्रेशन इज नथिंग बट राइट यू शुड रिकोगनाइज एज इन टेंजिबल एसेट डन वेन यू आर सेलिंग इट वेन यू आर सेलिंग इट वन यू विल बी क्लासिफाइंग इट एज हेल्ड फॉर सेल वेन द कंडीशन फॉर हेल्ड फॉर सेल आर सेटिस्फाइड If conditions for held for sale are satisfied, you should classify it as held for sale in between only. If conditions for held for sale are satisfied, once the condition for held for sale are satisfied, they'll be valued at lower of carrying amount and fair value less cost to sell. ठीक है एंड देन व्हेन यू आर एक्चुअली सेलिंग इट द सेल ऑफ इंटेंजिबल एसेट व्हेन यू आर सेलिंग अ इंटेंजिबल एसेट द डिफरेंस विल बी गोइंग इन पीएनएल अच्छा आफ्टर ईयर एंड यू सोल्ड सर्टेन प्लेयर्स आफ्टर ईयर एंड इफ आई सोल्ड सर्टेन प्लेयर इट्स अ नॉन एडजस्टिंग इवेंट विल नॉट बी कमिंग इन दिस ईयर Player registration disposed after year end. It's a non-adjusting event as per India S10. It's sold subsequent to year end. It is sold subsequent to year end. Acha, and you review them whether they will be giving you benefit or not. That's impairment. Did you understood? Any doubts? Anybody with this B point? Registrations are nothing but the right. You acquired players, right? Then you review whether they are going to give you future economic benefit or not. And later, if you are selling that player, the right to someone else. So whenever it is. But well, basically, when it meets the criteria for held for sale, okay, I've decided I'm going to sell it off. You started looking for buyers. That criteria for held for sale are satisfied. It will be now valued as per India's 105. And the day when they are disposed of, it's a sale of intangible asset. Okay. Next question is C point over here. Okay, they have a stadium. Mumbai Challenger Measure Stadium. Stadium was a PP. The Measure Stadium with the revaluation model. The Measure Stadium revaluation model. Airline company has approached the directors offering seven hundred crore for property naming rights of all the stadiums for five years. Okay, property naming, right? You know, <clears throat> suppose suppose uh, we have a stadium basically over here in say Gujarat, Ahmedabad. It's called Narendra Modi Cricket Stadium. It's called Narendra Modi Cricket Stadium. So can I say cricket stadium? Pay the names are given. So Mumbai Challengers have a stadium. Airline company says you name it on us. Airline company is telling you name it on us, and they are going to pay us seven hundred crores for that. Acha, so seven hundred crores I can receive by giving a naming right to someone. The naming rights are given to someone. We get seven hundred crores. Acha, now three directors are on board on both Mumbai Challengers and airline company. Now tell me one thing. Now tell me one thing. There are two places. Acha, imagine Mr. A, B, C. Imagine there's Mr. A, Mr. B, and C. Acha, he is a key management person in Mumbai Challengers Limited, and he's also a key management person in airline company. So I have a question for you. Both the places, 
के एम पी अच्छा इन मुंबई चैलेंजर्स लिमिटेड इज अ के एम पी एयरलाइन कंपनी ऑल्सो इज अ के एम पी बोथ द प्लेस इज अ के एम पी वेदर दिस टू आर सेट टू बी रिलेटेड वेदर मुंबई चैलेंजर्स लिमिटेड एंड एयरलाइन कंपनी आर सेट टू बी रिलेटेड बोथ द प्लेस इज के एम पी आर दे सेट टू बी रिलेटेड यस नो Yes, no, अच्छा श्रवणी से इज नो निकिता से इज नो एज पर इंडिया इज ट्वेंटी फोर एम सी लिमिटेड एंड एयरलाइन कंपनी आर नॉट रिलेटेड पार्टी रिमेंबर वन प्लेस देर हैज टू बी कंट्रोल ज्वाइंट कंट्रोल एंड अदर प्लेस वन प्लेस यू नीड कंट्रोल ज्वाइंट कंट्रोल अदर प्लेस यू नीड कंट्रोल ज्वाइंट कंट्रोल सिग्निफिकेंट इन्फ्लुएंस और के एम पी बोथ प्लेस इज के एम पी विल नॉट वर्क They are not related parties. Okay. Additionally, statutory regulations apply. Statutory regulation regulate the financing of both hockey and cricket club. The regulations prevent the statutory regulations prevent contribution from related party. अच्छा तो इफ इट्स अ रिलेटेड पार्टी द स्टैचुटर रेगुलेशन विल नॉट अलाउ यू ठीक है मुंबई चैलेंजर्स वॉन्ट्स टू नो हाउ टू अकाउंट फॉर द वैल्यू हाउ टू अकाउंट फॉर द नेमिंग राइट इन द वैल्यूएशन ऑफ स्टेडियम एंड द पोटेंशियल इंप्लीकेशन ऑफ फिनेंशियल रेगुलेशन एंड अदर रेगुलेशन तो लेट सी द आंसर Okay, how to account for potential naming right? So over here, first of all, whenever you're measuring your stadium, you're using a fair value basis. So as per India's one one three, they've given the fair value. Fair value. Remember, it's an exit price. What you can get on. What you can get on selling an asset. Okay, so it's an exit price. Mumbai challengers could include the property naming right in the valuation, and then you can write it off over a period. Acha, so you have a valuation related thing. India's one one three will be applicable over here for valuation purpose. property naming rights presents a complication when valuing a property the status of property indicates it's suitable for inviting sponsors and sponsors may i got one offer i got one offer 700 crores they are ready to pay me if i can value it at 700 crores and it's for certain number of years i can write it off over that many years theek hai to property naming right I have a property naming right. It has nothing to do with property, but it can be of a significant amount. It has nothing to do with the property, but it can be of a significant amount. So we have a property ka naming which right which we can sell to someone else. The property naming right. So I am not valuing property. I am talking about property naming right. अच्छा तो आई कैन वैल्यू वी कैन वैल्यू द प्रॉपर्टी नेमिंग राइट तो इट्स नॉट स्टेडियम स्टेडियम नेमिंग राइट आई पुट अ स्टार एन आई राइट ओवर इट इज नॉट वैल्यूएशन ऑफ स्टेडियम दैट वी आर टॉकिंग but it is valuation of stadium naming right
that Mumbai Challengers Limited have and can sell it off. We are not talking about valuation of stadium. We are talking about stadium naming right ka valuation. Okay, then comes India's 24. India's 24, mein if I see over here, this too, India's 24 says the parties are not related just because two places, they have a directors in common. Just because two place directors are common, it's not a related party. Clear? So in this case, in this case, it appears that the entities are not related. It appears that the entities are not related. Any doubts? Anybody? However, the regulator will need to establish whether a sponsorship deal is a related party or not. And if it's demonstrated it's a related party, then they are required to ensure that it's at the fair value. If it's not at fair value, penalties will come up. If the deal is deemed to be a related party, the regular will evaluate whether it's at fair value or not. Looks it's not. So as per your India's 24, it's not, but other financial provision, tax purpose, etc., whether it's a related party, not a party, that is to be evaluated separately. And see, tax is different thing. Tax is different thing. Accounts is different thing. Tax may definition of related party different. India's 24, the definition of related party is different. Okay, coming to question number nine. That's why the word written over here is if. If. So read very carefully. Now coming to the last question of the day. This is also important. Question number 9. Last question of the day. Question number 9. These are new questions which are added. Not there earlier. That's why I recommend always go for the latest lecture. Not the world ones. And see the new questions. There are more probability of coming in examination. Okay, Nilanchal Gas Refinery Limited, I'll use as N Limited. N Limited is a listed company. They are in production and trading of natural gas and oil. N Limited jointly owns an underground facility with S Limited. Okay, the N is having a jointly owned underground facility. Both the companies are in extraction of gas. They operate independently. N holds 60% of underground facility. S owns 40% of underground facility. They have agreed to share the cost services accordingly. And the decisions require a unanimous agreement. Achha, decision requires unanimous agreement. So is it? Achha, you hold 60, other guy holds 40. But can I say decision requires unanimous so do I have a control or do we have a joint control? Achha, I own 60%, I own 60%, but do I control or do I joint control? Anyone? Do we control or joint control? Sir, joint control because we are not able to take decisions unilaterally. I cannot take decisions on my own. We need a unanimous agreement. Both the parties agreement. It's a joint control. Okay, the underground facility is pressurized. Achha, pressure dalte ho so that the gas comes out. You put a pressure so that the gas is coming out. But when gas pressure is reduced to a certain level, the remaining gas is irrecoverable. The pressure come ho gaya, the remaining gas is irrecoverable. It will remain in the storage facility. And it will remain in underground storage facility until it is decommissioned. And it will be decommissioned at the end of the life. Uh, how do we account for this irrecoverable gas? Achha, the one they are asking about how to account for the 
एग्रीमेंट एक तो आप एग्रीमेंट के बारे में बोलो एज वेल एज द इिकवरेबल गैस विच रिमेन्स इन द स्टोरेज फैसिलिटी ओनली अच्छा फर्स्ट कमिंग टू द एग्रीमेंट कैन एस इट्स ज्वाइंट कंट्रोल अच्छा हैवी फॉर्म द न्यू एंटिटी तो दे आर ज्वाइंटली ओनिंग वन अंडरग्राउंड स्टोरेज फैसिलिटी डिड वी क्रिएट अ न्यू एंटिटी नो न्यू एंटिटी नॉट क्रिएटेड इट्स अ जे ओ याद आया Joint operation, joint venture, new entity not created. It's a JO. If it's a JO, I'll record. I'll record my share of assets, liability, expense, income. So here, storage facility. It's a PP. I'll record my share of PP. So check out over here. They are talking about joint control, joint arrangement. Mm hmm. अच्छा आई डायरेक्टली हाईलाइट द इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग बेस्ड ऑन द इंफॉर्मेशन प्रोवाइडेड द एग्रीमेंट इज अ जे ओ एज सपरेट एंटिटी इज नॉट क्रिएटेड सपरेट एंटिटी नॉट क्रिएटेड यू रिकॉर्ड योर शेयर ऑफ पीपी यू रिकॉर्ड योर शेयर ऑफ पीपी डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड नाउ एट द एंड ऑफ द लाइफ डी कमिशनिंग इज टू बी डन अच्छा इफ देर इज अ डी कमिशनिंग रिक्वायर्ड तो कैम आई कैन आई से दैट द प्रोविजन फॉर डी कमिशनिंग इज टू बी डन ऑन डे वन ओनली तो वॉट एवर डी कमिशनिंग एक्सपेंस विल कम उसका प्रेजेंट वैल्यू वॉट एवर डी कमिशनिंग एक्सपेंस विल कम उसका प्रेजेंट वैल्यू हैव टू क्रिएट अ प्रोविजन पीपी टू प्रोविजन फॉर डी कमिशनिंग तो एज पर इन डे सिक्सटीन द कॉस्ट ऑफ पी पी विल ऑल्सो इंक्लूड द कॉस्ट ऑफ डी कमिशनिंग विच विल बी कमिंग अप इन फ्यूचर तो जर्नल एंट्री होगा पी पी टू प्रोविजन फॉर डी कमिशनिंग यू रिकॉर्ड सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ प्रोविजन फॉर डी कमिशनिंग एनी डाउट यू रिकॉर्ड सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ प्रोविजन फॉर डी कमिशनिंग अच्छा फॉर रिमेनिंग फोर्टी परसेंट दे आर रिक्वायर टू डू इट बट इफ दे डोंट डू इट यू टू बेर इट तो यू टू शो इट एज कंटीजेंट लाइबिलिटी इफ दे डोंट डू इट यू टू बेर इट तो देन इट्स अ कंटीजेंट लाइबिलिटी अच्छा ऑल्सो डिस्क्लोज फोर्टी परसेंट कॉस्ट एज कंटीजेंट लाइबिलिटी If that S limited doesn't do decommissioning, we have to do it. तो उसके related cost is contingent liability. <coughs> Now, coming to that irrevocable gas, irrecoverable gas, the gas which you can't recover only, the gas which you can't recover only, that gas will be a part of PP. वो PP के साथ ही बिक गया. The gas which cannot be recovered. So check. Nischal should classify and account for its share of irrecoverable gas as PP. because irrecoverable gas is necessary to perform that function you cannot so it's a part of pp uske sath hi rahega you can't remove that that will be a part of your pp only the irrecoverable gas being a part of the storage facility should be capitalized as a part of asset should be depreciated over the useful life if the gas is recoverable upon full decommissioning अच्छा तो वो इरिकवरेबल गैस इज अ पार्ट ऑफ कॉस्ट ओनली दैट मच गैस विल रिमेन एंड यू डेप्रिशिएट इट ओवर द लाइफ ओनली बट हा इफ एट ऑल यू आर एबल टू रिकवर एट द एंड तो डेप्रिशिएट ओनली द रिमेनिंग पोर्शन व्हिच विल बी अ लॉस टू यू डेप्रिशिएट ओनली द रिमेनिंग पोर्शन व्हिच विल बी लॉस्ट इमेजिन द गैस कॉस्ट इनसाइड इज 1 सीआर व्हिच कैन नॉट बी रिकवर्ड द गैस कॉस्ट इन साइड कैन नॉट बी रिकवर्ड इट्स अ पार्ट ऑफ पी पी में एड कर दो एंड इट कैन नॉट बी रिकवर्ड इट विल बी स्प्रेड ओवर द लाइफ एज डेप्रिशिएशन बट आउट ऑफ वन क्रोर अपॉन फुल डी कमिशनिंग आउट ऑफ वन क्रोर अपॉन फुल डी कमिशनिंग सिक्सटी लैख कैन बी रिकवर्ड आउट ऑफ वन क्रोर अपॉन फुल डी कमिशन सिक्सटी लैख कैन बी रिकवर्ड तो देन यू डेप्रिशिएट ओनली फोर्टी बिकॉज सिक्सटी इज रेसिडियल वैल्यू तो फोर्टी विल बी डेप्रिशिएटेड ओवर द रिमेनिंग लाइफ डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड अच्छा 
तो वेन एवर दैट क्वेश्चन गैस इज एक्सट्रैक्टेड एंड सोल्ड इट विल बी अकाउंटेड एज डिस्पोजल ऑफ पी पी सर वाई डिस्पोजल ऑफ पी पी तो डे वन दैट इ रिकवरेबल गैस वॉज पार्ट ऑफ पी पी तो वेन यू रिकवर एंड सेल इट इट्स पी पी सोल्ड तो डे वन इ रिकवरेबल गैस वॉज पार्ट ऑफ पी पी आई पुट अ स्टार एंड राइट डाउन एट द टॉप Initially, irrecoverable gas was accounted as part of PPE. Therefore, upon decommissioning. if it is extracted and sold it will be treated as sale of pp it was a part of pp now when you sell it it's a sale of pp did you understood this So your agreement is a joint arrangement and separate entity not created. It's a JO. As it's a JO, I have to record about my share. So day one I'll record a PP. Acha plus I have to do decommissioning. So decommissioning expense me my share also I'll record that also. Now irrecoverable gas is a part of PP. Later that irrecoverable gas is sold off. It will be treated as sale of PP. Any doubts? Question nine A. Any doubts? Question number nine A. Okay, now uh, N Limited has entered into a ten-year contract with U Limited for purchase of natural gas. Second point: You have entered into a ten-year contract for purchase of natural gas. Acha, you have paid in advance. You have paid in advance. Amount equivalent to the total gas to be extracted based on a forecasted price. So they have paid actually full money, but based on a forecasted price. Actually, I paid full money to you. Based on what forecasted price? And the advance carries an interest twelve and a half percent. So you will give me, you will give me over a period of ten years. You will give me over a period of ten years, but I paid you full money in advance based on a forecasted price. Actual price may be different; that will be settled separately in cash. The contract requires a fixed delivery of gas to be supplied every month. The contract requires a fixed delivery of gas to be supplied every month. अच्छा, there is a price adjustment mechanism, actual price, forecasted price, and that is settled on quarterly basis in cash, because वो forecasted price था. I paid you money based on forecasted. If actual rate is different that time, तो quarterly whatever is actual, whatever was forecasted, I already paid. Difference is settled in cash. ठीक है. How Nischal would account for the contract in accordance with India's one or nine? First of all. First of all, tell me, uh, would the delivery of gas come to you? Would the delivery of gas come to you? It's basically a contract to buy a non-financial item, inventory. For us, natural gas is inventory. It's a contract to buy non-financial item, and if that non-financial item ka contract hai, which will be settled upon delivery, would it be covered under one o nine? A contract to buy non-financial item, which will be settled upon delivery. So it looks, yeah, yeah. But I already paid full money. They will give me every month fixed gas amount, uh, gas key quantity. So this is a contract to buy a non-financial item, which will be set 
settled upon delivery it's out of scope from ndas 109 it's a executory contract uh, but if it is basically a contract which is settled in net amount see here it's if if they don't deliver cash i can ask for compensation you have a right to claim compensation so if it is to be settled in net amount they are not going to deliver then it falls under 109 but looks it doesn't fall under 109 it's an executory contract. Let's check the solution. Okay, I'll directly go to the solution. Yeah, so much theory is given. In this case, the contract with you, Private Limited, will result in physical delivery of gas, which is for use by Nischel for own use. Accordingly, it appears it's a contract for own use falling out of 109. It will be an executory contract. It will be falling out of 109. It will be executory contract. If, if they will not be delivering, then it will be settled net in cash. Then it will be covered under 109, but it doesn't look like that. Any doubts? Anybody? Done. Other all theories is nothing but India is 109 written. Other all theories which is given, it's all 109 written. So this is not falling under 109. Done. This chapter is over. Anybody having doubts with chapter number 15, analysis of financial statement? Okay, now, I'll tell you about two words. One is called demand. I demand something. Mujhe ye de do, wo de do. That's demanding. And second is command. Command means aapi ka hai. Nobody can take away it from you. So don't demand the things. Command the things. Have a hold on it. Now, sir, how do I have a hold on it? Chalo, I don't want to demand result. I don't want to say, I say, pass me out. I want to command my result. Whatever I want, that should happen. So, kya karna padega? If you don't want to demand result, but you want to command your result, work hard. Work hard. And that's why they say, work hard, command results, demand nothing. Work hard so that you command the results, demand nothing. Don't demand, command. 